is touching the truth. Surviving in a universe transformed into a painting? Is it an eternal solidification, the restraint of thought, or a shift to an unimaginable perspective to persist in life? No one could provide an answer. But what numerous onlookers understood was that it must be an incredibly daunting ordeal. Within the bubble, eleven individuals fell into a profound silence. As living beings, their senses were more acute. In that moment, the visual shock and impact led them to believe that they too would metamorphose into a painting, rendering them utterly speechless. After a protracted exhale, Tony let out a small sigh, the blow of dimensionality reduction, if I hadn't witnessed it with my own eyes, I would never have believed it in my life. Vegeta, with a furrowed brow, remarked, the entire universe turning into a painting, aren't they afraid of death? Uchiha Madara, arms crossed, responded coldly, when a civilization begins to employ two-way foils recklessly, if it's not madness, then that civilization must have discovered a way to survive in a two-dimensional world. So, do you think they're mad? In response to the rhetorical question, Vegeta snorted and turned her head away. If it weren't for the constraints present, he would have thrown a punch at this man who is more arrogant than him. On the other hand, Tony displayed admiring eyes, Uchiha Madara's quick deduction was truly commendable. The screen starts to flicker, unveiling the true clash between universes. In front of these advanced civilizations, during the actual 553 interstellar war, the laws of the universe become the most formidable weapons. Utilizing dimensionality reduction for offense, slowing the speed of light for defense, and creating numerous low-light speed black holes to ensnare other civilizations. Various weapons based on unimaginable laws of the physics emerge. It was a surreal, magnificent spectacle never witnessed before, with a staggering power and a bloody cruelty. In the pirate world, everyone fell silent. Ancient weapons, the countless treasures pirates covet, all became inconsequential at this moment. Many even shifted their gaze from the ground to the sky. True freedom resided there. The so-called sea amounted to nothing more than a speck of gravel. And to reach where one desired, individual power was utterly inadequate, only a new path remained. Marine headquarters, Sengoku sighed, foreseeing the world being turned upside down. The universe is dying, drained of vitality by the ongoing war. And at this juncture, a new civilization. No, it should be said, a group of individuals with a common goal. They are known as the Zeros. The so-called stellar civilizations are mere insects in their eyes. Their strength doesn't hinge on how many dimensions the master has, no, Afa, has transcended the dark forest law. But they have completely mastered the cornerstone of the universe. What's most terrifying is their ability to modify the laws of physics. Inside the bubble, everyone turned their gaze towards Tony simultaneously. His face, at this moment, was devoid of color. Tony couldn't help but swallow hard, then hoarsely smiled and said, the so-called modification of the laws of physics, let me give you an example. What do you say 1 plus 1 equals? Everyone fell silent upon hearing the question. Despite lacking extensive scientific knowledge, this question was too demeaning. Yet, Uchiha Madara immediately dispelled such thoughts, he believed the other party wouldn't pose such a question without reason. Arrogance was foolish in this context. Equals two, responded Uchiha Madara without hesitation. Tony nodded, and his next words struck everyone like a bolt of lightning. If the video is correct, then in the hands of the zeroers, and still within the decimal premise. Plus one can equal, there is only one purpose for those who return to zero. That is, like turning the clock past 12 o'clock, lowering the universe to and crossing over the zero dimension, to restart the universe and realize a new reincarnation. The universe at that time will return to the pastoral era. Time swiftly passes, and in the blink of an eye, 18,000 centuries go by. A human spacecraft emerges from the low light speed region by chance. Inside is a human woman named Ching Xian. The next moment. Past events involving Ching Xian rapidly unfold, revealing all her actions. She betrayed Yun Tianming, Vader, and the entire Earth civilization. By relinquishing the threat when becoming the sword bearer, she shattered the deterrence of the Dark Forest, nearly allowing the Trisolarans to conquer Earth before reaching it. Due to her, research on Wade's lightspeed curvature spacecraft stagnated. Only one curvature spaceship was secretly developed, 
saving only herself and AAI. Countless people can't believe what they witness, such a woman exists in the world. She makes mistakes repeatedly, showing no remorse, challenging conventional beliefs. Inside the bubbles, Uchiha Madara's eyes gleam with coldness. If such a person appeared in the ninja world, he would surely seek to eliminate her. In the DC world, God's eyes expressed disgust for the first time, absent when facing Majin Buu and One Star Dragon. In his eyes, he sees not a saint but an exceedingly selfish human woman. What's more absurd is that she is oblivious to it. Her selfishness differs from the typical kind, she perceives her values and morals as universal and correct. She cares only about her morals and conscience, disregarding the consequences. Lucifer licks his tongue and smiles, stating, this woman's screams in the fires of hell will be exquisite. Ching Xian in the spaceship arrives at Blue Star. Enter a small universe left by Yun Tian Ming for her. There, she need not worry about other civilizations, enjoying a serene pastoral life. Simultaneously, the vast universe outside collapses rapidly, reaching singularity in ten years. Although the small universe avoids collapse, it is composed of mass stolen from the large universe and the universe's mass is extremely delicate. The collapse of a large universe losing part of its mass won't restart into a new one but will perish entirely. Before long, an ultimate civilization, akin to Zero One, announces the return of life to the entire universe in the languages of one million civilizations. Since the universe's mass is stolen by countless microcosms, it doesn't restart after the singularity explosion but dies in infinite expansion. So please return the essence you took away. Confronted with this statement, Ching Xian finally decides to return the small universe. Countless viewers breathe a sigh of relief, this woman finally does one thing right at the last moment. But in an instant, everyone wears an expression of disbelief. This woman leaves an ecological ball, occupying 5 kilograms of mass in the small universe, to add a bright touch of life to the new universe. The singularity explodes, yet no new universe appears. Chaos engulfs all matter, and the universe expands infinitely. All life is extinguished, but death is immortal. Three body concludes in an open ending, yet leans towards destruction due to the presence of Madonna Qingxin. The goldfish leisurely swam in the last five kilograms of ecological balls. This scene left an indelible mark on the minds of countless viewers. Once again, this woman achieved a great feat with unwavering self-righteousness. She had successfully obliterated an entire universe. Perhaps there were numerous small cosmic masses yet to be accounted for, but that couldn't deny the fact that Ching Xian was one of the perpetrators of the universe's destruction. In the DC world, Lucifer found himself at a loss for words, this woman was truly ruthless. She had accomplished a feat that not even countless villains in a world as bleak as hers had achieved. What stood out the most was her satisfaction in death, believing that leaving a bright remnant of the previous universe in the next one held great meaning. As a consequence, a ghost haunted the next universe, and the fish in the ecological ball could only endure loneliness until the end of their lives. In a numbered earth, Batman Bruce Wayne's eyes reflected indifference. This was the price paid when foolish people were in charge. In his world, there were many powerful idiots, mere replicas of this woman. If tomorrow meant the end of the earth, he wouldn't be surprised. Hence, he vowed to devise a plan to truly defeat these people. Even that man, Clark Joseph Kent. Everything had to be under his control. On Bubble Island, eleven individuals looked pale. They had just experienced a first-hand cosmic singularity explosion. While others remained unaware, Tony Stark was thrilled beyond measure. As a scientist, this was a godsend, greatly aiding his future research. Just then, the screen lit up once more. The image displayed their current state of distress. Once again, the voice, akin to a god with countless levels, descended. After the top 10 legendary deaths list is completed, the rewards will be distributed. Demon Slayer World, Rengo Kukaijuro obtained the Tsujikuni Yorichi template, with a development degree of 40 inch in Rengo Kukaijuro's astonished eyes, a golden light descended from the sky, and a flame pattern appeared on his head. As the scene changed, a person with a high ponytail, long black hair with red in the middle, wearing a round flower paper earring, and a dark red flame pattern on the left forehead appeared. This person looked ahead calmly, where another person fell to the ground in panic. 
what do you take your life to be, Muzan screams miserably in the ground. The voice fell, and Muzan Kibutsuji didn't even have the heart to resist, he blew himself up in more than one, eight hundred pieces and fled. Demon Slayer World 1 Muzan Kibutsuji trembled miserably, as if reliving the past. The words, seemingly from hell, made his soul tremble even more. And at this moment, what frightened him the most was that Rengoku Kayajuro obtained the template of this man. Fortunately, it was only 40%, and he still had a chance. Of course, it was just a chance. The voice sounded again. One Piece World, reward Edward Newgate with three fruits carrier and restore his youth. When the golden light fell, Whitebeard's skin regained firmness, his hair regained its golden color, and his breath became vigorous and youthful again. In the pirate world, everyone was stunned. Three fruits carrier meant that Whitebeard could now possess the abilities of two more fruits. This, coupled with regaining his youth and peak strength, signaled the emergence of a real monster on the sea. Marine headquarters, Sengoku, Garp, and others all had their expressions change. The only relief was that the Whitebeard pirates, at least, wouldn't cause much harm and wouldn't slaughter civilians. At this moment, the crew of the Whitebeard pirates erupted into cheers. Then, a voice echoed again. Hokage World, Reward, Uchiha Madara, Atsutsuki Kagaya, Template, Development Level 20%, Golden Light enveloped Uchiha Madara, transforming his tainted form. White skin adorned his body, his eyes turned white, and a blood-colored Rinnegan manifested on his forehead. The scene shifts, revealing the figure of Atsutsuki Kagaya. Blood flows like a river, the underworld's plains, heavenly abyss, and the power to turn everything to ashes were displayed. In the Hokage world, in an underground base, Orochimaru and Abito exchanged glances. The meaning in their eyes was clear, should they escape. However, in the end, they gritted their teeth and stayed. For the sake of the future, they had to gamble that Uchiha Madara's transformation was genuine. In the Hokage world, even the Kages of the villages began to panic, including the hidden sage of Six Paths and Black Zetsu. Though the development level might not seem high, one must not forget that Uchiha Madara was formidable from the start. Hokage world, reward, Namikaze Minato, Kushina resurrection, chakra increase by 200%, mutual ninjutsu proficiency. In the Hokage world, Naruto couldn't contain his excitement, his parents were coming back. And Sarutobi Hiruzen, in retirement, felt a sudden shock. He was confident that Minato wouldn't trouble him, but the red-haired Kushina would undoubtedly come for him. Trouble. Hunter x Hunter World, Reward, and King Maroon, Gene Level Evolution, Human Nitro regains youth, two undeveloped ideas. The three royal guards expressed simultaneous surprise, and Kamugi smiled softly. In human society, many high-level faces turned gloomy. Their dark continent plan was likely to fail. Hokage World, Reward, Jiraiya with a complete permanent sage mode, restored youth. Tsunade's mood suddenly lifted. The old man's strength had increased, and he was rejuvenated, not bad. Dragon Ball World, Reward, Vegeta T, Triple Physical Strength. Dragon Ball World, Reward, Son Goku, Triple Physical Strength. In the Dragon Ball World, the king of the northern realm was stunned. In any case, this reward was indeed a set, and it was so exaggerated that they feared they might not bear it, rewarding physical strength. Marvel World, Reward, Tony Stark, 33% brain development, and 20-year-old bodily recovery. When the golden light faded, everyone underwent a drastic change. At the same time, an incredible envy filled the hearts of viewers from countless worlds. They didn't anticipate such substantial rewards for being accounted for. Simultaneously, Goku and others in the bubble noticed a black skull tattoo on the back of their hands. The next moment, everyone gasped simultaneously. Their own panel data appeared before their eyes. And there was an additional name. Tony's throat felt dry as he looked at the others and said, that name didn't appear. Everyone exchanged glances, eventually confirming that not only did they have it, but these people now possessed it too. They were the reincarnators. At the same time, the voice echoed once more. Rewards distribution is complete. Those accounted for will return. The next list will be in 48 hours. Please wait patiently. The screen dimmed. Simultaneously, accompanied by the sound of wings flapping, the terrifying laughter gradually faded away. 
Hokage's world. Boom. The earth beneath Kanoha village violently shook, accompanied by the furious roar of a woman. Saratobi Hiruzen, come out. To the east, the opulent Saratobi clan compound, the residence of Saratobi Hiruzen, now lay in ruins. Amidst the wreckage, Kushina, with her fiery red hair, moved with unrestrained fury, her eyes filled with unmistakable intent to kill. This was a mother's revenge. Despite the commotion, no ANBU or patrol ninjas rushed in to intervene. They allowed Kushina to unleash her pent-up anger. Meanwhile, at Naruto's home, Minato cradled his son in his arms, concern etched on his face. Jiraiya, sitting nearby with a conflicted expression, understood Kushina's maternal wrath and refrained from intervening. Yet, as a disciple, he couldn't help but feel uneasy about his sensei. Thankfully, it seemed that a confrontation had been avoided, as the third Hokage had eluded the conflict. Jiraiya sighed in relief but couldn't shake off the undercurrent of anger lingering in his heart. In the days since his return to the village, Saratobi Hiruzen had offered no explanations. Dad, is mom really okay? Naruto, uttering these words for the first time at the age of twelve, appeared visibly embarrassed. Minato smiled reassuringly, everything will be fine. Tonight, your mother and I will take you to the land of whirlpools. That's her homeland, and we'll build our future there. Naruto nodded, reluctantly parting with Sasuke and their other friends, realizing that his parents were his top priority. Jiraiya, observing in silence, chose not to comment on this matter. Despite Naruto being the Ninetales Jinchuriki, Kanoha lacked the authority to intervene at this point. Kushina's uproar had gone unanswered, indicating the village's powerlessness. Moreover, the resurrection of Uchiha Madara posed a more imminent threat. In a grim scenario, the Nine Tails would play a negligible role in the impending conflict. Jiraiya sighed, exchanging a few words with Minato before deciding to visit Tsunade, hoping to gain insight into her plans. With this thought, his mood lightened considerably. Deep underground, within a Fuinjutsu barrier, Sarutobi Hiruzen and Danzo sat together. Danzo wore a grim expression, while Sarutobi Hiruzen radiated remorse. He had personally extinguished Kanoha's future. Had he ensured Naruto's well-being, Kanoha would have thrived, boasting formidable strength with Jiraiya, Minato, and his wife. Even the return of Uchiha Madara might not have spelled defeat. Now, only Jiraiya and Tsunade might remain. In Orochimaru's underground base, Uchiha Madara maintained a calm demeanor, imparting incomprehensible knowledge obtained from Tony to Orochimaru. Orochimaru's heart surged with excitement as his eyes gleamed with fiery curiosity. After the live broadcast, Orochimaru inquired, What's next? Do you plan to unite the ninja world? Uchiha Madara raised his palm, glanced at the skull above, shook his head, and spoke with measured words, Don't worry, this is just the beginning. One Piece World, Whitebeard and his sons are celebrating with a boisterous feast. His youthful vigor rendered him nearly invincible, as he nearly bested everyone present in the first half of the night. Exhaling the fumes of alcohol, Whitebeard strolled to the side of the ship overlooking the sea. In that moment, footsteps echoed, and a smile appeared on the corner of Whitebeard's mouth, sensing the arrival. Welcome back, son. Ace teared up and nodded vigorously, I'm back, and this time, I won't leave again. Whitebeard approached Ace, patting his shoulder with a grin resembling a crescent moon, don't worry, this time, I'll take Teach down with my own hands. The Shinigami World Captain Commander Yamamoto Genryusai Shigakuni bestowed the reward of unity of sword and body, becoming the Zanpakuto itself. Ryatsu doubled, with no fear of the Zanpakuto being taken away or sealed. Ichibai Hayasub's reward was intricate, after embracing black, he also acquired white. Soul Society, the moment they appeared. Instantly, a terrifying Ryatsu immobilized all Shinigami, even Zaraki Kenpachi, freezing them in place. Simultaneously, the two swung their blades to the ground. The earth didn't rupture, but undulated like shadows. In the next moment, they stepped forward, revealing a large white structure. This was the hidden empire of Quincy, Wandenrake. However, their objective had already become thousands of corpses. Yawatch had preemptively activated the Quincy exterminators, resulting in their demise. Hayasubichibe shook his head, Yawatch had already departed, and his destination was unknown. Captain Commander nodded, Zanpakuto shifted, 
creating a gate that pierced space. Stepping through it, they found themselves in the virtual circle. At that moment, Aizen stood before them, as if anticipating their arrival. Yamamoto, ever unyielding, conjured a blazing sun, slashing at Aizen. Aizen was cleaved and reduced to ashes. Yet, in the next instant, laughter echoed from the void, and Aizen emerged from the unseen space. Long time no see, Yamamoto still has quite the temper. Yamamoto expressed surprise, he had indeed slashed Aizen's physical form, so why? Aizen raised his head slightly, exuding the same confidence and arrogance, lightly chuckling at the corner of his mouth, do you truly wish to engage in combat? As his words resonated, Ryatsu, rivaling Yamamoto's, manifested. Even more astonishing, Hueco Mundo transitioned from day to night instantly, unveiling a colossal moon in the sky. Return to Soul Society first, we mustn't allow Yawach to seize an opportunity. Ichibai Hayasub's smiling countenance vanished, delivering a casual remark. Yamamoto gazed up, deeply examining the moon, and then retreated, back to the Soul Society. In this moment, the world, once counted, veered towards an entirely unforeseen future. Time passed swiftly. After 48 hours, the anticipated screen unfolded. Now, irrespective of their standings, everyone eagerly awaited their placement. Sheila, 8, 7, 2, 1. A crimson eye materialized. Top 10 darkened characters list, no, Tokyo Ghoul World, 1000, Tokyo Ghoul World in a lively room, a blonde man's eyes widened dramatically, and his grotesque face bore a morbid smile. Tokyo Ghoul World, 1000. Huh, it's me, definitely me. This time, I've secured a ranking in the list. Omari Yakumo exaggeratedly opened his mouth, drooling disgustingly, then ruthlessly bit down on the toy in front of him. After swallowing a mouthful of blood, a delighted expression crossed his face. After securing a ranking on the list, the one who receives the reward becomes stronger, and the torture fun becomes even more thrilling. In a coffee shop, Kurishima took a furrowed her brows slightly, not anticipating that the initial inventory was the world she inhabited. Truth be told, she didn't want any acquaintance of hers to be on the list, and it wasn't very pleasant when someone went on a rampage in that state of blackening. While contemplating, Kurishima took a cast a fleeting glance at Ken Kaniki, who was still wiping the cups. If Tuka were to die, I would be saddened. This sentence echoed in her ears once again, bringing to mind the image of the other person gently bandaging her wounds. Kurishima took his heartbeat quickened slightly as she lowered her head in contemplation. In any case, this list should not involve this boy who always has a gentle smile. Simultaneously, CCG, Aejirai Tree, and others all began to focus, eagerly awaiting the images, hoping to extract some valuable information. The screen illuminates, revealing a coffee shop in the camera. Under the sunset's afterglow, a man knelt on the ground, facing a black-haired boy with an eye patch. Off-screen, Ken Kaniki appeared confused, unable to grasp why this person bestowed such a grand gift upon him. In the 11th district, a middle-aged uncle with a bewildered expression looked even more puzzled. Are you out of your mind, kneeling before a little kid? I apologize for my earlier mistake. I misunderstood you and Miss Rise. But where is she now? Banju raised his head and pleaded. Off-screen, Banju's eyes widened. Surprisingly, he had been searching for the missing Miss Rise, finally obtaining news and continued watching anxiously. As for kneeling, it didn't matter, it was just a form of kowtow. Miss Rise, she has. The expression of Banju turned slightly ugly. Could it be that she is dead? After a few seconds, Ken Kaniki pondered and said, she's not here anymore. Off screen, he was nearly scared to death, this kid really knows how to keep a secret, but at least there are no issues with people. However, in a certain research institute, Dr. Akihiro Kanu displayed a faint smile. That woman is being utilized as a test subject by him to mass-produce one-eyed ghouls. Yet, Ken Kaniki should have believed that Rise Kamashiro was deceased at that time, now, it's just a harmless white lie. And at this moment, a figure kicked the coffee shop's glass and entered, kicking thousands of feet away. Ayato Kurishima felt a mix of emotions but continued to mock his sister Kurishima Tuka in the coffee shop. The doorbell rang suddenly, and a robust blonde man and a shapely figure walked in. Glancing at the crowd before him, Omori Yakumo was thrilled, 
he had indeed followed Banju and discovered the scent of Rai's. Yakumo Omori wore a sick smile, even though he hadn't found Rai's Kamashiro. The boy in front of him should suffice. Hey, Nico, is this guy acceptable too? Omori Yakumo inquired once more. Omori Yakumo pointed at the Kaniki and said, All right, take him away quickly. Kirishima Tuka was furious, these people were so audacious in the absence of the store manager. Take him away. What are you saying arbitrarily? No fear in her eyes, she was ready to fight. Wishful thinking. Omori Yakumo slammed Kirishima Tuka with a swift punch, turned around, and seized Kaniki by the neck, lifting his opponent from the bar and holding him high. It is the right of the strong to act arbitrarily. Do whatever you want, Omori Yakumo laughed and waved his arms, Kaniki Ken in his grasp was forcefully slammed onto the table. The fragile wooden table suddenly shattered, and Kaniki Ken fell to the ground in pain. But it wasn't over, Omori Yakumo kicked Kaniki Ken's stomach with excitement several times. Off screen, the store manager, Kyuzen Yoshimura, had a gloomy expression at this time. He remembered this man. On the other side, Kurishima Tuka looked at the screen with anger. As for Ken Kaniki, at this moment, he frowned with a puzzled face, not understanding why the other party was attacking him. Omori Yakumo used his thumb to adjust the joint of his ring finger, the pain and the scent of blood exhilarated him completely. The next second, he raised his foot and stomped hard, as if abusing a toy puppet. Severe pain, as if the internal organs were breaking, Kaniki Ken let out an extremely painful scream. But immediately, he hugged Omori Yakumo's foot and stood up vigorously. Kaniki Ken roared angrily, a scarlet horror eye hanging in the left eye frame. It turned out to be one-eyed. Omori Yakumo's happy face turned surprised, and the next moment, Kagun with countless thorns instantly pierced Kaniki Ken. Although he was no longer human, the sight of his chest and abdomen being penetrated made Ken Kaniki's back instantly covered in sweat. I didn't expect to be so powerless in the face of danger. The dream of settling down in a coffee shop shattered at this moment. The scene darkens, and when it lights up again, it reveals a dark space. The next second, a scream of pain echoed from the screen. The perspective moves down, revealing a gruesome and terrifying scene. Kaniki Ken was tied to a seat with his hands behind his back on the ground, while Omori Yakumo, wearing Jason's mask, held blood-stained iron scissors in his hand. Meow. The shrill screams echoed again, Kaniki Ken's toe was severed, soaring into the air before falling freely onto the blood-filled marble floor. Beside this toe, there are at least seventy or eighty toes scattered all over the place. It's not hard to see that this process has been repeated many times. Ah. Ah, Kaniki Ken cried and roared, tears dripped down the blindfold, and his body trembled violently. He can't see anything, only hears the other side's diabolical whispers, and those sudden pains. Fear, despair, pain, are swallowing him in the dark little by little. In this hell, all he can do is scream. On the opposite side of him, the bloodshot eyes of Omari Yakumo exposed through the mask are full of joy and excitement. The blood, screams, and fearful expressions are constantly stimulating his senses and bringing him pleasure. Countless spectators turned pale, some strong people were fine, and many ordinary people felt nauseated. The sight in front of him all shows that this boy named Kaniki Ken is being brutally tortured. In this dangerous world, at this moment, Kurishima took his face was pale and her eyes were full of tears. She couldn't bear to look at it, and the screaming sound made her feel extremely distressed and angry. Kirishima Tuka turned around and saw Ken Kaniki fell down on the seat, her eyes full of horror. This boy who has always liked a gentle smile is shivering like a cub at this time. One Piece World, Sengoku frowned at this time, his face gloomy. What a heinous crime is this kind of person who takes pleasure in torment. In the world of Hokage, Uchiha Madara's eyes were full of disgust. But immediately he sneered, as if he had seen the fate of the other party. And Orochimaru next to him didn't feel anything, just thinking about why the other party's body was regenerated from a severed limb. Demon Slayer World Tanjiro's eyes were full of tears, and he clenched his fists with anger. He never imagined that the human being in front of him was even crueler than a demon the boy named Ken Kaniki is obviously a gentle person, but he has to suffer so much. That kind of heart-piercing pain, I can feel it through the screen and I don't know how long it will take. 
One day has passed, Yakumo seems to have finally had enough to leave. Two people in red robes, a man and a woman, came in to clean up the blood. At this time, the fun house is full of bloody smells, and the terrifying scenes are like purgatory on earth. Kaniki Ken is still tied there, and as the man in the red robe wipes, his body trembles like a convulsion. Thanks. Even at this time, Kaniki Ken thanked the other party for wiping the blood off his body. At this time, the man raised his head and said, Mr. Banju asked us to pass a message to you, the woman beside her continued the words and said, we will definitely come to save you. After cleaning up the mess, the two gave another order before leaving. Th Ward, Banju smacked his lips. It's troublesome, but since I will do this in the future, there must be a reason, but now I can't continue to stay in the Aegirai tree. He didn't panic too much, he had already planned to go to that coffee shop now. As for the two subordinates, he is not worried. The other two are lovers, and usually only follow him when he returns to the headquarters. Now that you see the picture, you should have tried to hide it. Another day and night passed, and the scene changed. Kaniki Ken is still tied to a chair, surrounded by an endless sea of white flowers. At this time, a flower suddenly twisted and turned into an incompatible bright red other side flower. A white palm gently caressed Kaniki Ken's face. This familiar tenderness eased Kaniki Ken's heart, and his body stopped trembling. However, in the next moment, the blindfold over his eyes fell, and Kaniki Ken's eyes widened in panic. What lay before him was not his mother but Rise Kamashiro, the woman who had turned him into a half gowl. Rise's eyes softened, and she curiously said, Long time no see, Ken Kaniki. What happened? Why are you hurt? But in the next instant, her tone shifted from concern to delight. It's amusing. Hey, your master seems to have arrived. In an instant, all the white flowers withered away, Kaniki raised his head suddenly, and the familiar hell was before him once again. Countless viewers understood that what had just transpired was the other party's spiritual world. The screams resounded once more, and Yakumo resumed torturing Kaniki. Simultaneously, he forced the other party to count with each round from 1000, counting down. It's truly devious. He wants to keep Kaniki Ken awake to better understand the pain, Orochimaru licked his lips and explained the reason. Abito sneered, pain brings either collapse or deeper darkness. And from the looks of it, this Yakumo is relentless. Curiosity filled Orochimaru's eyes as he wondered how the boy could fight back. Meow. The torture showed no sign of stopping. Another toe, blood splattered. In excruciating pain, Kaniki Ken once again entered the spiritual world. In the image, Kaniki saw his deceased mother. A gentle, kind woman. She tirelessly worked two jobs, but the vampire-like sister keeps borrowing money and she fulfills her request without ever refusing. Finally, one evening, Kaniki discovered that his mother had passed away from overwork. The entire world was left to fend for itself. Inside the coffee shop, Ken Kaniki stared at his mother's back. Kurishima took his eyes were filled with distress, but she didn't expect that even with such a past, Kaniki wouldn't be disillusioned with the world. Treating others gently every day, becoming a half gal yet refusing to consume human flesh. Why should someone like this suffer so much? In the spiritual world, Kaniki transformed into a child, and the mother gently stroked his face and smiled, Ken, it's okay even if there's loss. As long as one is kind, they will be very happy. Until her death, the mother never blamed her sister. Kaniki Ken's spirit, on the verge of collapse, calmed down once again. Yes, instead of causing harm to others, a gentle soul finds happiness in enduring suffering. At this moment, a hushed silence fell over countless onlookers. It was the first time they had witnessed such a genuinely gentle individual. Choosing not to inflict pain upon others, the willingness to bear it oneself became inconsequential. In the Demon Slayer world, Tanjiro, also possessing a gentle nature, wept openly. In that instance, he wished to endure the agony in place of another. Why does the world subject such kind-hearted souls to such torment? In the Hokage world, Uchiha Madara shook his head. Even if I claim not to be benevolent, I cannot bring myself to deal with such a person. What? The next moment, intense pain roused Kaniki once more, his body already drenched in blood. Kaniki, you truly are remarkable. 
This is the first time I've played with a toy displaying such formidable resilience. Yakumo's eyes gleamed with excitement as he slowly approached Kaniki Ken. Since this toy is so durable, let's make things more exhilarating. Do you know the Chinese red-headed centipede? Yakumo grinned, producing a purple creature measuring 20 centimeters in length. This centipede is bloodthirsty. Despite its minuscule mouthparts limiting its intake, the pain it inflicts is indescribable. Can I place it in your ear? No, please don't. Strong fear once again gripped Kaniki Ken's heart. Ah, what a beautiful plea. Yakumo wore a satisfied smile, gently inserting the creature into Kaniki Ken's ear. A piercing shriek echoed, the iron chair trembling. In the midst of the blood on the ground, Ken Kaniki's feet wildly stomped. He could endure no more, the pain that consumed his mind defied description. Boom! In the Hokage world, vertical lines appeared in Naruto's eyes, nine tails chakra overflowing. Unable to tolerate the grotesque figure before him, boundless killing intent surged within him. In the Tokyo Ghoul world, Kurishima took his eyes turned scarlet, her body trembling. She harbored only one thought at that moment. To kill Omori Yakumo. Many viewers, unable to contain their anger, wished to enter the world of ghouls and eliminate Yakumo. Individuals who exploit the vulnerable, like this despicable person, evoke extreme displeasure in their hearts. Observing Kaniki Ken's suffering, Yakumo became even more exhilarated, already yearning to devour him. But that's not enough. Kaniki once again entered the spiritual world, but in the next moment, his head was abruptly seized. Back in reality, as his eyes adjusted, he saw the couple who had previously planned to rescue him tied and gagged before him. After days of gaming, I've realized that you possess not only physical strength but also mental resilience. You've managed to keep your sanity intact for so long. So, I've decided to change the rules of the game to make it more interesting. Yakumo wore a cruel smile and chuckled morbidly, choose between the two girls in front of you. Save one, and you get to live. Approaching Kaniki Ken's ear intimately, he added, you must choose, or I'll kill them both. In the DC world, the eyes of God ignited with fury. A wicked smile appeared on Lucifer's demonic face as he remarked, if there's a chance in the future, I must purchase this man's soul. Mazikeen has devised some new tortures, and I'm certain to enjoy them. God acknowledged the one responsible for all this and casually said, perhaps there will be an opportunity. Yakumo took Kaniki Ken's ring finger and whispered like a devil in his ear, in other words, Kaniki, whom do you wish to save? This boy, who hasn't uttered a complaint to the world, is on the verge of being struck by lightning. Why should I have to make this choice? I can't choose, it's as if I'm the one killing them. The sensation of wielding a butcher's knife and about to take someone's life tormented him, causing him to crumble. Observing Ken Kaniki's indecision, Yakumo lost control. He walked over, seized the woman's throat, and gradually increased the pressure. The woman could no longer breathe, paralyzed by the fear of impending slaughter. Yet, Kaniki Ken still couldn't make the choice to end another person's life with his own hands. As he witnessed the girl on the verge of death, the man collapsed to the ground. Breaking free from the restraining bandage in his mouth, he unleashed a wild yell at Kaniki Ken, Choose me. Choose me, Kaniki. Choose me quickly. A wave of pure love for the world swept through, bringing countless viewers to tears. The man, without hesitation, ready to sacrifice his life, touching the hearts of many. But in the next moment. With a bang, Yakumo broke the woman's throat. He followed through on his earlier words, and the next second, Kagun instantly pierced through the man. A pair of lovers perished before Kaniki Ken's eyes. Yakumo, the next moment, grinned ominously like a demon, Kaniki Ken, it's all your fault. Asterisk boom Kaniki Ken's eyes turned white as he entered the spiritual world in astonishment. Not my fault, no, not my fault. He repeated it like a mantra, as if this would ease his pain and make him unable to witness the couple's demise because of him. Off screen, Kurishima Tuka observed the trembling Ken Kaniki and couldn't resist walking over, embracing the distraught individual. She gently stroked the trembling back of Ken Kaniki and softly said, It's not your fault. Kaniki. At this moment, Rise, reappeared. Sitting in a pool of blood beside Kaniki Ken, she spoke quietly, up to now, you're still fixated on such an obvious fact, blaming yourself blindly. 
The result hasn't changed at all. So, it's all your fault, Kaniki. The beginning of all this wasn't because you, an idiot, were deceived by me and manipulated by the doctor. So, it's all your fault, Kaniki. If you could have killed Yakumo, those two people could have been saved. So, it's still your fault, Kaniki. If you hadn't been weak in stopping your mother, she wouldn't have died. It's still your fault, Kaniki. And your foolish mother, if she could reject that vampire sister, she wouldn't have died of overwork, leaving you alone. Off screen, Kurishima Tuka felt Ken Kaniki trembling even more in her arms, tears wetting her shoulders. She realized the boy had been missing his mother intensely. In the world of Hokage, Kushina hugged Naruto tightly, bursting into tears, feeling extreme distress for her child. Because Naruto not only suffered over the years but also missed his unseen parents. Every cold night, young Naruto desperately wished for his mother to stay by his side. Rai's continued revealing the painful truth, if your mother truly loved you, she should have let go of her sister. Actually, you want her to do the same, right? Kaniki Ken wept bitterly, praying for Rai's to stop talking, those words pierced his heart like a knife. That was another, more terrifying pain. However, at this moment, he could no longer endure that kind of yearning. He was like a young child abandoned by his mother, crying helplessly on the street, Mommy Mommy, why? Why did you leave me alone? I'm so scared, I'm so lonely. I really hope you can choose me. I hope you can live for me. At this moment, Kaniki Ken's pain was unleashed, and a seed that had been buried in his heart sprouted. Rai's Kamashiro asked softly, even if I can't help your aunt. Kaniki Ken was hysterical, bloodshot eyes widened, and he cried out loudly, I will die without help. Even if you want to hurt others. I'm going to hurt others. Even if you want to take someone else's life. I want to take their life. Kaniki Ken was in a frenzy. Rai's Kamashiro showed a gentle smile, hugged Kaniki Ken in her arms, and said softly, good boy. Everyone has moments when they have to give up one side to protect what's important. The next second, her voice became colder. And your mother didn't do that, she's not gentle, she's just weak. So now, do you want to accept me? Kaniki Ken broke free from the shackles, pressing Rai's Kamashiro to the ground. I don't need to accept you, I just need to surpass you. Don't know when the space turned blood red. Rai's Kamashiro asked softly, me, it doesn't matter if it's the wrong choice. Kaniki Ken's pupils were already the size of a pinhead, and the last tear shed from his bloodshot eyes. He said slowly and firmly, the wrong person is not me. Wrong, it's this world like a drop of red ink falling into pure water, the boundless white flowers were instantly dyed red by blood, transforming into a sea of blood-colored flowers on the other side. The sound of chewing ceased, and scarlet blood dripped down the corner of Ken Kaniki's mouth. His black hair turned white. He slowly raised his head, one eye was normal, and the other, a black eye, held a scarlet pupil devoid of emotion. Ken Kaniki revealed his new identity without a trace of expression. I am a ghoul. From this moment on, he was no longer human, only hell was his place. Inside the fun room, Yakumo felt a chill in his heart as he looked at the scarlet one-eyed figure. As a ghoul, he felt a coolness rushing from his tailbone to his scalp, causing goosebumps all over his body. He fully understood, he was not the protagonist. That one eye was the true protagonist. Yakumo's savage and mad smile disappeared entirely. He picked up the iron scissors again, but this time, he didn't plan to continue torturing the other party. The happy time was over. It's not that he didn't want to play anymore, but the pigeons had already attacked. He slowly paced to the other side, looking at Ken Kaniki with his head down. Yakumo's mouth dripped with disgusting saliva, his eyes widened with excitement, making his appearance even more grotesque. He let out a disgusting laugh mixed with saliva. Then, it's time to eat. Let me devour all of you. But in the next moment, he seemed to hallucinate and saw Rise Kamashiro sitting on the chair, her eyes full of disgust and mockery. You are such a boring man. The words of Rise didn't anger him. The strong smell made him even more excited, and he burst out Kagun behind him, exclaiming, Huh, you are still the best. Be my food. Yakumo opened his mouth and lunged at Ken Kaniki. 
Countless people couldn't bear to look directly at the disgusting scene of blood splashing and living beings being eaten raw, along with the tragic situation of Kaniki Ken. Meow. In an instant, the chain shattered. Ken Kaniki jumped away, flipped over dexterously behind Yukumo, and strangled the opponent's neck with the remaining chain. The scarlet eyeball emitted an incomparable chill. Then come and eat me. However, at the moment the voice fell, Ken Kaniki bit off a large piece of the opponent's flesh. This sudden change stunned countless people. It was only then that they realized the boy had not just changed his heart. Uchiha Madara sighed in his heart. Sure enough, in any world, the pain of the ultimate darkness would completely change a person. Although this Kaniki gained power, he was no longer Kaniki. The gentle boy, seemingly devouring the purple-haired woman, had actually consumed his old self too. Boom! The pain forced Yakumo to throw Ken Kaniki. Kaniki Ken landed steadily, chewing slowly in his mouth, and swallowed the meat in the last bite. Is this what the meat of the ghoul tastes like? It's really unpalatable, like the entrails of dead fish about to rot. Yakumo was furious. He had always been the one eating others, but today, he was eaten by his own toy. Go to hell. With a roar, a kagun with purple spikes suddenly stabbed Kaniki. Kaniki Ken tilted his head and looked at Yakumo as if he was looking at a dead man. He easily dodged Kagun's attack, his lithe body spun and jumped, and he kicked Yakumo's head with one swift motion. Yakumo showed a cruel smile again because the opponent's calf was completely held by himself. However, Kaniki Ken didn't take it seriously. He turned his body vigorously, his calf twisted into a twist, and the other leg kicked Yakumo fiercely. Yakumo was already scared to tears by the exposed calf, he couldn't imagine how painful it would be. Yakumo hit the wall, and then bounced to the ground. Kaniki Ken fell to the ground expressionlessly, and his smashed calf spun back like a rubber band. He's a ruthless man, Orochimaru exclaimed. Although it can be cured, the pain will not go away. A calf was completely crushed and twisted, and even he would feel a lot of pain. However, there was not a trace of pain on Kaniki Ken's face, as if it wasn't his own body, and he didn't care at all. Kaniki Ken's face is extremely calm, do you think I will still feel pain at this level? This scene makes Yakumo go crazy, it seems that reason is moving away. Kagun behind him is like a scarlet muscle, inserting into his eyes, nose, and mouth, completely wrapping his right arm. In the blink of an eye, he turned into a monster. Kill you. Kill you. Yakumo roars like a beast and rushes towards Kaniki Ken. Boom. Kaniki Ken hit the opponent with a punch and didn't respond but was hit by the opponent and hit the wall. However, in the next second, Kaniki Ken walked down the wall unharmed. It really doesn't hurt at all. He showed a somewhat mad and dark smile, then, it's my turn next. The voice falls, and four scarlet scales grow from his back waist. Ha 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 ha. Amid the terrifying, gloomy, and joyful laughter, the four scales are like butterflies wearing flowers, madly attacking Yakumo. No, this moment became a one-sided beating. Yakumo can't attack Kaniki Ken at all, but the opponent's Kagun is hitting him again and again. Boom the four scales are gathered together, like a huge fan that slaps Yakumo into the ground. The marble is completely broken, and a huge depression appears. Yakumo felt as if all his internal organs were displaced and wanted to get up with support, but at this time, the kagun was like a sharp blade that instantly penetrated his calf. The severe pain made him scream. And listening to this voice, Kaniki Ken showed a satisfied look. The next second, Kaniki raised his index finger, then looked at the other party coldly and said a very familiar sentence, How much is 1000 minus 7? Yakumo didn't answer, but his face was hideous, and his eyes were full of anger. But the next second, he screamed again. His other calf was penetrated again. Then the cold words appeared again, minus seven, how much is it equal to? Dot. With each swing, the crimson kagun cut through the air towards Yukumo. A piercing scream echoed in the funhouse, and this time, it emanated from its master. Seven times, eight times. The intense pain and fear overwhelmed Yukumo. He trembled and cried out, much like the toys before him. Minus seven equals nine hundred and ninety-three, murmured Yukumo. Tears streamed down his face as he continued to recite, 
hoping to avoid further torture. 986. 979. He dared not stop at all. At this moment, the two sides had completed their exchange. The sadistic gecko, now pinned to the ground, uttered familiar numbers amidst pain and fear. Inside the Aegirai tree, Yakumo seethed, his face contorted with madness. He couldn't accept this sudden assault. However, in the next moment, he was stupefied. I see. Kaniki Ken approached Yakumo from behind, casting a Shinigami like gaze upon the vulnerable figure. Since you attempted to devour me earlier, now that I devour you, there's nothing you can do. In an instant, Kaniki Ken extracted a centipede from his ear, revealing a grotesque expression as he slowly descended. The scene gradually darkened, leaving only a horrifying chewing sound. And Yakumo emitted a terrifying, shrill cry before succumbing to death. Woo woo, outside the monitor, Kurishima took a gazed into Kaniki's bewildered eyes and spoke urgently, Don't be deceived, Kaniki. The tragedies you've faced aren't your fault. The kind ones are trampled not because of their weakness, but due to the malice of others. You should stand up and fight, but never lose yourself. In this world, there's no absolute right or wrong. Power itself isn't inherently good or evil, it's the human heart that determines that. Kaniki felt a tighter embrace, experiencing warmth for the first time since his mother's departure. However, he couldn't shake the doubt, was everything really as Kurishima took it claimed? His heart wavered, unknowingly. In the Shinigami world, Aizen sat high in the throne, bathed in moonlight from the colossal moon, swirling around him like a dance. It's not me who's wrong, it's the world. Quite intriguing. Aizen smiled as the displayed video unveiled a harsh reality, the unfavorable circumstances in this world stem from the inadequacies of the involved parties. Weakness is a sin. Look at Kaniki before him, experienced pain, covered in bruises, indecisive, and weak. All stemming from weakness. Despite possessing formidable strength, it must be suppressed within. Though it brought a glimmer of light, it wasn't enough to birth new ideas. In reality, the world lacks absolute good or evil, it's a realm where distinguishing truth between the strong and the weak is impossible. This is the world's essence, or this is humanity's essence. In the DC universe, Lucifer wore a slightly terrifying smile, Dad, another fallen soul. God remained composed, perhaps, but there seems to be hope for change. When Kaniki Ken asserted that the world was wrong, he sighed. No longer weak, shifting from an abused to an abuser isn't a wise choice. The boy failed to discern the essence of power. Completely swayed by that mental image. Whether a person or a so-called savior, nothing is purely black or white. However, if one day Kaniki Ken can perceive the essence of his heart and the world, perhaps he can transform into a stronger being. If such a transformation hasn't occurred in the other's world, Kaniki Ken might take a different path. At that moment, distant sounds echoed once more. During reward distribution, the angel Kanakian form can be used for 20 minutes a day. The screen lights up again, revealing an older Kaniki Ken surrounded by sword-like figures. In a certain room, the chairman of the CCG and Tsuniyoshi Washu's son, Kichimura Washu, abruptly stood up, revealing a scarlet one-eyed gaze. Examining the image before him, his expression contorted into a grotesque visage. He was the perpetrator of Kaniki's tragic life. Inside the cafe, Ken Kaniki wore a perplexed expression. As the golden light descended, he unmistakably sensed a surge in strength, and the various abilities of that form had already manifested in his mind. Whenever he employed them, they would never fail. At this moment, the cafe's manager, Kyuzen Yoshimura, was taken aback. As an SS-level ghoul, he felt a formidable threat emanating from Kaniki. In the recreation room, Yakumo's face darkened considerably. He no longer wished to torment his adversary, the fear of death had enveloped him entirely. Especially in the face of the transformation, he had completely lost confidence in confrontation. To be continued in 24 hours. The picture dimmed completely, and then the screen vanished. Shinigami World Within the lost no chase, Aizen, observing Hogyoku, suddenly turned his head, as if he had sensed something. A peculiar smile crossed his face. The present. In an unfinished building in a certain city, an iron gate swung open, revealing a room adorned with a bar inside. Upon hearing the door open, Jiriko Katsuzawa, 
sporting an eye patch on his right eye, with a beard, and dressed as a waiter, paused from wiping the glass in his hand. He glanced up and saw a man in a black cloak and white uniform with disheveled black hair. In an instant, his expression changed drastically. And those still in the establishment, including Kugo Jinjo, Ruruka Dokugamine, Yukio Hans Voro Berna, and others, suddenly paled and their eyes filled with fear. One name simultaneously echoed in everyone's minds, Yawach. Not too difficult to find. Yawach's face remained calm, but he bore an air of indifference. After uttering these words casually, he seated himself on a tall chair in front of the bar that no one had approached. Then, like any ordinary patron, he opened his mouth, a glass of ice water. However, Jiriko Katsuzawa acted strangely this time and did not comply with the order. Seeing this, the entire Foolbringers organization's members held their breath, nervously and terrified, observing Jiriko Katsuzawa. Is this person insane? That, Yawach, is an entity even Yamamoto Shigakuni and the Spirit King's royal guards would be wary of, hurry and obey. It doesn't matter if you perish, just don't implicate us. At this moment, Yawach, seated on the high chair, frowned, then slowly raised his head. The terrified expression on Jiriko Katsuzawa's face vanished, replaced by a calm and relaxed demeanor. He turned around and selected a black bottle, poured out the scarlet liquor, and placed it in front of Yawach, then smiled, after so many years, won't you try the new things humans have concocted? It's delicious. Kugo Jinjo and the others instantly felt their scalps tingle, more frightened than when facing Yawach. Because the voice emanating from Jiriko Katsuzawa's mouth belonged to someone else. When did this happen again? You and the others failed to notice. In front of the bar, Yawach's furrowed brows eased, and without a word, he picked up the wine glass and took a sip. Then he shook his head. Ordinary. Jiriko Katsuzawa smiled, is it just ordinary, or exceptionally ordinary? It's all just ordinary. Yawach slowly raised his head, resembling a waking lion, fixing his gaze directly on Jiriko Katsuzawa as though he perceived someone who could plumb the depths. It might not be wise to make such claims, Jackie Tristan, from the vacant seat, stood up suddenly, chuckling. Overconfidence can be a weakness at times, Riruka Dokugamine also rose to her feet. It's a lovely day today, perfect for some physical activity, Shikuro Tsukishima, slender, closed the book in his hand, his eyes gleaming. At this moment, all the Foolbringer members in the room stood up, wearing identical smiles and focused gazes on Yawach. With a collective smile on their faces, they stared directly at Yawach. There was no trace of panic on Yawach's face as he slowly stood up. One of the special forces, Aizen Sosuke, seems different from what I knew before. Isn't that a rather normal occurrence? Jiriko Katsuzawa replied casually, as if it were expected. It seems I've underestimated you, Yawach stated, looking directly at the person before him. He found himself unable to fathom the other's abilities, akin to watching a constantly shifting image. At that moment, everyone in full appearance spoke in unison, their voices echoing, hence, it might be better for the old man, forgotten by time, to die quietly and peacefully. The world isn't very welcoming to you today. Yawach's eyes gradually sharpened. It appears you're quite confident. As he spoke, Yawach instantly appeared in front of Kugo Jinjo, his entire arm thrust through the opponent's chest. Yet, no blood emerged. Kugo Jinjo wore a peculiar smile, and the next second, it shattered like a mirror. Simultaneously, all the objects in the room vanished, transforming into a pure green space. Yukio Hans, holding a game console, laughed, the game is on, Yawach. In the world of the Hunter x Hunter, Gon marveled at the starry sky while staying with Killua. Due to the video's influence, the Ant King Maruam had already departed from the East Gota Republic. This news, delivered by the President, also led Pitu, the Royal Guard, to follow suit. The high evil humans' plan to assassinate the Ant King was abandoned, leaving Gon, seeking revenge, bewildered as he couldn't locate Pitu. And at that moment, the screen reappeared. Unbeknownst to them, 24 hours had passed, 8, 7, 3, 2, 1. The screen lit up, but it was in black and white. In the image, a black figure, unaffected by gravity, floated upwards like a ghost, hair billowing. Killua suddenly sat up, his eyes filled with disbelief. Top 10 Darken Characters List, No, Hunter x Hunter World, 
oaths and constraints. Gone, this seems to be you, Killua said uncertainly. Although the body and men's strength have undergone significant changes, the appearance still bears a striking resemblance to Gon, and the aura is nearly identical. Gon also sat up and observed himself in the image. Could it be a desperate situation in the future, prompting him to resort to such measures? Simultaneously, President Netero displayed a look of astonishment. The other party's aura surpassed his current self. What transpired in the future for Gon to transform like this? The image gradually brightens, revealing a continuous and stylish building complex, the royal palace of East Gorto, the Republic of East Gorto. The subsequent scene depicts Hunter Association President Netero and the Ant King departing on a golden dragon. Countless viewers were momentarily stunned. Isn't this the same video from the last time? Why is it being repeated? But in the next moment, the camera switched. In the image, a girl with animal ears crouches on the ground like a cat. In front of her lies an unconscious white-haired girl with a severe abdominal injury. Looking up, a puppet connected to the tail of the cat-eared girl hovers, with numerous surgical instruments extending from her fingers, tending to the gravely injured white-haired girl. Suddenly, a breeze blows, and another person appears in the room. A person emanating strong killing intent. He speaks in a low voice, filled with hatred, do you still remember me? Neferpatu's eyes tremble, displaying disbelief. At such a critical moment of treatment, she did not expect someone to break through here. She turns back and sees a boy enveloped in black aura, but she can't recall who the person in front of her is. The boy clenches his fists and shouts angrily, I'm gone freaks. I came to you to restore Kite, the next moment flashes into memory, recounting Patu's encounter with Kite, culminating in Kite stopping Patu and allowing him and Killua to live, eventually turning into a stitched doll. Gon is left speechless off-screen. Locating Patu, the original future, has become an exceedingly challenging task. Somewhere in the forest, the Ant King breathes a sigh of relief. Fortunately, he chose to depart on his own, or he wouldn't have been able to bear it if Kamugi was injured. Despite his newfound strength, he dislikes surprises. Before one realizes it, Miriam, who possesses humanity, also harbors vulnerabilities. The screen returns to the present. Pitu's eyes tremble, panic setting in her heart. But the reason is not fear of the other party's revenge, but how to fulfill the king's order. Because using the Dr. Blythe requires a lot of men, and during the activation of the skill, she cannot use other abilities. Off screen, Killua is a little weird. The Patu in front of him didn't even take a fighting stance in the face of the enemy, and she didn't exude a bit of Nen, she was just as defenseless as a dead body. Gon stared at the enemy in front of him, he didn't even think about winning or losing this battle, and at this time, he also saw the human girl behind Patu. At this moment, the figures of the girl and Kite overlapped, and he seemed to see the devil who tortured Kite doing the same thing to the girl, Gon steps forward angrily. I'll let you and the monster on you leave that girl, and then duel with me, and after the duel, put Kite, however, before he could finish speaking, Patu actually knelt on the ground with both knees and spread her hands out in a gesture of giving up resistance. She lowered her head and begged, please, please wait a moment. This sentence made Gon seem to have punched Cotton, which angered him even more, he didn't understand why he had to wait, how long have you waited for this day? He will never wait, however, just as he walked forward, Patu pleaded in a panic, you can do whatever you want me to do, but please let me save this person, I must save her. Hearing these words, Patu's eyes became dull, and darkness began to gather inside, why do you have to save her? Patu answered truthfully, this girl is the most important person to the Ant King, who is regarded as a treasure, and it is her duty to fulfill the king's order. This sentence makes Gon's mentality completely explode, and a stronger black aura erupts from his body. Kite is also his most important person, but he was mercilessly killed by the Patu in front of him and made into a doll. How dare you say such a thing to him now, at this time, what she said is true, Gon. Killua stopped trying to let Patu treat the girl. But Gon is even more mad. His eyes were full of pain, and he shouted at Killua as if he was crying. Should. Maybe. Just kidding. How can you believe what this kite says, absolutely, absolutely can't believe it. Taste. When the sound of the fracture came, Patu turned around in shock and saw that Patu broke his left arm. Then she trembled and said, 
if you want, your right hand and both feet can be broken. If you think I will target you after the treatment, you can abuse me as much as you want without affecting the treatment. At this moment, the viewers of countless worlds are confused. For now, they can't tell who will darken. Hearing those words, Gon angrily knelt on the ground, collapsing and crying out in pain and tears. Damn it, damn it, why do you care so much about that girl and go to such lengths for Kite? In this moment, the young man continued to pound the ground like a madman. Outside the screen, President Netero sighed and shook his head. Gon always believed Kite wasn't dead, but witnessing Kite tortured and made a human puppet made him despise his own cowardice and incompetence. This young one had been fighting desperately, though he didn't quite understand why because his true enemy was himself. Saving Kite had transformed into a demonic path, the only way for the kid to save himself, forcing him to defeat Pitu. But defeating Pitu meant turning into a demon like her and letting a human girl die. Now Gon faced a choice, to be a coward again, bearing the infamy of not daring to save his friends and suffering eternally, or to press forward by any means, seize the moment, and become a demon devoid of humanity. Regardless of his choice, Gon's heart would ache. His earlier outburst towards Killua was a desperate plea for Killua to reveal that Patu was lying, sparing him from making that choice. Gon stood up, choosing not to believe Patu. In the next moment, golden energy gathered on his right fist, forming a flame, and a decisive punch began. But at that moment, Killua hastily intervened, Gon, if you kill her, Kite will never recover. He had observed from the sidelines and knew Patu was not lying. Gon halted, coldly remarking to Killua, Killua, you're fortunate. You can remain calm because you can distance yourself from the trouble, in his heart, Gon felt an intense chill. Killua remained silent, having experienced the same dilemma, he could either watch Kite's fate unfold or kill Patu. He could do all this without bearing any burden, but Gon couldn't. Killing Patu would condemn Gon to a lifetime of agony. So he had to speak up to halt the impending action. Outside the screen, Gon gazed at Killua with tearful eyes. The supposed impartial bystander, Killua, unaffected by the scene, remained composed. He understood the potential harm his words could inflict upon Killua. Killua responded with a nonchalant smile. Gon agreed to Patu, granting only an hour, with a condition, to rescue Kite. Patu consented, while Gon sat there, waiting in silence. The screen began to fast forward and jump. When the camera halted again, Pitu had healed Komugi. The two departed from the palace and arrived at Kite's imprisonment location. The wooden door creaked open, revealing a man adorned with sewing needles and threads, kneeling under candlelight at the room's end. Off screen, Gon's excitement grew, at least, the video in front of him sparked hope. As long as there's hope, he can persevere and fight. The pair walked behind Kite and Gon, with anticipation, addressed Pitu, then, as per the agreement, you must treat Kite well. Pitu remained still but spoke coldly and calmly, so, what's your name? Gon, Gon freaks. At this moment, the roles of the two sides reversed. Gon responded promptly, refraining from questioning the sudden inquiry. Pitu's voice, devoid of fluctuation, continued, because you complied with my request, I should at least tell the truth. Hearing this, Patu's heart trembled, panic was seeping in. Then, he heard Patu's brutally honest words, he is dead. He was already dead before we came here, and I cannot resurrect him. What I can do is preserve the corpse and reconstruct the puppet manipulation. His soul is no more, rendering restoration impossible. A strong wind rushed into the room, toppling Kite's body to the ground. At that moment, the world turned black and white. Gon's eyes lost focus instantly, leaving behind only suppressed despair and intertwined pain. Off screen, Gon knelt helplessly, hope rising and shattering once again. His expression remained impassive, yet he exuded a terrifyingly profound sense of despair. He uttered quietly, Next, I will spend my entire life searching for her. Until I kill her. The scent of despair, thick and harsh, permeated through the screen. Orochimaru's hoarse laughter echoed in the air. Uchiha Abito, concealed behind a mask, lowered his head silently, concealing the pain in his eyes. Once, he too had been deceived, subjected to this kind of earthly hell. And he had inflicted such torment upon others. Hence, the infinite Tsukuyumi represented the true future. Without it, 
this world would only continue its cycle of reincarnation. Redemption was still possible. Or, perhaps, escape. As the spell settled back into the world, Madara smiled contentedly, to deceive without hesitation and apologize without sincerity is to be no more than an animal, it is, after all, inhuman. Patu cast a perplexed glance at Gon, unsure of what troubled this man. The emotion seemed as though someone had seized control of his being. Gon slumped to the ground, tears streaming from vacant eyes. Sure enough, I killed Kite. Kite is dead. Kite is dead. He repeated the words incessantly, memories of Kite flooding his mind. Whoever kills Kite, it's all my fault. No. 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 It's me, it's me who killed him. The hearts of countless viewers tightened, witnessing firsthand how a person descended into a pit of despair. And it was Gon himself who had pushed him there. The flame of self-blame relentlessly consumed the young man's soul. On the other side, Pitu summoned Dr. Blythe to mend her wounds. Gon raised his head, staring blankly at Pitu, his thoughts in disarray. Instinctively, he asked through tear-filled eyes, wouldn't you rather save Kite first? Why don't you save Kite and heal yourself instead? Pitu, with her arms returned to normal, displayed no emotion in her eyes. She spoke casually, as if discussing something trivial, of course, I will kill you. For the king, I would eliminate all threats. In the One Piece world, Luffy jumped in frustration. Just moments ago, he sympathized deeply with Pitu, believing Gon to be the villain. Little did he expect to be slapped in the face when the tables turned. Ah, uh, bad cat, cat, kill me. Why not help treat Kite? At this moment, Gon's mind seemed incapable of further thought. Sure enough, why don't you help me treat Kite, dot. Gon lowered his head, softly uttering words of despair, fraud. In the darkness, a crimson, resentment, emerged, radiating from Gon's being. Gon rose slowly, his body enveloped in a mixture of red resentment and dark thoughts. An unexplained gust of wind swept in from outside at that moment. The candle was extinguished by the strong wind. Pitu trembled, her sixth sense sounding the alarm. Gon's unfocused pupils were entirely consumed by darkness, as if he were condemning himself, it doesn't matter if you die like this. Asterisk boom a violent airflow manifested, causing Pitu to instinctively take a step back. The air seemed darker than ink, rising from Gon's head, and at that moment, Gon's body transformed, resembling that of an adult. No, it should be said that Gon has become his future self at this moment. Do constraints and oaths shape the future? In the HXH world, Jing frowned for the first time. Despite claiming not to care about his son, he was visibly upset now. The price paid for such power only led to one outcome, death. Observing Gon shrouded in an ominous aura, Patu's forehead glistened with sweat. The pressure he exerted felt regal. On the opposite side, Gon slowly opened his eyes, and his long black hair defied gravity as it fluttered upward. He gazed at Pitu like a malevolent ghost. Asterisk a hellish roar echoes asterisk, I'm going to kill you, Pitu. Asterisk Terpsichorus the demon, the puppet master, appeared, threads connecting to Pitu. Controlled by the doll, you will gain power and speed beyond the limit. It's a dance beyond the limit. In the next moment, blue veins burst from Pitu's muscles. She formed her four fingers into a deadly point and, like a blur, stabbed towards Gon. So fast. The president, astonished by Pitu's strength, was taken aback. But the next second. Asterisk who as if the breeze blows Pitu stabbed the air, Gon completely disappearing from her sight. Observing the empty room, Pitu assumed Gon had gone to find the Ant King and rushed out anxiously. However, Gon awaited her quietly outside. When she emerged, he spoke softly, Come with me. I don't want to spoil this place. Afraid he might go to the Ant King, Pitu chose to follow. Silence fell in the forest. The wind blew, and the moon hid behind dark clouds. In this moment of darkness, Pitu's pupils shrank to mere slits as she launched a sudden attack on Gon. Countless viewers were shocked. This Pitu seemed truly evil. However, the human sense of right and wrong might not apply to beasts. Begging for mercy, deceit, sneak attacks, maybe none of it mattered to Pitu. Silent and lightning fast, viewers envisioned the scene of Gon's blood splattering. 
but in the next second, Gon, as if prophetic, dodged the attack, then kicked Pitu in the stomach. Asterisk boom Pitu bent into a prawn shape, vomiting blood, soaring into the sky like a cannonball. Gon didn't look up, instead, he bent down, emitting golden light. His body began to swell, muscles bulged, and dazzling energy gathered on his right fist. Asterisk rock a sun-like round appeared on Gon's fist. As Pitu descended, it collided with her face. Blue blood sprayed, and Pitu flew like a ragdoll. A straight line appeared in the forest, rocks and trees along the way shattered. Pitu had passed out, her face bloody. Yet, Gon didn't cease, he relentlessly punched Pitu's head. Asterisk, paper, scissors. Asterisk the golden light reappeared. Gon's eyes were hollow as he descended again without hesitation. Boom the earth trembled, and Pitu lay motionless. After driving someone crazy, she sent herself to hell. Off screen, Gon's eyes were red. He eagerly anticipated the day he could deliver a punch like that and shatter his opponent's head. Beside him, Killua was filled with worry. Killua, who rushed at the fastest speed, Gon turned his head. Tears kept streaming from those lifeless eyes. And in that moment, even after Pitu's death, Hernan released her ability, controlling her corpse to attack Gon from behind. Fortunately, Killua pushed Gon away at the critical moment, and Gon only lost one arm. However, the next second brought a sentence that distressed Killua. It doesn't hurt at all, and it's finally what Kite looked like before he died. Off screen, Killua instantly understood that Gon deliberately didn't dodge, as if seeking atonement, just like when Kite had his arm cut off by Pitu. Pitu's corpse, still under her inability control, continued attacking. But in the next second, Gon punched her. Then, Gon suddenly jumped, grabbed his severed arm, fell like a meteor, and pierced through Pitu's body with it, pinning her to the ground. The right arm is yours. I rock. Although Gon lacked his right fist, his severed limbs wound still condensed with golden energy, carrying a blood-like resentment. The air trembled, and the chi in the surrounding atmosphere, condensed by the guessing box, became as massive as a millstone, with the golden core wrapped in resentment like lightning. In it, even more frightening fluctuations emerged. Killua's eyes trembled, unable to accept it in his heart, because Gon once again overdrew his life. Paper, scissors. With Gon's painful whispers, the guessing box swelled again, as if a sun had appeared. At this moment, even the president's expression changed, exuding an aura that could completely obliterate him. The wind howled, and in the fiery air, Gon slowly turned his head to look at Killua. The once empty eyes now held a hint of color. It was an apology to Killua, and relief. At that moment, Killua finally realized that Gon didn't want to live at all. The next second, an earth shattering explosion occurred. The blazing sun expanded completely, the ground tore apart, mud turned into huge waves, and the entire night sky was illuminated in an instant. Gon's tears fell to the ground, his hands pressed against the earth. He lowered his head, afraid to meet Killua's gaze, and choked out, I'm sorry, Killua. His apology extended beyond the words spoken to Killua in the video. It encompassed a recognition of his failure to consider the other party in the final explosion. The first sentence had likely shattered the other's heart, and he couldn't fathom whether the other party could survive the impending blast. Killua placed a comforting hand on Gon's shoulder and spoke with a gentle smile, if you're apologizing, then let's prevent these futures from unfolding. He refrained from offering empty words of consolation, knowing their futility. Instead, he aimed to dispel Gon's thoughts of self-harm with Pitu. With his super speed abilities, Killua could easily avoid the explosion center, finding shelter behind and likely escaping serious injury or death. However, he kept this assurance to himself. Although he had decided to part ways with Gon, genuine concern for the other's well-being lingered. Gon, head bowed in anguish, found himself shaken by Killua's words. If Killua perished because of him, the weight of his sins would be unbearable. Somewhere on the mainland, the shocked expression in Hisoka's eyes vanished, replaced by an excited smile. Endless grief and despair, culminating in the agony of unparalleled self-blame. To die together with the enemy as atonement for his sins. He's truly an excellent child. In the DC world, God sighed. The young man's soul hadn't succumbed to darkness, instead, it plunged into the hell he had constructed for himself. 
death served both as atonement and a yearning for liberation. In that moment, a voice echoed from the endless void, rewards are beginning to be distributed, can use the form of future gone, ten minutes a day. Upon hearing this, Kilua displayed surprise. It amounted to forced growth without paying any price. Extra rewards are issued. The darkened screen illuminated once more. A depiction of a young girl with purple pupils and red hair, identified as Reincarnated Kite, appeared in the lower left corner. Here is a corrected version of the translated passage, at this point, the surroundings plunged into complete darkness. Gon was momentarily stunned, and the next second, he disregarded the newfound power, leaping up with excitement to embrace Killua. Killua, Kite isn't dead. He's alive. Somewhere in the forest, the Ant King Marum stared at the screen in amazement, feeling a strange blood connection. In the Shinigami world, in a large, dark stone chamber, three screens simultaneously faded away. Yawach observed his illusory right hand, riddled with cracks, and stood up. Concealing his palm within the black cloak, he approached Ishida Yuryu and spoke indifferently, Have you made your decision? Time is running out. Ishida Yuryu's face turned extremely pale as he gazed at his father, Ishida Ryukin, hanging upside down on the blue cross in midair. His eyes reflected pain and inner conflict. Much like Gon in the video, Ishida Yuryu now faced two choices. These choices were presented to him by the Quincy King, Yawach, 1. Opt to go to the Soul Society and deceive Kurosaki Ichigo. 2. Witness his father Ishida Ryukin being killed before his eyes. No matter which option he chose, it would lead him down a path to hell, mirroring Gon's fate. Ishida Ryukin, devoid of strength to struggle, showed his emotions to his son for the first time. His eyes revealed distress. As time elapsed, Yawach, akin to a true Shinigami, uttered indifferently, Procrastination is futile. If you don't decide, I will choose for you. The dark room brightened, and hundreds of small blue sacred annihilations were directed at Ishida Ryukin. I choose, an incredibly hoarse voice surfaced, and Ishida Yuryu, unable to kneel on the ground, made a choice. In the world of Demon Slayer, Doma's expression remained unchanged. The video was as monotonous as ever, almost lulling him to sleep. He couldn't comprehend pain, fear, or any emotions. Well, except for the pleasure he felt when devouring a pretty girl. Lost in thought, Doma displayed a gentle smile, as if he were a kind and considerate person. Yet, in the next moment, he uttered devilish words, the fourteen-year-old girl who just joined the S Demon Hunter Corps isn't bad. Let's feast on her tonight. Footsteps echoed, the wooden partition slid open, and a fiery red figure entered. Lifting his head to reveal the flame-like pattern on his forehead, he declared, Girl, today, in the name of Doma, I will kill you here. And Doma also smiled at this time, I didn't expect that I really caught you out. The world of Hokage, land of whirlpools. The ruins of the Uzumaki clan are overgrown with weeds, and most of the houses have basically collapsed. At this time, the three figures were dealing with a dilapidated shrine. It was Minato, Kushina and Naruto. Although they were working, the three of them had smiles on their faces, and the scene was very warm. But at this moment, Minato and Kushina's smiles disappeared, and they turned to look at the same time. A black space crack appeared, and then Uchiha Madara, wearing a white feather coat, walked out from it. The two kept Naruto behind them and looked at Madara coldly. They didn't forget that in the original timeline, the other party wanted to capture Nine Tails and become Ten Tails Jinchuriki. Uchiha Madara stood there calmly, without further movement, and then said lightly, Don't be nervous, I'm just here to tell you some news. After obtaining Atsutsuki Kagaya's template, I not only gained strength but also some information. Kushina didn't have a good face for this person who indirectly made her family miserable, and it was extremely rare not to attack. At this time, she responded coldly, Heh, do you think I'll believe what someone like you says? You'd better leave now, or I don't know how much longer I can endure. Madara didn't want to communicate with the woman. He turned to look at Minato and continued, The information I got shows that the power of ninjas comes from another race in the universe, and Atsutsuki Kagaya is just one of their branch family member, in order to get the chakra fruit, so. Minato frowned and took up the words, So since Kagaya didn't go back, this race will definitely come to our planet to check it out in the future. Madara nodded with admiration in his eyes, as expected of the fourth Hokage, who was sharp and knew everything, 
I have the template of Atsutsuki Kagaya so I know how scary this race is, and the people who come here will definitely be stronger than Kagaya. Then it's another doomsday. And we, it's better to join forces. Kushina frowned and said, just relying on a mouth and no evidence, do you think we will believe you? It's not that she said angry words. With Abito's example in front of her, she was stupid to believe that the other party was cerebral palsy. At this moment, a huge amount of chakra erupted from Naruto's body to form a human shape. A figure wearing a nine-hooked jade feather coat with a black tin stick in front of him and nine truth-seeking balls on his back sits cross-legged in the air. He sighed and said slowly, Mother, you really are not from this world. At this moment, everyone raised their heads at the same time, and the screen appeared again, nine the screen lights up, scarlet evil red fills the entire picture, and a ferocious head screams in the sky. Top 10 Darkening Characters List, No, The World of Hokage, Feel the Pain. The scene gradually brightened, revealing a red cloud against a black background cloth. He turned around slowly, unveiling a familiar face. Purple patterned eyes, tidy black stick piercings, and that distinctive orange hair. Countless viewers immediately identified him as one of the six paths pain, the one who had slain Jiraiya, Deva Path Pain. In the Hokage world, Uchiha Madara observed Minato and the others in silence. If Abito were here, he would undoubtedly find it intolerable. But Kushina sneered and remarked, Uchiha Madara, another soul lost to darkness because of you. Uchiha Madara remained unfazed and replied casually, I merely bestowed strength upon him. The true source of his suffering was Kanoha. His parents were all slain by Kanoha's ninjas. Kushina, in response, kept silent. She, too, understood the harsh realities of war, given the Uzumaki clan's experiences. In Kanoha, Jiraiya's eyes reflected complexity, then suddenly shifted to sadness, tears welling up. He silently grasped Tsunade's hand, burying his face in pain. As he felt the unyielding grip, Jiraiya's agony intensified. His body trembled, and he nearly burst into laughter. Under the blue sky, Deva Path Yahiko's body slowly ascended into the sky, unveiling a crumbling scene below. Many in the Hokage world immediately recognized it as Kanoha village, seemingly under attack by the Nagato. Witnessing this, Uchiha Madara couldn't help but display a mocking smile. Rain Shinobi Village Nagato lowered his head, anticipating what was about to transpire, for he had envisioned that moment countless times. Yahiko ascended to the sky and spoke indifferently, feel the pain. Reflect on pain. Embrace the pain. Comprehend the pain. Those ignorant of pain cannot grasp true peace. Under the dazzling sunlight, Tian Dao Pain stretched his arms, seemingly transformed into a god, gazing down upon the world. Then, as a god, he proclaimed judgment. Henceforth, let the world experience the pain. Shinra Tensei, for a moment, or perhaps a second, Kanoha appeared lifeless. The following moment, the space resounded with a deafening roar. From the heart of Kanoha, several meters of earth surged upward, compressing and rolling towards the surroundings. In this moment, houses collapsed and shattered. The ground convulsed violently, a chaotic blend of mud, bricks, splintered wood, and cement stones forming a colossal wave, reminiscent of a tsunami, swallowing everything in its path. The tremors persisted, rolling to the forest's edge before the tumultuous waves subsided. Kanoha village, sprawling and once dotted with buildings, now lay obscured beneath the aftermath, a vast crater, as if struck by a meteorite. Countless ninjas and civilians, their resistance futile, met their demise in eerie silence. At this moment, save for a scant few hundred survivors, Kanoha village was a lifeless expanse. Under the might of Shinra Tensei, Kanoha village succumbed to obliteration. In the world of the Hokage, a heavy silence befell. For the people of Kanoha, witnessing their home's devastation was unbearable, an instant claim of tens of thousands of lives, more horrifying than any war. Jiraiya, wrenching himself from Tsunade's grasp, eyes ablaze with fury, declared within, never again. I won't leave our fate to another. This. This is too much. Tsunade, seizing Jiraiya's hand, resolutely affirmed, this time, I'm with you. Within the rain shinobi village, Nagato, facing Conan, spoke with calm certainty, Jiraiya Sensei will come here. Stay here, he won't harm you. Conan, anxious, questioned, 
and you, Nagato. Where will you go? Nagato's response was uncertain, I don't know. I want to see the world more clearly. With Rain Shinobi Village requiring a guardian, Conan couldn't accompany him. In the land of water, Daidara, journeying with his mother, eyed the scene with envy. When will the world witness my ultimate art? I can't wait. Amidst the ruins, little Sakura emerged from Katsuyu's protection. Her eyes widened in disbelief as she surveyed the desolation, the once vibrant Kanoha reduced to barren yellow-brown soil, devoid of people and structures. Sakura trembled uncontrollably, with only one person in her thoughts at this moment. Naruto, come back soon. She cried like a cuckoo, wailing with exhaustion, please Naruto. She prayed for his return, praying for him to save everything that was at stake. As if in response, a massive white smoke erupted from the large pit. A colossal harpoon, a short sword, double-edged, and giant toads resembling three hills emerged, accompanied by an overwhelming sense of oppression. Perched atop Gamma Bunta in the middle was Gamakin, already the size of a hut. A yellow-haired boy with red eye shadow, wearing a royal robe, scrolls hanging horizontally on his back, frog eyes, and red eye shadow stood atop Gamakin. Uzumaki Naruto. Join us. Off screen, as Kushina watched the impressive scene, she turned back and touched Naruto's head, smiling and asking, Is that pink haired Sakura your girlfriend? She didn't care about Naruto's power, the girlfriend was the point. Regardless, hearing the exhausted call, she felt like she hadn't run away. Naruto was a bit embarrassed, but nodded vigorously the next second. It didn't matter if Sakura agreed or not, he was already 50% in. In Kanoha village, little Sakura was dumbfounded. It's too embarrassing to have such strong expectations in this shout. At that moment, the previous video commander paid no attention, and Naruto took Sakura, hugging her again. The twelve-year-old Haruno Sakura was shaken. Did she really want to be with Sasuke? The next second, Naruto's handsome and confident face breaks the defense. The huge Hokage rock is in front of him, and he realizes he's in Kanoha now. But Kanoha is gone. At this time, a figure falls from the sky, and Pain looks at Naruto indifferently. The next moment, the summoning technique, five figures emerge from the smoke. Six paths Pain is here. Off screen. Although this is the future, Jiraiya can't help but worry. The power of the six pains will change the game, and even with sage mode, Naruto will struggle. Boom. Dust on the ground swirls up, Tsunade lands in front of Naruto, glaring at Six Paths Pain. You've destroyed Kanoha, killed a lot of civilians and crushed their dreams. Trampled on the lives of countless people. I absolutely cannot forgive, she hasn't said the one thing yet, Nagato, as a disciple, killed his teacher Jiraiya, and he's completely mad. At this moment, Tsunade's eyes reveal endless killing intent. Pain's eyes show a trace of ridicule, and his mouth calmly speaks, it seems you understand pain a little now. However, I don't have time to deal with you right now. As the voice falls, Shura Path rushes toward Tsunade. Before I take the nine tails, let's get rid of these annoying bugs. Boom. Everyone's eyes are filled with flowers as they see Naruto suddenly appear on top of the Shura Path and slam it down. The Shura Path, which once broke Jiraiya's arm and was completely assembled by machinery, instantly shatters, scrapped. Only five members of Six Paths Pain remain. At this moment, Tsunade looks at Naruto's back in amazement, as if seeing the shadows of Jiraiya and Minato. Naruto, inheriting the beliefs of the two, seems to have become a big tree shielding Kanoha from the wind and rain at this moment. Off screen, Minato was stunned, as if he had glimpsed his own shadow in Naruto. Kushina joyfully ruffled Naruto's hair. He truly is the child of both Minato and me, so handsome, she exclaimed. Even now, they had no intention of returning to Kanoha. For that village, they had already given up their lives once, yet the outcome was Naruto's tragic childhood, condemned by thousands. This wound could not be healed. Even Minato's kindness couldn't mend it. As long as they didn't face trouble from Kanoha, it was good enough for them. However, if Naruto wished to return to visit friends, Kushina wouldn't object. They could return and stay for a while each year. In Kanoha, Hinata blushed as she watched Naruto on the screen. Suddenly, the realization that he was no longer in the village saddened her. The screen continues. 
Naruto spoke in a hushed tone, although it might not be the best time to ask, I can sense everyone's chakra now because I can absorb natural energy. So, Kakusha Sensei, did you leave the village on a mission? There is no response, and Tsunade's silence is her answer. Naruto understands that his other teacher has completely left him. However, he can't display his sorrow at this moment, he must keep it in his heart. In Konoha, Jiraiya sighed. If it weren't for the mysterious entity that resurrected Minato and Kushina, this world would truly be cruel to Naruto. To prevent any mishaps, Naruto asked Gamakin to take Tsunade away. At that moment, Animal Path Pain summoned an enormous rhino. The irrational rhino roared and charged towards Naruto, but in the next second, Naruto embraced the large horn and lifted it into the sky. The formidable power of Sage Mode was showcased at that instant. Simultaneously, two summoning beasts appeared. However, in the next second, the two toad sages combined their hands, and a tangible sound wave enveloped the summoning beasts. Naruto immediately created a clone, and the two big ball Raisingan obliterated the summoning beasts. In the background, the earth trembled. Gamabunta, Gamakin, and Gamahiro, three giant frogs, soared into the air, drew their weapons, and swiftly destroyed the two summoning beasts. The three-headed dog, about to split, was pinned down by Gamabunta and couldn't move at all. It would be helpful if Minato goes to Mount Mayaboku occasionally and asks if Naruto is willing to sign a contract, Kushina suggested with excitement. Minato nodded, indicating his agreement. In truth, Kushina was planning to go without mentioning it to him. The crucial thing isn't the toad but the sage mode, a skill Naruto possesses due to his exceptional talent. As a concerned father, he requests this opportunity for Naruto's benefit. Following the completion of the summoning ritual, Naruto's main body initiates an attack against the pains. Guided by the information in his arms, Naruto, aware of the pains details, switches from using ninjutsu to employing frog techniques. This attack, utilizing the expanded range of natural energy, effectively blindsided pain without any blind spots, knocking hungry path to the ground. With no threat of ninjutsu absorption, Naruto disperses his shadow clone once again. At this moment, Nagato Pain recognizes Naruto's pattern and casually remarks, it seems you've learned the same ninjutsu as Jiraiya Sensei. Naruto's eyes widen in disbelief. Jiraiya, his teacher, taught Pain. Since the adversary is a disciple, but he can still mercilessly kill Jiraiya. This is utterly inhumane. Observing Naruto's enraged expression, Pain remains unapologetic as he continues, you too are a disciple of Jiraiya Sensei. As fellow disciples, we should understand each other. The teacher has been, Afa, anticipating peace. Before he can finish his sentence, Naruto erupts. He cannot accept peace being associated with someone like Pain, it's an insult to Jiraiya. The air hums, and a burst of energy appears. With the assistance of his shadow clone, Naruto brandishes the sage art raisin shuriken, gazing at the devastated ruins and countless corpses below, Naruto roars, what a joke. Look at everything around here, sin, brutality, and inhuman slaughter. Only the wailing of countless souls can be heard. Tendo Pain indifferently responds, you are too narrow-minded, Naruto. You fail to understand the true meaning of peace. So please die obediently, your death will bring about true peace. Off screen. Kushina dances wildly with her red hair, her eyes turning into glowing white lights as she wields a kitchen knife in both hands. Her presence seems to cover the sky, emanating a terrifying black aura. Dare to harm my son, and I'll kill you. On the other side, the four men seem like puppets, standing side by side and trembling. So frightening, X4. I warned you not to trifle with me. Naruto can't take it anymore and hurls the sage art raisin shuriken with a roar. Spinning at high speed, the raisingan with a white wind blade explodes as it approaches pain. Human path pain doesn't escape and is completely obliterated. However, the other three paths remain unharmed. Tendo pain, unfazed, tilts his head to look at Naruto, it appears that, as Daidara mentioned, you are someone who doesn't listen at all. I'm not. I'm not. Don't speak nonsense. Big brother, we've never been apart, except for not urinating together. You know I never said that, and you'll have to vouch for me in the future. Daidara denies with a face of disbelief, 
if the woman holds on to this in her heart, it won't be over in the future. He's heard that the third Hokage's residence is gone, not a single tile left truly pitiful. Of course, I'm not afraid of them either. You know, Sesorison, I'm just afraid of trouble. Upon hearing Sesori confess with a guilty conscience, Haydn rolls his eyes. Boring. I get it. Daidara's temperament has become a bit eccentric since leaving the Akatsuki organization. Unbeknownst to him, he's been influenced, letting go of some things in his heart. In the illustration, a sudden gust of wind kicks up dust and sand, blocking everyone's vision. The next moment, the animal world is plunged into darkness, with no light at all. Hum, a sound resonated, and two blue raisin gans illuminated the darkness, bombarding the animal world. Another pain down. Now, only heaven and hell remain. The perspective shifts, and the screen brightens. I saw blue smoke emerging from Gamabunta's mouth, revealing the battle that had just taken place inside. A dozen seconds ago, taking advantage of the wind-style dust used by Toad Sage to obscure the view, Naruto sneaked up behind Pain, swallowing both Naruto and Animal Path Pain in one bite. With low combat power, the animals with very low vision are no match for Sage Mode Naruto and are quickly defeated. However, Naruto, emerging from Gamabunta's mouth, cancelled Sage Mode due to insufficient chakra. While Sage Mode is potent, Naruto loses the chakra advantages, exposing its weaknesses. Inside the Kanoha Ending Valley, Kisame commented with a smile. Itachi shook his head, no, it should be said that the Raisin Shuriken has two obvious weaknesses. Although powerful, it consumes too much chakra. Kisame nodded and continued, I've just noticed something, your brother doesn't seem to be in Kanoha. Itachi remained silent, he had already noticed this. The life he arranged for Sasuke seemed to have deviated from the beginning. Deva Path Pain obviously noticed Naruto quitting Sage Mode and immediately attacked. However, due to the excessive chakra consumption of the Shinra Tensei that destroyed a village, his body is still recovering power and cannot be used for a while. So his combat effectiveness at this time is not high. Before capturing Naruto, Sage Fukasaku used a scroll to summon a Naruto Sage Mode Shadow Clone. The next second, the Shadow Clone would be dispelled, Sage Chakra returned, and Naruto would enter Sage Mode again. Off screen, Jiraiya was annoyed by this action. Can it be played like this? You have to study this yourself. Before going to the Rain Shinobi village next time, be sure to prepare dozens of clones on Mount Mayaboku in advance. It's neither polite nor rude. Feeling the return of power, Naruto separates the Shadow Clone again. The next moment, the enormous Sage Art Raisingan reappeared in the hands of the hero, shooting towards Deva Path Pain again. Looking at Deva Path, who did not dodge at all, Naruto was about to get excited but immediately froze. A black shadow fell from the sky, hands open, and the bursting chakra was absorbed like running water in a blink of an eye. At some point, the Azura Path, previously knocked down, came back to life completely intact. Looking at the scary purple head in the back, Naruto confirmed through the information brought by Katsuyu that it was the pain who resurrected the Azura Path. Naruto was not discouraged, he threw a smoke bomb, and a large amount of red smoke appeared to cover his side. In the next second, a sage art Raisingan appeared again. The Azura Path was in front again, but just as he was about to absorb it, the Raisingan transformed into Naruto. Then a new Raisingan reappeared in the smoke, like a shooting star in the blink of an eye and shot in front of Deva Path Pain. Without the absorption of the chakra, the countless wind blades, more powerful than the forbidden technique, seemed to shred Deva Path's body completely in the next second. Off screen, Kushina shook her fist excitedly. Unexpectedly, Naruto's future is not only promising in strength but also very strong in combat experience, he found a strategy in a blink of an eye. And it's already a success. At this moment, the terrifying repulsion started from Deva Path, and the Raisingan, compressed to the ultimate, was instantly scattered. At this moment, the power of Shinra Tensei appeared on Deva Path again. Naruto's attack failed. Off screen, Uchiha Madara's eyes were full of disdain. But it's not for Naruto, it's for Nagato. Okay, a pair of Rinnegans were used up, and it looks like I'm going to reclaim them someday. Originally, because of the Atsutsuki clan, he planned to let Nagato use them first, 
after all, the other party would definitely be proficient after using them for so many years. However, it seemed that the Rinnegan, which could not be attributed to one power, was too weak. But at this moment, as the Raisingan dissipated, a figure descended from the sky. The target of this figure is not Deva Path, but Azura Path more than ten meters away, with one of Raisingan's Naruto Shadow clones, instantly kill Azura Path. Oh, your son is really good. At this moment, even Madara praised Naruto without hesitation. In the battle just now, Naruto's body transformed into a Raisingan, making the Azura Path unable to absorb it and restraining the opponent at the same time. Then there is the Raisingan that Deva Path had no time to avoid. At the same time, because the Raisingan attracted the attention of Heaven and Hell, he used the smoke to approach Naruto in the sky and successfully performed a synchronized strike to kill Hell. This is a seamless three-stage attack. If it wasn't for Deva Path Pain's return to power at the most crucial moment, this victory would have belonged to Naruto. The fighting talent is excellent, but the luck is a little bit worse. Naruto didn't let failure deter him, his main form swung a powerful fist aimed at the head of Azura Path Pain. The path to hell might be closed, but by eliminating the Azura Path this time, there would be no chance for resurrection. Unfortunately, it was too late. A tremendous force, originating from the sky, sent Naruto flying instantly. The impact also dissipated the other shadow clone. At this moment, three colossal shadows descended. Three massive toads, each wielding enormous weapons, descended simultaneously, crashing down on pain like the wrath of Tarzan. However, in the next second, pain effortlessly leaped through the gaps, avoiding the attacks, and midair, he extended his hands. Shinra Tensei. Boom! The air shook violently, and the three toads were sent flying thousands of meters like giant cannonballs, finally coming to a halt after a violent collision. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, the opponent's strength had surged far beyond his own in an instant. Although considered low level, it was a dominating posture among ninjas. Uchiha Madara, your power has become a catastrophe in his hands. Sage of Six Paths spoke again at this crucial moment. Uchiha Madara turned his gaze, his demeanor icy. In the previous video, Sasuke's power originated from you. You should understand his final expression. What right do you have to judge me? Sage of Six Paths remained silent. Sasuke's eyes after defeating Kagaya resembled pains, suggesting a possible descent into paranoia. Observing the sage's silence, Madara snorted and redirected his attention to the screen. Exactly when Naruto was taken aback, Pain extended his hand towards the sky. Universal pull. In the next moment, an overwhelming gravitational force took hold, causing Naruto's body to soar uncontrollably skyward. He was then tightly ensnared by the outstretched arms of the Azura Path. However, a turning point emerged immediately as the Hell Realm began absorbing Naruto's chakra, rendering him powerless. Off screen, Jiraiya grinned. Not everyone can absorb such vast amounts of natural energy. Sure enough, the next moment, the Azura Path transformed into a toad, and then solidified into stone. Naruto broke free, and the other two toad sages prepared for an illusion. Last time, both pains were completely defenseless against this trick. However, Deva Path's expression remains remarkably calm. He extended his hand once more, and Sage Shima ascended to the sky without any resistance, with no opportunity to employ any illusions. From Deva Path's hand emerged a sharp black rod, and under the influence of intense gravity, Sage Shima willingly collided with it as if committing suicide. Scarlet blood splattered, Sage Fukasaku ceased to breathe, hanging on the black rod like a lifeless doll. Naruto, attempting to intervene with his body, collapsed to the ground, his pupils trembling in disbelief at the scene. The next moment, Deva Path employed universal pull again, and after Naruto lost control of his body's movements, Deva Path struck him to the ground with a single punch. Then, Pain seized Naruto's arm, folded the other's palms together, and swiftly pierced them with the black rod, pinning Naruto to the ground. This sight distressed Kushina. In Kanoha, Jiraiya sighed. Deva Path Pain is incredibly powerful, and he didn't even use his full strength when dealing with the others. Yet, he still exudes confidence in his ability to fight. I am currently in a permanent sage mode, absorbing natural energy continuously, transforming all my ninjutsu into sage art. And your body is back in top form. 
Together with Tsunade's mystical palm technique, the odds of winning are actually quite significant. In Rain Shinobi Village, Nagato's eyes reflect a sense of helplessness. This time, he must take action. Not just because of Jiraiya, but also due to Naruto's mother, who shared ninjutsu with Minato. He's heard rumors about the formidable resurrected Kushina. The third Hokage's residence may be in ruins, but the whispers of the one who dared not make a move and acted like a reclusive turtle have spread throughout the ninja world. As the sun is obscured, pain slowly squats down in front of Naruto, resembling a predator eyeing its prey. Under the influence of the Black Rod, Naruto, immobilized, can only shout in frustration, why would you do such a thing? He fails to comprehend the other's actions of inflicting pain on others. I've already told you, my goal is to fulfill the unfinished legacy of teacher Jiraiya. Pain gazes down, his demeanor calm as if discussing a trivial matter. It's for the sake of nurturing genuine peace and achieving justice. Naruto, unable to accept this explanation, trembles and roars, you turned my master, my teacher, my comrades, and my village into what it is now. How dare you speak of peace? Pain doesn't refute, but simply asks, so, what is your purpose now? Naruto responds without hesitation, of course, I'll defeat you. I want to bring peace to this ninja world. Indeed, that's a lofty dream, a pursuit of justice. Deva Path Pain rises slowly, his purple eyes devoid of emotion, and he continues to speak calmly, but it's your Kanoha Shinobi who turned my family, my comrades, my village into what it is now. You didn't hesitate to turn a small country like ours into a battlefield for resources. You left in triumph, leaving us only in ruins with corpses strewn everywhere. Of course, it's not just Kanoha, the so-called five great ninja villages are all the same. So, Naruto. If you seek justice and peace for the ninja world, are you targeting the wrong person? It will never be someone like me who makes real peace in the ninja world impossible, but your five major ninja villages. In the Hokage world, pain's brutal truth sent shockwaves through countless individuals. Many ordinary ninjas and civilians, who had lost their loved ones to war in the five major villages, harbored hatred towards others. However, they did not anticipate that they too were implicated as perpetrators. At this moment, the eyes of many smaller ninja villages glowed red. Even in peacetime, those five major ninja villages continued to exploit them. The easiest tasks were delegated. Many missions that could be handled by one's own ninja village were sent to the neighboring five ninja villages. Exploitation in Disguise Among the leaves, Danzo's eyes were shrouded in gloom. This time, he wondered how many unsuspecting civilians and lower-level ninjas would be deceived, requiring careful consideration. In the land of whirlpools, Uchiha Madara gazed at the Sage of Six Paths and uttered slowly, as long as the roots of human nature remain tainted, and as long as alluring interests persist, the world will cyclically return to chaos. True peace will remain elusive. The Sage of Six Paths sighed. Having survived for thousands of years in a unique form with Chakra, he couldn't ignore the truth in Uchiha Madara's words. Naruto was stunned, reality unfolded differently from what his ninja teacher had taught. In war, they were the passive side, fighting for peace. Deva Path Pain spoke slowly, you fight for your justice, and I fight for mine. We are ordinary people seeking revenge in the name of justice. However, if revenge is deemed justice, it will only breed more hatred. Understanding the past, predicting the future, I finally comprehend one thing. Humans are beings who will never truly understand each other, and the ninja world has long been dominated by hatred. Pain then asked Naruto, if it were you. How would you deal with hatred for the sake of eternal peace? Naruto is confused and saddened, losing hope, I don't know. Deva Path Pain was not surprised by this response, and his voice suddenly grew more animated, but I've found a way. As long as you gather the nine-tailed beasts and create weapons capable of instantly destroying a country, no one will dare to start a war out of fear. Fear will overpower hatred, and the wounds of hatred will eventually heal decades later. Nagato's method was to instill absolute fear in the world. It made sense, but what if Naruto were persuaded by him? At this moment, many viewers around the world found Deva Path Pain's method plausible. At least, if successful, such a world might indeed bring peace. However, more people scoffed at it. In the world of Anmyoji, Saimai completely disagreed. People's hearts can change. 
Can Nagato maintain this mentality even after decades of peace? Not necessarily. And it doesn't make sense that Nagato can live forever. As a successor, there will always be someone who will exploit it for personal gain. Then the world may become worse. In the Hokage world, Uchiha Madara sneered and shook his head, extreme thoughts born out of darkness and pain. Actually, the peace he envisions and strives for is nothing but self-deception. Once upon a time, he too believed that the master of the nine-tailed beasts would deter others, but he soon realized his mistake. Rebels would never diminish, and people's hearts were too complex. Naruto recalled Jiraiya's words and immediately retorted, You're not peaceful at all. The era when people can understand each other will come, and you're different. In the world of Hokage, the Tsuchikage sighed. It would have been ideal if it were still the original future, and having someone like Naruto become a Hokage would have been amazing. In the DC world, Lucifer smiled, leaning back and forth, and simultaneously grinned at the god beside him, Dad, I never saw heaven like this when I was an angel. It's ridiculous that a mere human dares to utter such things. God sighed, acknowledging Lucifer's statement, even heaven couldn't achieve this. Although Naruto's youthful heart is commendable, it is entirely unrealistic. Even the previous footage of the destruction of the three-body world had starkly revealed a grim reality. That is, an infinite universe is impossible. Deva Path Payne doesn't care, he just wanted to discuss it, regardless of Naruto's thoughts. The other party can't see the future anyway. Deva Path continues creating black sticks, then inserts them one by one into Naruto's joints, completely locking the opponent's chakra and mobility. Now, the overall situation has been decided. He foresees the future, and it will soon come to fruition. Then it's time to take you away. Deva Path opened his palm, but retracted it in the next second, jumping back. Boom! The paint on the ground cracked with spider web patterns, revealing a girl with white eyes and long hair standing in the spot just now. Hinata stood in front of Naruto without hesitation, her eyes filled with determination. I won't let you harm Naruto-kun again. Kushina looked surprised off screen. She hadn't expected a girl to step forward in this situation. Who is this girl? Naruto scratched his head, unable to figure it out. She's called Hyuga Hinata, and she's my classmate. Kushina nodded, not continuing to speak, sensing an unusual determination in the girl's eyes. Meanwhile, everyone who knew Hinata was shocked. Is this the introverted Hinata? Hinata, clasping her hands on her chest, watched the screen anxiously. But her worry was not for herself, but for Naruto. Naruto gets excited, run away, Hinata, you can't beat that guy at all, go away. How could you come to such a dangerous place? However, Hinata stood firmly in place, unmoved. This is also the first time she has rejected Naruto. I am standing here of my own will, this time, I am going to help Naruto-kun. I gave up from the beginning, I just knew how to cry. I almost went astray several times. It was Naruto-kun who brought me back to the right path. It was Naruto-kun's smile that saved me, so I won't be afraid to die in order to protect Naruto-kun. Naruto was left in awe. At that moment, Hinata smiled, reflecting on the happiest memory of her life. Without hesitation or shyness, she declared firmly, because I like Naruto the most. Off screen, Naruto's eyes widened, his heart racing. In such a dire situation, her words carried a powerful impact. Even Kushina was taken aback. She couldn't help but feel that the girl standing fearlessly before Naruto, facing death, surpassed the previous Sakura, who only knew how to call out. It wasn't a slight against Sakura, it was just that Hinata's courage deeply moved her. In Kanoha, Hayashi Hyuga was astonished, then smiled. He realized that his daughter, Hinata, had finally grown up, showing no trace of cowardice or fear. As for Hinata's feelings for Naruto, he was now completely supportive. Inside the room, Hinata blushed, steam practically rising from her, nearly fainting from embarrassment. Shikamaru and the others were equally shocked. They never expected such strength from the seemingly weak Hinata. Hinata's face displayed unwavering determination, and the next moment, she opened her eyes. Taking a step towards the heavens, she turned and struck Naruto's body with a palm, attempting to disrupt the black rod embedded in him. Her goal was clear, to give Naruto a chance at freedom. But the next moment, the air quivered, 
and Shinra Tensei, a force even Naruto couldn't resist, sent Hinata flying. Undeterred, Hinata stood up, wiping blood from the corners of her mouth, and rushed at Naruto again. However, the unseen repulsive force struck her once more, causing blood to flow from Hinata's hair this time. Undaunted, she stopped wiping, concentrating chakra in her fists, forming a lion's head. Launching into another attack, she persisted relentlessly. In Naruto's widened pupils, Hinata soared into the sky, then fell to the ground, severely injured. This blow was much more potent. Despite her injuries, she got up, staggering towards Naruto. After a few steps, she couldn't go on and collapsed to the ground. Off screen, tears welled up in Naruto's eyes. Don't move, Hinata, you'll die, he pleaded. Kushina, understanding Hinata's feelings as a woman, shared her distress. Hinata couldn't stand anymore, crawling slowly towards Naruto, with one thought in mind, to pull out the black rod and save him. Pain watched coldly as Hinata approached, holding the black rod in Naruto's hand. I don't understand. You know it's death, why come here, why fight? Pain questioned. Slowly raising her head, she looked into Naruto's eyes, a smile on her bloody face. Because. Doing what you say and moving forward bravely, this is my ninja way, she declared. Naruto's pupils trembled, recognizing these words as the ninja way he once spoke of. Hinata had somehow remembered and embraced it as her own. It's pointless, declared Pain, raising his hand to end it all. In the next moment, Hinata was thrown into the sky and impaled by a black rod. You can also experience it. My parents were killed by Kanoha's ninjas before my eyes, Pain said indifferently. It is precisely because of love that sacrifice is derived, hatred is derived, and pain is known, he continued. However, Naruto, with eyes devoid of emotion, could only see blood flowing from Hinata's unmoving form. The blood spread, vivid red in his colorless eyes. Gradually, red overtook his entire eye, and then, in an instant, Naruto disappeared. A scarlet monster emerged. On it, ominous black and red chakra released a terrifying aura, piercing the sky like a sharp sword. The formidable aura descends, as if ancient beasts are slowly awakening. At this moment, the wind howls, and the crimson chakra resembles a keen arrow piercing the sky. Naruto himself seems to transform into a spring, with thick red and black chakra continuously emanating from his body. In the blink of an eye, a humanoid monster emerges, with four tails swaying behind it. The Jinchuriki has gone berserk. As the terrifying chakra surges into the sky on the screen, rakage eyes reflect shock. Initially, he thought nine tails was only marginally superior to eight tails. Yet, witnessing Naruto unleashing the four tails state, it's nearly on par with the unleashing of Gyuki's eight tails. This suggests that the difference in strength between eight tails and nine tails is undoubtedly more than double. He feels a bit relieved that Sarutobi Hiruzen didn't deploy nine tails in the previous ninja war, otherwise, the outcome might have been different. In Sunagakir, Gara's mouth hangs agape. He senses the resentment within the red and black chakra. Shikaku, residing within him, closes his eyes, feeling a bit aggrieved. The six paths old man is too unjust, the total chakra as one tail is not even half of the out-of-control kid's eruption. In the Hokage world, countless ordinary people are terror-stricken. The presence on the screen makes them shiver with fear. It seems as if the crimson monster will leap out of the picture in the next second, tearing them apart without reason. This fear of Jinchuriki stems from the potential for chaos and death if they go berserk. As the involved person, Naruto's heartbeat quickens, and his entire body trembles. He can't fathom that the monstrous entity is himself. What's even more profound is Hinata's confession and sacrifice for him. He never realized he held such importance in others' hearts. On the flip side, Kushina, anxious that Naruto might flee upon witnessing Hinata's death, breathes a sigh of relief. Naruto is indeed stirred, yet nothing leaks from the Nine Tails Chakra. Kushina glances at the Sage of Six Paths, perhaps with a mix of emotions. Do you resent me? With the resounding voice of Deva Path Pain, the irrational monster erupts completely. Roar in the beast-like roar, the crimson monster begins to split, one after another, four-tailed humanoid monsters protrude and then merge into one. A terrifying burst of energy. 
In the following instant, the earth seemed to groan under the strain, continuously erupting and upheaving. The entire village's landscape underwent a rapid transformation in the blink of an eye. Asterisk boom another violent tremor echoed as Naruto's tailed beast coat conjured two massive fists, pounding hard. Countless rocks and clods rained down on Deva Path Pain like meteorites. Deva Path Pain adeptly dodged and retaliated. But, in the next moment, the sky was ablaze with red shadows. Suddenly, the black-red tailed beast's coat extended several enormous palms, hauling out an immense rock and hammering it down forcefully. Caught off guard, Deva Path couldn't evade in time and was driven into the ground like a nail, one after another. The scene was intensely violent, causing the very earth to tremble. In the silence of Sunagakir, 4th Kazakage Raza pondered. He couldn't help but envy Kanoha for having had the nine tails. Yet, in this moment, having just one tail felt remarkably potent. Earlier, Gara had strolled by, but compared to the nine tails, it seemed like a mere jest. Raza even entertained the idea that the colossal creature before him could crush Shikaku in a single blow. Back in Kanoha, Shikamaru, Ino, Choji, and others stood pale. They found it impossible to reconcile the monstrous being before them with Naruto. Do you despise me? Pen, who had been smashed into the ground, emerged and scathed, questioning once more, in this state, can people truly comprehend one another? At this moment, is there only hatred in your heart? Deva Path asked. However, Deva Path's question was met with a furious roar. The next second, the sky filled with dark clouds, and amid thunder, dark red chakra cascaded onto Naruto. Asterisk boom the ground shook, and two additional tails manifested in the tailed beast coat. Simultaneously, a pale fox skeleton materialized, completely enveloping Naruto. Six tails had arrived. The hearts of the most formidable observers in the world of Hokage quivered collectively. For the first time in many years, the Nine Tails had unleashed its power to such an extent. The animosity seeking to obliterate everything seemed to breach the heavens. It appears your agony is genuine, but... Deva Path Pain leaped forward, abandoning his calm and indifferent demeanor. His eyes widened dramatically as he bellowed with a ghastly expression, My pain surpasses yours. Asterisk boomed the moment his words resounded, Deva Path struck the ground. In the ensuing violent tremor, a jet of spring water shot forth. The force of the punch penetrated through the earth to an unfathomable depth, piercing even the underground river. A deluge of water surged in, and in an instant, the already colossal pit that was Kanoha village transformed into a lake. Amidst the ethereal mist resembling water vapor, Deva Path pain charges towards Naruto. But in the next instant, numerous crimson arms seize him. The towering rocks continue to shatter, and everything in the path of the chakra hand hall is obliterated. Deva Path Pain is forced to retreat, yet a barrage of energy bombs is relentlessly shot at him. Shinra Tensei Despite the formidable repulsion resistance, not a single chakra energy bullet can penetrate the defense. However, a colossal scarlet chakra shell strikes in the next moment. A violent explosion ensues, causing the water surface to sink, and the Shinra Tensei is forcefully expelled. Roar! Naruto still wishes to pursue, but at this moment, the green crystal necklace on his chest emanates a profusion of green chakra imbued with the breath of life. These chakras transform into arms, coiling around Naruto, attempting to seal him. In Kanoha, Jiraiya gazes intently, his focus unwavering. The necklace proves to be massive and intimidating, wielding a potent sealing effect. Tsunade retrieves the necklace, holding it in her palm, and expresses surprise, I never anticipated that the necklace grandpa left me would possess such an effect. If that's the case, remember to visit the land of whirlpools one day, I'll give it to you. However, her words freeze in her mouth before she can finish speaking. Crack. The sound of shattering echoes, and Naruto, enveloped in the six tails coat, effortlessly breaks the necklace amidst a roar. The seal left by the first Hokage vanishes instantly. In the pure land, Senju Hashirama scratches his head, smiling awkwardly, it seems he's not particularly skilled at sealing. But, truth be told, he doesn't need to be. Is a tailed beast something you can't handle with a single clap of your hands? In the next moment, the rampaging Naruto disappears. And colossal waves ripple across the lake. Naruto, 
draped in a six tails coat, moves like a fox, skimming across the water with unmatched speed and brute force. Boom! In the following moment, before the figure even arrives, the extended fist already strikes pain. Shinra Tensei, Deva Path folds his hands together, repulsive force erupts, transforming the surrounding water surface into towering waves. Yet, in the next second, a scarlet and scorching palm breaches the repulsion force, gripping Deva Path's entire face. Then, a fierce red fox also infiltrates the repulsion, colliding with immense strength while roaring. Boom! The air bursts into a white mist, and under the terrifying impact, Deva Path transforms into a cannonball, hurtling instantaneously until embedded in the rock wall of the mountain behind Kanoha. Naruto doesn't pursue, but instead, he raises his head, unveiling his formidable mouth. In the next moment, blue and red chakra start converging. Countless spectators recognize the spectacle before them. This scene has previously unfolded in a different video. The tailed beast bomb, capable of reshaping the landscape effortlessly and possessing the force of a nuclear bomb, is about to manifest. The artistic style is immensely intriguing, and the combat is undeniably peculiar. The air was filled with a subtle hum, the unmistakable sound of yin-yang chakra rapidly gathering and compressing. The purple-tailed beast bomb expanded swiftly, visible even to the naked eye. Tsunade, who had been observing the battle, was visibly alarmed. The impending explosion of this tailed beast bomb would annihilate everyone, leaving no trace in the ruins of Kanoha. At this moment, the inherent weaknesses of the Nine Tails Jinchuriki were laid bare. Without the guidance of the First Hokage, Second Hokage, and Fourth Hokage, a rampaging Jinchuriki spelled doom. It's over, echoed in the minds of the surviving ninjas. A completely uncontrollable time bomb threatened their existence. A time bomb that is completely uncontrollable, it's not surprising that this kind of situation occurs, sneered Uchiha Madara. He wondered how Hashirama in the Pure Land would perceive the state of Kanoha now. In the Pure Land, Hashirama looked puzzled, unable to comprehend why Kanoha, as the first ninja village, had fallen to such a state. Universal Pull, declared Deva Path Pain as he emerged from the ground, folding his hands together. Suddenly, at the fifth second, a massive rock soared into the sky, colliding with the charging Naruto like a meteorite. The water's surface contracted instantly, only to violently surge the next moment. An intense explosion ensued, and the sun rose from the colossal crater in Kanoha village. The ground sank again, and a thick mushroom cloud ascended into the sky. In this dire moment, Deva Path Pain's self-rescue saved Tsunade and the others. Otherwise, the complete tailed beast bomb would have obliterated them, leaving nothing but ashes. With the crisis averted, Pain departed the village without engaging in further combat. Meanwhile, Naruto, donned in the tail beast coat, roared and pursued him. Is it impossible to defeat him? Are we resorting to retreat? Tsunade speculated. Jiraiya shook his head, not quite. If only six tails managed to force him back, then his so-called plan is a farce. He is well aware of the power of the nine tails. In the Uzumaki ruins, Minato gazed toward Uchiha Madara. Madara understood the implication and clarified, the closer the puppet is to the body, the better the signal, and the stronger the power derived from the body. Currently, his condition cannot handle the nine tails, so he must bring the puppet closer to the main body. Madara sneered, I always knew Nagato was a disappointment. It's a shame that someone from the Uzumaki clan is using the Rinnegan like this. On the side, Kushina was stunned to learn that Nagato belonged to her own clan. Despite this revelation, she wouldn't let him off easily. The dense forests and jagged cliffs serve as a barrier, keeping Deva Path pain away from his pursuers. In the next moment, he found refuge in a tree hollow, clasped his hands together, and a unique energy fluctuation manifested in his palms. After a few seconds, Deva Path released his palms, and a pitch black sphere ascended into the sky. Just as this happened, a fiery and explosive chakra missile appeared, detonating beside the tree hollow. Deva Path emerged from the smoke, embarrassed. In the next moment, with folded hands and a hideous expression, he shouted, Planetary devastation. The black sphere rising into the sky resembled another sun shining upon the earth. However, instead of light, it brought destruction. The earth trembled, whimpered, and seemed to unleash its anger, giving birth to dense cracks, revealing dark gaps. The ground shook, mountains trembled, 
as if the entire world were turning upside down. Countless rocks, dirt, and towering trees floated upward, converging towards the black sphere in the sky. The raging Naruto struggled against the immense gravity but couldn't break free. It roared, expressed anger and unwillingness, but ultimately, it was sealed. A few minutes later, a colossal sphere hovered high in the sky. In the world of Hokage, countless people turned pale. Once again, the power of the Rinnegan unfolded before their eyes. They couldn't help but feel that the legendary moon was created by the Sage of Six Paths, the possessor of the Rinnegan. And that notion was likely true. In the Uzumaki ruins, Uchiha Madara gazed at the Sage of Six Paths and asked, Who is sealed in the moon? It was only at this moment that he was reminded that the Sage of Six Paths didn't simply create a moon without reason, it was something or someone sealed within. Atsutsuki Hagoromo sighed, It's my mother, Atsutsuki Kagaya, who would have been resurrected in you. Madara furrowed his brow, contemplating a multitude of thoughts in an instant. Ever since Kagaya manifested through the process of resurrection, taking possession of his body, Madara contemplated a peculiar notion, could it be said that Kagaya on the moon now exists as a lifeless husk? He mulled over the idea of journeying to the moon after concluding the video. If there were any remnants to be found, perhaps there existed a chance to reincarnate the other party through the impure world reincarnation. This would enable a deeper understanding of the Atsutsuki clan, fortifying their defenses. Madara acknowledged that the reincarnation wouldn't be a complete one, akin to Orochimaru's self-revival. Chuckling at the irony that the world feared him while remaining oblivious to his role as their savior, Madara remained indifferent to others' opinions, unswayed by the need for approval. Sighing, Madara continued his contemplation. The perspective shifts to Naruto's face. Naruto found himself in a dark, confined space with water below, not in a state of death but resembling lifelessness. His once vibrant blue eyes, perpetually optimistic, had turned black, and his expression, numb. At this moment, Naruto appeared as if facing the cold gazes of Hinata, Kakashi, Jiraiya, and countless villagers who questioned his inability to save them. A voice echoed lifelessly, filled with pain and despair, who will save me? What should I do? In the darkness, an eye filled with hatred and bloodshot eyes materialized, commanding, destroy everything. Eradicate all that causes your misery. Offer me your heart, and I shall liberate you from your agony. Responding to the call for rescue, Naruto's body rose, his clothes unfolding to reveal the eight trigram seal on his abdomen. Drooping weakly, as if relinquishing his body entirely, the eight trigram seal twisted, forming a pitch black circle. A liquid, akin to ink, flowed out and permeated the stagnant water. In another scene, Payne gazed at the massive sphere in the sky, exhaling in relief. Nine tails has been successfully captured. The next phase is, boom. A crimson tail, resembling magma, pierced the enormous sphere, unveiling an incredibly fearsome nine tails with only muscles and bones, unleashing a thunderous roar. It's an insult to the Rinnegan if even half of the nine tails can't be controlled by it. At this moment, Uchiha Madara was growing increasingly uncomfortable with Nagato. Primarily, it was because Nagato's eyes betrayed his embarrassment. After all, the entire ninja world was aware that the Rinnegan rightfully belonged to Uchiha Madara. The Sage of Six Paths stood by, rendered momentarily speechless. God only knew why this planetary devastation was so diminutive. The roar persisted. Countless cracks adorned the massive sphere formed by earth and stones, with a faint scarlet light suggesting the flow of magma inside. Nine tails, now with eyeballs, continued to roar at Deva Path pain below, as his body slowly grew a layer of fur. Soon, it can completely seize control of the Jinchuriki's body. It's going to break free. Below, Deva Path Pain had ceased his movements, calmly observing the nine tails whose eyes were filled with hatred. I didn't expect it to be this powerful. Deva Path's words resonated with a sense of defeat. He had overestimated himself and underestimated his opponent. Perhaps, if he hadn't killed that girl, Naruto wouldn't have gone berserk. At this moment, Nagato harbored a trace of regret in his heart. As of now, his only option was to expend more lifespan to create a larger planetary devastation. But in doing so, he was uncertain how many days he could prolong his own existence. Leaving only the light rain, he might not stand a chance against Uchiha Madara. The screen darkened, and Naruto's figure reappeared. 
At this point, he had completely lost himself, his eyes were scarlet, and his pupils resembled Nine Tails' vertical pupils. He approached Nine Tails' cage like a zombie. The accumulated water surrounded Naruto's body, carrying him to the front of the seal. Naruto slowly raised his arm, his red eyes conveyed only hatred as he stretched his palm toward the seal in the next second. Inside the cage, Nine Tails stared motionlessly as the seal's corner lifted, a wicked smile playing on his lips. After sixteen years, he was finally escaping this wretched place. This time, he intended to utterly obliterate Kanoha. Yet, in the next moment, Nine Tails' smile froze, a familiar figure suddenly appeared and whisked Naruto away. Nine Tails roared furiously, but it was futile. The man simply snapped his fingers, and Naruto disappeared with him. In a spiritual realm, Naruto stared blankly at the figure before him and the imperial robe on his back. The next moment, the man turned, revealing a gentle smile. Off-screen, Minato smiled bashfully. He had envisioned this scene countless times, planning to impress Naruto with his return. Unexpectedly, it unfolded this way. Long time no see, son. Gazing into Naruto's trembling eyes, Minato smiled and spoke, as you heard, I am your father. Naruto's eyes welled with tears for a fleeting second, then he walked toward Minato. Minato, wanting to embrace Naruto dearly, immediately opened his arms. The next moment, Naruto punched Minato in the abdomen. The years of misery had finally taken their toll on Naruto, and he cried out in anguish. Off screen. Upon noticing Minato's gaze, Naruto silently wrapped his arms around Kushina's, determined not to show any fear. Kushina glared at Minato. What are you looking at? This punch should have been thrown back then. If we had sacrificed just one person, me, nothing would have happened. Minato broke into a cold sweat, feeling sorry for Naruto. However, with so many onlookers present, Kushina didn't care about saving face. Did he really think she had no temper? So, he made his choice. Minato nodded, you're right, my dear. Past experiences had taught him that admitting to Kushina when he was in the wrong was the wisest course of action. Uchiha Madara turned her body with a look of contempt. This guy seemed more afraid of his wife than Hashirama. Outside, Deva Path Pain, who had just been about to continue, immediately knelt on the ground. His body was spewing blood, rendering him unable to use planetary devastation any longer. Failed, the nine tails in front of him was no longer something he could capture. There was only one choice now, to have Conan take him away immediately. Otherwise, it was uncertain whether he could return alive. But just as he was contemplating this, the overwhelming aura in the sky suddenly vanished. Nine tails disappeared, and Naruto reverted to his original form, standing on the sphere and gazing up at him. Deva Path Pain stood up again and regarded Naruto coldly. Although I don't know what happened, since you didn't run away, the opportunity is back in my hands. At this moment, planetary devastation could no longer be sustained. It began to disintegrate and fall. Naruto rushed toward the sky like a sharp arrow. Boom! The ground trembled violently, and a large pit appeared. Deva Path had long realized that Naruto was in sage mode. He had no intention of facing him hidden, so he evaded the attack. However, in the next moment, a spiral shuriken emerged from the smoke, heading towards the sky. There was no way to evade it, so Deva Path had to raise his hand and use Shinra Tensei to disperse it. But in the next second, a second spiral shuriken followed. Shadow shuriken there was astonishment in Deva Path's eyes, I didn't expect this technique to be employed in such a manner. Shinra Tensei has a 5 second cooldown, he had to give his all to evade it and minimize the damage. However, the tilt of this hair seems a bit off. He successfully dodged it and emerged unscathed. A cloud of dust rises from the ground. The moment he landed, all the stones on the ground transformed into Naruto's shadow clones. It turns out the initial attack was a feint, and the second move was to lure him into the air. And the moment he landed, he was surrounded by hundreds of Naruto's. At this moment, there are still two seconds until the cooldown of Shinra Tensei. Countless Rasengan lights up, Deva Path Pain can no longer evade this time, bombarded multiple times in an instant, he's clueless. The dust settles, and Deva Path falls to the ground, devoid of any breath. 
a surprised expression appears in Uchiha Madara's eyes. If the preceding three-stage attack strategy was considered luck, the success of the battle plan in a short period completely elucidates a point. Naruto is a combat prodigy. Uchiha Madara is now contemplating whether to retrieve Nagato's Rinnegan and bestow it upon Naruto. Given the opponent's physique, it can be seamlessly integrated, and there's no need to worry about the chakra issue. In the future, opposing the Atsutsuki clan will undoubtedly need significant assistance. As for Sasuke, it's completely beyond his purview. Due to the susceptibility to external influences, it's easy to lose oneself and succumb to paranoia. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. Screen goes dark. The video concludes here. A mysterious voice resonates in the hearts of countless spectators. Reward distribution. Reversing the pure-blooded heritage of the Uzumaki family, and no longer disturbed by Nine Tails Chakra. The golden light descends, Naruto's blonde hair turns red like Kushina, and the whiskers on his face vanishes. Simultaneously, Naruto senses the chakra in his body starting to surge. And it feels more harmonious too. Most importantly, Naruto feels a deeper connection to chakra. Naruto points with one hand, and a shadow clone materializes. His eyes brighten, and chakra becomes more fluid than ever before. On the side, Minato's eyes light up. Without the interference of nine tails, perhaps Naruto can master the flying thunder god technique. At the thought of his family of three confronting enemies in the future, all wielding Rasengan, excitement bubbles up within him as they dart across the battlefield. Alright, but what should it be called? Minato crosses his arms and strokes his chin with one hand, employing his renowned naming prowess. In less than two seconds, Minato's eyes light up, and he claps his palm hard. Got it. It's called. Spiral sky full of stars, three invincible phantoms, super round dance, wind roar, eighteen styles perfect, I'm a genius at naming things Naruto smirks, refraining from commenting. Otherwise, he'd end up writing four or five thousand words, delving too deep into the intricacies of the attack. The trio observing Naruto's condition were startled by Minato's sudden applause. As he turned his head, Minato's invincible loneliness, tinged with a touch of sadness, caught their attention. What's wrong, Minato? Did you find something? Kushina inquired with concern. Sage of Six Paths and Uchiha Madara also looked on curiously. Minato regained his gentle smile, then, using his hair, proudly declared, I have a name for the flying thunder god technique for our family of three. Kushina reacted promptly. With the nine tails no longer interfering, Naruto had a chance to learn the flying thunder god technique. Excitedly, she asked, what's the handsome name? Originally, Minato named Naruto. Despite the suspicion of plagiarism, she still anticipated it. Minato, looking at his wife's expectant eyes, confidently raised his head, took a deep breath, and eloquently announced, the name is. Spiral sky full of stars, invincible phantom, super will, dance style, 18 styles. Minato finished in one breath, wearing a self-congratulatory expression. Kushina's smile froze, and a blush gradually spread to the roots of her ears. Naruto lowered his head, seemingly engrossed in observing passing ants. Sage of Six Paths appeared to be unable to support his body and just vanished. Minato turned to the last person, Uchiha Madara, with an encouraging gaze. It's okay, speak up, Madara. Come on. You're expecting a hammer, Uchiha Madara gave Minato a deep look, wondering how he came up with such a long and awkward name, all while exuding an air of confidence. Just imagining the family of three shouting this sentence in battle made his scalp numb. It was a mental attack more potent than any illusion. I suddenly remembered something, so I won't disturb your family of three, he muttered in his heart. The Uchiha Madara flew away without looking back, disappearing into the black space crack as if fleeing. Minato sighed in disappointment. He hadn't expected Uchiha Madara to be quite shy. However, the serious look Madara gave him in the end, was that an affirmation of the name? Um. It must be. Can't be wrong. In the moon, black space cracks appeared. Uchiha Madara floated out like a demon, but soon a different expression crossed his face. He sensed that the moon was hollow. Normally, planetary devastation is entirely physical. What's happening now? 
Inside the moon, in the castle, Atsutsuki Tonori suddenly raised his head. An astonishing scene unfolded, his left eye was a golden eyeball without pupils, while the other eye was incomparably dark, with nothing in the black hole. It looked immensely intimidating. On the ground, while many were still recalling the previous video, the sky suddenly darkened. Countless people looked up, then unconsciously opened their mouths. They saw the moon and the starry sky above split in two, Demon Slayer World. The brilliant sun cast its rays upon the earth, and within the expansive surroundings stood only a modest wooden dwelling. The once abyssal gaze of insect Hashira Shinobu Kocho's purple eyes had now softened. She smiled, addressing the restrained woman before her, Akaza has met his demise under the sun. To spare yourself from torment, could you kindly reveal the whereabouts of Musen? Despite Akaza's earlier success in luring Rengoku Kayajuro, resulting in a clash among the Upper Moons and Hashira, the 50% matured Yurichi Tsujikuni template proved overwhelmingly formidable. Rengoku Kayajuro swiftly eradicated all the demons, sparing only the fallen spider family siblings, including Tamayo, Yashiro, and Nezuko. Musen remained untouched, haunted by the deep shadow left by Yurichi Tsujikuni in the past. Observing Doma's silence, Shinobu revealed a sinister smile. Even if the response was absent, her main objective was to test her newly developed poison. Soon, agonizing screams echoed within the house. In the pirate world, Whitebeard's golden hair gleamed in the sunlight. Across from him, Teach lay on the ground, bloodied. The swift discovery of each other's locations was facilitated by information provided freely by the Marine. The Marine's message was clear, urging Whitebeard to refrain from any unwarranted actions. As long as they avoided excessive inquiries, an agreement could be reached. Untouched by dust, Whitebeard slowly approached Teach. As Teach, now on his knees, pleaded for mercy, Whitebeard swung his massive blade. This time, mercy was absent. In the Shinigami world, inside the Technology Development Bureau, Yurahara Kisuk and Mayuri Kuratsuchi stood beside a bed, engaging in a heated argument. Meanwhile, Kurosaki Ichigo, lying on the bed and adorned with electrodes, felt as if he were enduring a relentless rain. Fortunately, a savior arrived. Yoruchi strolled down the catwalk and approached the bed. Glancing down at first, she then averted her gaze with a hint of disdain and remarked, One of your acquaintances, that Quincy named Yuriu Ishida, has arrived in Seoul Society, claiming to be in search of you. The Kurosaki family suddenly panicked and inquired, Has he been captured? Yoruchi shook her head, Don't worry. Yawach seems to have initiated a sanctification, eliminating all the Quincy who received power. Now, no Quincy dares to pledge allegiance to him. However, Yoruchi was only reassuring one family. Normally, based on the information I obtained from the video earlier, all the Quincy's under sanctification would be stripped of their power and meet their demise. But now, Ishida Yuryu is an exception, so the other party is under surveillance, and he might be arrested at any time. Soon, the family discreetly exited through the back door, preventing Zaraki Kenpachi, who was blocking the front, from succeeding. He trotted all the way and soon arrived at the first team quarters. The first words Ishida Yuryu heard from Yoruchi's mouth were, Oriheim is in danger. He added, she's my favorite girl, and I absolutely can't stand by and watch her die. Among the people I know, you're the only one who can help me. Please, Kurosaki-san. Surprisingly, Ishida Yuryu dropped to his knees. A family quickly helped him up and then patted his chest, no problem, but I need to bid farewell to the store manager Yurahara first. I'll tell him that I'm in a hurry and can't collaborate with him in research right now. Please wait for me. Ishida Yuryu lowered his head, tears welling in his eyes, thank you so much, Kurosaki-san. A family nodded, then exited the house. At that moment, Yuryu Ishida heard Yawacha's faint voice. Well done. When the dust settles, you'll be the only one left in this world. On the other side, after walking around in a hurry for a long time, he encountered the captain-in-chief. Seeing those downcast eyes, Ichigo didn't waste time and immediately said, Captain, I may have found Yawach. Just as the world shifted, the scene reappeared. In the world of Evangelion, Ikari Shinji reclined on the bed, his gaze fixed on the screen with anticipation. Ever since he arrived at Maris' residence, the videos began. 
From the initial days, Shinji, with his profoundly introverted nature, felt an indistinct and peculiar connection with Mari in his heart. This left him somewhat bewildered, a sensation that only dissipated when the mysterious videos materialized. The snowflake pattern vanished from the screen, initiating the countdown, 9, 8, 7, 2, 1. Blood sprayed across the screen, obscuring visibility, accompanied by a thunderous, beast-like roar. Top 10 Darkening Character List No, EVA World, Gluttony EVA World Gluttony Is this a future apostle? Ritsuko Akaji, habitually rational and clad in a white coat, wore a concerned expression. This was a darkening list. If an apostle bearing the title of gluttony went berserk, it would result in an unimaginable disaster. As blood continued to trickle down the screen, it suddenly illuminated. A colossal humanoid mech dangled from several large transport planes, descending through the clouds and arriving at a base. Dozens of alloy iron gates swung open, allowing the mech to descend slowly. Upon landing, the mech, standing at about 50 meters tall, revealed its pitch-black alloy body, exuding a streamlined mechanical beauty. Seemingly frigid yet brimming with power. Tech World In the Marvel world, Tony's eyes sparkled. The mech before him embodied a violent aesthetic, a new concept for him. Even Deadpool in his home exclaimed, it's a massive piece of work, far superior to yours. Get lost and I warn you for the last time. If you use my favorite toilet again, I'll strap you into battle armor and sink you into the sea. I believe you can still survive, right? After this outburst, Tony resumed his focused gaze on the screen. He felt a sense of loss if he spared this thing only a passing glance, every detail had to be etched in his memory. As the staff continued to connect various circuits and perform debugging, the experiment commenced after a few hours. The 300-minute countdown for the No Machine startup test. Main power supply confirmed normal. No abnormal apoptosis in the second cell. Cooling system functioning normally. Data link established. The fourth eligible arrives, ready for insertion. Insertion bolt secured. Phase 1 completed. Neural connection complete. Upon hearing this, Tony furrowed his brow. He hadn't expected the mech to utilize neural connections for synchronization. Indeed, it provided better control and more flawless operation, but if the mech were destroyed, wouldn't it inflict harm on the pilot's brain? While pondering this, a harsh voice echoed. The red light began to flash continuously, and a rapid alarm resounded throughout the base. Warning Absolute Value Breakthrough Warning Absolute Value Breakthrough Simultaneously, a red light suddenly illuminated the eyes of the silent mech, accompanied by an ominous aura. Before the master control screen, Ritsuko Akaji, still clad in a white coat, remained unruffled and stated calmly, cut off the circuit, terminate the test, the massive power supply plug was yanked out, yet the mech remained operational. In the next moment, a frantic voice echoed in Ritsuko Akaji's earphones, there's a high energy reaction in Unit 3, and we can't shut it down. Ritsuko's expression shifted abruptly. What was going through his mind? Shortly after, she observed on the screen as the alloy outer armor of the colossal mecha swung open, unveiling the scarlet flesh within. Ritsuko couldn't help but exclaim, truly an apostle. When did it get infected? Was the delivery team composed of idiots? Off screen, Tony was frozen. In bewilderment, he muttered, how did the mech suddenly turn into a monster? Deadpool beside him covered his mouth and exclaimed, how long does it take to turn it into a barbecue? Tony silently walked away. If the other party hadn't provided some valuable information, he would have dealt with this lunatic long ago. Actually, unable to resist, he had taken a shot at the other party, and the scene was disgustingly memorable. In the world of EVA, Ritsuko Akaji recalled a prior scene. She had a suspicion that Unit 3 had likely been infected during the descent from the clouds. This was crucial information, worth delving into. Boom! In the distance, a light akin to a nuclear explosion illuminated the sky. In the main control room, Ritsuko Akaji, who was operating remotely, stared at the monitor as it devolved into countless snowflakes. Matsushiro base was likely obliterated. Simultaneously, a report from the inspection department confirmed a violent explosion at Matsushiro base. Dot requesting flowers. 
Perspective shift, after the command issued orders, a multitude of personnel busied themselves. EVA is deployed. Three colossal mechs moved into position on the battlefield for interception. Beneath the setting sun, a purple mech sat on a hillside, awaiting battle orders. Inside the cockpit, a young man wore a melancholic expression. Suddenly, Shinji Ikari, who was watching the video, sat up in surprise. How did he become an EVA pilot? Within the command post, Asuka, with long orange hair, was astonished. Unbelievably, the first unit was piloted by such a young teenager. However, why does it feel like cowardice? I will definitely not like each other in the future. As for the three silent girl, Ayanami Rei, seated on the bench, a subtle disturbance crossed her calm face upon glimpsing eyes reminiscent of Ikari Gendo's. Inside the command post, the indifference in the eyes of the father, Ikari Gendo, was entirely expected. Ikari Shinji appeared concerned and, not long after, received an order, this battle is under the command of his father, Ikari Gendo. Soon, information arrived through communication that the remote control ejection of the no unit's insertion bolt had failed, and the pilot inside could not be rescued. Following that, a chilling command was swiftly issued. The no unit is to be abandoned and marked as the 13th Apostle. Next, the mission of the three EVAs is to completely destroy each other, as for the fourth qualified individual, they have been entirely forsaken. However, upon hearing this order, Shinji Ikari hesitated, showing no intention of rising at all. There are still people inside, how can you destroy it? Such a timid pilot, what a waste. In the world of pirates, Akainu's eyes held only contempt. This kind of person is a liability on the battlefield. Moreover, it's unbelievable that the commander of the post would employ such an individual. EVA World Ikari Gendo still wore an indifferent expression, unsurprised by Ikari Shinji's cowardice. But it doesn't matter, as long as the other party can enter the first unit. Just as Ikari Shinji hesitated, a scream echoed from Asuka's mecha through the communication link, and then the connection was abruptly lost. Shortly after, a transmission from the headquarters came through, announcing, the fate of the second unit is uncertain. Upon hearing this news, Shinji Ikari's face filled with panic, and his forehead glistened with sweat. But he remains motionless, his countenance a mix of pain and confusion. It's as if he's ensnared in a colossal whirlpool, torn between orders on one side and a still-living pilot in Unit 3 on the other, rendering him unable to make a choice. Off-screen, Asuka stood in shock. How did someone like him pass the test and pilot the EVA for the first time? Are they kidding? The fate of the comrade in front is unknown, and he's still grappling in the background. This is too unreliable. Not only that, but almost all viewers frowned. This was the first time such cowardice was displayed in any EVA battle. In Misato's house, Ikari Shinji held his head in his hands, unable to look at the screen. This situation was deeply connected to his childhood experiences. As a child, he witnessed his mother's death in an EVA experiment. Subsequently, he was placed in foster care by relatives who paid little attention to him. His life was difficult, marked by frequent bullying, contributing to the development of his current character. Ikari Shinji was tormented internally, finding the scene in front of him a form of torture. The camera shifted, the thirteenth angel continued its advance, effortlessly defeating the no unit piloted by Ayanami. Now, the only hope to stop the angels in the island nation lies with the first unit. Under the setting sun, Shinji Ikari sat in the cockpit, watching the infected no unit slowly approaching him. The next moment, he noticed the exposed no unit, with a small part of the insertion bolt protruding. The pilot didn't really die. Faced with this situation, Shinji Ikari couldn't launch an attack at all. However, the angels weren't about to let him off. Without any awkwardness, the colossal flesh and blood mecha leaped, somersaulted in midair, and planted its foot on the chest of the first unit. The air rippled, and the first unit was sent sprawling. Due to the 100% neural synchronization, Shinji Ikari was suddenly overwhelmed with pain. He tried to command the no unit to stand, but in the next second, the arm of the infected no unit elongated like rubber, seizing the no unit by the throat. Inside the cockpit, Ikari Shinji's neck pulsated with blue veins, struggling to breathe. At this moment, within the evil world, many personnel in the command station wore expressions of disbelief. Even without attacking, he couldn't resist. 
was this a suicidal move? In the command post, someone shouted to quickly lower the synchronization rate, otherwise, as the pilot, Shinji Ikari would undoubtedly die in his EVA. But this command was vetoed by Ikari Gendo, the commander-in-chief. Shinji, why didn't you fight back? Ikari Gendo asked, coldness in his eyes. I can't, dad. There are still people on it. Shinji Ikari uttered with difficulty. Ikari Gendo, furious, shouted, if you don't fight back, you'll die, Shinji, without hesitation, responded to Gendo. That's better than murder. This line shocked viewers worldwide. Many wondered if Shinji Ikari was a hero, a coward, or perhaps both. In the Shinigami world, Aizen's eyebrows lowered as if he were about to fall asleep. He couldn't believe such a person could be a video protagonist. To him, this soul seemed cowardly and harmless, lacking will and consciousness, nothing special. Unable to sit still, Ikari Gendo stood up and quickly issued an order, completely cut off the synchronization between the pilot and the EVA, switched to puppet mode. The next moment, in Unit 01, Shinji Ikari felt like a drowning man pulled to the shore, finally able to breathe. However, he lost control of EVA. In the command station, a synthetic voice sounded, the control system is switched, connecting all nerves to the puppet system. Gendo sat down again, speaking indifferently, release the system and start attacking. Lens conversion. As Gendo's voice echoed, the eyes of Unit 01 lit up, and it stood up, ignoring the opponent's attacks. It grabbed the 13th Apostle's neck, and a whimper rose from the Apostle's mouth. Eva, seemingly stimulated, shook its arms. Moments later, it pulled the Apostle's head with a forceful yank. Blood sprayed, raining in the sky. But it wasn't over. The blood-stained Eva resembled a devil, smashing the Apostle's head with its foot, then crazily dismembering the body. Blood covered the scene, turning rivers and green mountains red, a hell on earth. Off-screen, Lucifer's eyes flashed a strange look. Not due to the blood or cruelty, but because he sensed something more. It wasn't just remote control, it felt like Eva acted instinctively, and he sensed a trace of a human soul. In the EVA world, countless EVA staff were shocked. They never knew Unit 01 was so powerful, far surpassing the other three combined. What terrified them more was Eva in puppet mode, like a bloodthirsty demon, brutal and terrifying. In the cockpit, Shinji Ikari was stupefied. Before his eyes, blood and dark red flesh tore apart, and he couldn't accept that Unit 01 had severed the insertion bolt of Unit 03. Under such intense stimulation, Ikari Shinji fainted. When he regained consciousness, it was the next day. Fortunately, the pilot of the third EVA was only injured, not dead. However, Shinji Ikari was still affected and immediately sought out his father, the commander-in-chief. I don't want to pilot an EVA anymore, and I don't want to be here, he asserted firmly. On the opposite side, Ikari Gendo, still in the same posture, hands crossed on the table, responded indifferently, if that's the case, then leave. Shinji muttered, good, turned around, and started to leave without hesitation. Ikari Gendo watched his son's departure and continued, are you trying to escape again? I'm truly disappointed in you, and I won't see you again in the future. Okay, that's my plan too, Shinji said and walked out without a hint of nostalgia. Countless viewers were astonished by the strained father-son relationship, one filled with indifference and resentment, worse than that of strangers. In the EVA world, Ms. Otto, responsible for Shinji's custody, felt a deep sense of distress. She understood the hardships he faced in childhood, having experienced a lack of paternal love due to her own father's death. This empathy led her to pity Ikari Shinji. Gradually, an inexplicable connection developed between them. Meanwhile, in the command post, Ikari Gendo, though expressionless, felt a subtle pain in his heart. Outside the station, Shinji Ikari waited for the next train home. At that moment, a sharp alarm sounded, and the horn urgently announced the invasion of the Apostles, everyone, please enter the shelter quickly. This time, the Apostles descended from the sky, reaching the command post headquarters unnoticed. Air defense missiles lit up the sky, resembling a meteor shower, but the Apostles remained unharmed. After the smoke cleared, panic spread as the Apostles showed no signs of damage. The next second, the Apostles retaliated, 
unleashing explosions like lightsabers on the ground, effortlessly penetrating 18 layers of defenses and threatening the underground city below. The strength of these apostles far surpassed previous encounters, posing a grave threat. Even the first Eva in puppet mode was viewed with skepticism by onlookers. Instruments in the command post began recording and analyzing to better prepare for future encounters. Asuka piloted the second Eva to confront the apostles, but the power disparity was overwhelming. The second Eva's top-level firepower failed to breach the apostles at field, resulting in the instantaneous loss of both arms. In a frenzy of pain, Asuka charged towards the apostle, and in the ensuing chaos, the second Eva was decapitated, crashing to the ground. The situation had taken a turn, leaving many bewildered, especially those who had recently watched the live screen. Numerous changes had occurred, leaving much to be understood. In the command post, though everyone was taken aback by the second plane's quick failure, the order could not be halted. Ikari Gendo spoke calmly, initiate the first unit and activate puppet mode. However, in the next second, the technician in the headset informed him that the first unit rejected puppet mode and couldn't be activated. Off-screen, Ikari Gendo's eyes flickered with a realization as it dawned upon him. If Shinji Ikari wasn't in the cockpit and wasn't in danger, this mode wouldn't function at all. Has he started to awaken? As the No Unit had its arm torn off by the No Unit earlier, Ayanami Rei took the initiative to enter the No Unit and attempted to pilot it. However, the nervous system link couldn't even reach one, it appears that the No Unit refuses to be piloted by anyone other than Ikari Shinji. Ritsuko Akaji, the chief officer of Nerve's technology development department, was one of the few who knew the secret of the first unit. She turned her head to glance at the main control room, hoping to discern something in Ikari Gendo's eyes as he watched the footage. Unfortunately, he remained impassive. The angels continued their assault, and Ayanami's eyes gleamed with enlightenment as she turned to pilot the No unit with the damaged arm into the battlefield. Knowing she couldn't match the opponent with the Zero unit, she made no attempt at defense, holding a potent tactical missile and charging toward the angel. And just as she neared, the at field, resembling an orange matrix, illuminated in front of the angel. The transparent barrier was incredibly robust, rendering the bomb utterly useless before. Now, she had to rely on the tactical missiles to breach the force field. Mockingly, the angel didn't attack, finding the zero unit's approach as amusing as watching a clown perform. At. Field is fully open. With Rei Ayanami's cry, the at field also lit up on the arm of Unit Zero. All energy was injected into the arm. The next moment, the arm carrying the tactical missile pierced the angel's location and struck the red orb. That red ball was the angel's infinite power source. In an instant, the air collapsed inward, then abruptly expanded, giving rise to a bright and violent fireball, invisible to the naked eye, soaring from the ground. The intense shockwave resembled a rapidly expanding transparent eggshell, shattering everything within a few kilometers. Simultaneously, all humans in the entire island area felt the ground shake, witnessing a mushroom cloud rising thousands of meters high, intermingled with pillars of fire, ascending into the sky. In the command post, everyone awaited the outcome. Under normal circumstances, the angels, devoid of their positional protection, would likely leave nothing behind under such a tactical missile. The explosion center reached temperatures of tens of millions of degrees Celsius, an energy capable of shredding everything. In the command post, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. If the angels at field could be breached, then in future encounters, there would at least be a solution. At present, no one believed the angel could survive a tactical fusion missile. Simultaneously, many felt a twinge of regret, the zero unit was effectively sacrificing itself and couldn't endure. But as the flames dwindled. In the command station, both in reality and on the screen, everyone fell silent, their faces extremely pale. Above the ground, the air ripples like magma due to the searing heat. And there stands the apostle, a hellish messenger. It. Unharmed. In front of it, only the charred humanoid wreckage of Zero remains, kneeling on the ground. If not for the Apostle blocking it, the Zero machine would have nothing left. As for Ayanami Rei, inserted into the bolt, she has lost all signal with the command, her fate unknown. In the command post, despair blankets everyone's faces. Now, there's no way to halt the opponent's advance. And when the Apostle touches, Adam, sealed beneath the underground city, 
the third shock will occur, the moment marking the end of mankind. In the world of EVA, researchers analyzing data halt, their faces a mix of horror and confusion. The second machine was annihilated within seconds. The no aircraft deployed tactical missiles, but in vain. The power of the Apostle is so overwhelming that it breeds despair. Amidst the Ultimate's defense and attack prowess, what's the point of data analysis, merely drawing an inevitable conclusion? It's absurd. Even the usually lively Osaka bows her head. At this moment, she feels worthless. The pride of being an EVA pilot has vanished. Yet, in front of the main console, Ikari Gendo remains composed, a trace of anticipation in his indifferent eyes. Perspective change, Shinji Ikari halts on his way to the shelter, gazing at the red sky with trembling eyes. Beside him, Kaji Ryoji, appearing with a stubble face and holding a water bottle, says, Shinji, all we can do now is wait here. There's something only you can do, something only you can decide. No one can force you. Think for yourself. Decide for yourself. Just don't let yourself regret it. In the distance, a violent roar echoes, the sound of the apostle breaching the twenty-four layers of defense. Ikari Shinji's eyes gradually firm up, as if he's made up his mind. The next moment, he sprints in the direction he came from. Outside the screen, a subtle affirmation glints in Ikari Gendo's eyes. However, others in the command post remain in despair. Even if Shinji returns to pilot the first machine, it's another life not yet saved. There's no salvation. No one can defeat the Apostle before them. The end has been sealed. But Asuka's perception of Ikari Shinji has improved. At least, facing death, he stands tall, not a coward. In the Shinigami world, Captain Yamamoto Shigakuni's eyes reflect disdain. He scorns cowardly individuals who only firm up when faced with the realization of something about others or themselves. In a certain corner of their hearts, the essence remains unchanged. He admires people like Renjiro in the Demon Slayer world, Whitebeard in the Pirate world, and Uchiha Madara in the Hokage world. A will and belief unshaken by the external world, originating from within. This is what a strong person should possess. Perspective change, the Apostle arrives at the underground city after melting the last layer of defensive armor. The Evangelion strode purposefully towards the main vertical trench, the massive conduit that served as the primary passage for the EVA units. In the main control room on the lowest floor, a sense of urgency hung in the air. Remaining there seemed like a waiting game for death. However, as the Apostles descended from the main vertical trench to the depths below, an unexpected event unfolded a breach in the wall. The first purple Evangelion delivered a powerful punch to the skeletal face of the Apostle. An astonishing turn of events ensued, as the Apostle, which could swiftly eliminate the second Evangelion, found itself subdued by the first machine. Blow after blow, it was pushed to the very edge of the main vertical trench. But in the blink of an eye, a high-energy beam emanated from the Apostle's eyes, severing the arm of the first Evangelion that was relentlessly striking. Scarlet blood sprayed from the EVA, and the once excited technicians fell silent once more. Ikari Shinji's eyes gleamed with madness. Ignoring the searing pain in his shoulders, he seized the apostle with his remaining hand, using his body to forcefully press the opponent against the wall. The ejection device in the vertical trench activated, propelling both the first Evangelion and the apostle along the wall, creating a shower of sparks as they ascended to the surface. In midair, the first Evangelion somersaulted, slamming the Apostle beneath it and hurtling towards the ground like a meteor. A cacophony of screams echoed as the Apostle, subjected to a frenzied assault, struggled to retaliate. The ground quaked, and the underground city below rumbled, its zenith threatening to collapse at any moment. Boom! Boom! Under the relentless assault, the Apostle found itself unable to mount a counterattack. In a climactic moment, the first Evangelion seized the bone mask-like face of the Apostle and forcibly ripped it off. The scarlet muscles beneath stretched like a rubber band, on the verge of snapping. In the command center, shock gripped everyone. The power displayed by the first Evangelion was beyond imagination, a stark departure from its previous capabilities. Asuka, her eyes wide with amazement, not only marveled at the Evangelion's strength but also at Shinji Ikari's astonishing prowess. As a pilot, she understood the immense challenges involved. Yet, just as elation started to set in, 
the first Evangelion abruptly halted. Ikari Shinji lowered his head, discovering that the energy gauge on the screen had depleted to zero. The first machine had reached its activity limit at this critical juncture. In the next instant, the apostles launched a counterattack. Flat ribbon tentacles extended from both sides of the apostles' body, tightly entwining the first Evangelion. With a forceful toss, the first machine was sent crashing into the mountainside like discarded refuse. The apostle rose slowly, its flat tentacles on both sides coiling into cylindrical forms. Subsequently, in a vengeful onslaught, it repeatedly struck the Unit 01. This sudden turn of events plunged everyone into despair once more, with no EVA in sight to salvage the situation. In the command center, many technicians covered their faces, tears streaming, as the specter of death loomed in every heart. Off screen, most denizens of the EVA world resembled concubines, eyes filled with despair. With the appearance of such an apostle, the demise of humanity seemed imminent. In the command room, Ritsuko Akaji scrutinized Ikari Gendo again finally noting something significant. Anticipation and excitement gleamed in each other's eyes. Boom! 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 The coiled tentacles of the Apostle, resembling the hardest alloy pillars, deliver blows imbued with terrifying potential energy. The outer armor of Unit 01 is incessantly shattering, the body gradually denting into the mountain, and the rocks below have already fragmented. It's evident to all that this apostle is systematically dismantling Unit 01. In the cockpit, Ikari Shinji's face is drenched in sweat, panic in his eyes, repeatedly manipulating the joystick, as if restarting the Unit 01 was within reach. As if finding it too leisurely, a brilliant high-energy beam once again shot from the apostle's eyes. Suddenly, a violent explosion erupted, shattering all the armor on the underside of the Unit 01 revealing the scarlet flesh and the red orb encased within. At this juncture, except for a handful in the EVA world, the rest of humanity displayed terror-stricken eyes. They witnessed the red orb, symbolizing the Apostle's power source, exposed on the Unit 01. Someone was screaming hysterically. Unit 01 wasn't a mecha at all, it was an Apostle. The outer purple armor wasn't for defense but for restraint. In the Marvel world, Tony sighed. This makes sense, the power derived from the body structure doesn't align with mechanics and material science. Nevertheless, it's an intriguing notion. If vibrating gold is employed, there might be hope. The Apostle resumed its assault with tentacles, seemingly intent on dismantling the Unit 01 bit by bit. Appearing as the sole means to vent the near-death experience from earlier. Boom! Under the relentless bombardment, the insertion plug in Unit 01 began to crack. At this moment, a dull heartbeat resonated. The next moment, the eyes of Unit 01 lit up, its arm raised to grasp the Apostle's tentacle. With a powerful blow, the opponent was pulled in, then kicked away. Unit 01 stood, thrust the torn tentacle onto the mangled left arm, absorbing flesh and blood essence, and the arm regenerated. Roar, Unit 01's sealed mouth suddenly opened, revealing sharp teeth, letting out a beastly howl to the sky. The voice resounded with anger and madness. In the command post, Ikari Gendo lifted his head slightly, hands crossed on the command desk, a glint in his spectacles. Success. He muttered something only he could comprehend. In the real world, Ikari Gendo's eyes narrowed slightly, everything unfolding as he foresaw. At Misato's house, Ikari Shinji stared fixedly at Unit 01, trembling. He couldn't fathom why, but tears flowed ceaselessly from his eyes. Boom! The tremor proved insufficient, the Apostle extended another tentacle rapidly. Similar to severing the arm of Unit 02 earlier, it swiftly slashed toward Unit 01. However, the initial mech surged forward, abruptly shattering tentacles tougher than alloys. Simultaneously, these broken tentacles shot towards the Apostles. The at stance, reminiscent of an orange matrix, reappeared. Yet, in the following moment, this defense, capable of withstanding countless missiles, was swiftly shattered. Part of those tentacle fragments collided with decaying flesh, while the remainder plunged into the Apostle, releasing a spray of blood. The Apostle toppled, howling in pain, only to swiftly close its mouth again. The initial mech moved like a monstrous entity, crawling unnaturally fast on all fours before pinning the Apostle beneath its body. 
In the next instant, a horrifying scene unfolded. Mech No revealed its grotesque, gaping mouth and forcefully bit down on the apostle. When it looked up again, a piece of flesh and blood was clenched between its teeth. Amid the horrified gaze of onlookers who had emerged from the ground, Mech No chewed a few times and then swallowed the flesh and blood. The feast commenced. Amid the apostles' shrill screams, the initial mech devoured them with each bite, producing sounds of whines, roars, chewing, and swallowing. In the end, the entire apostle was consumed. At that moment, the initial mech, its mouth stained with blood, resembled a malevolent spirit from hell, mad and terrifying. The image gradually faded, and then a voice echoed in everyone's hearts. Reward distribution, communication will, double physical strength, and talent gluttony obtained. EVA World, Inside the SEAL Organization In a small room, five men of varying ages gathered, taking turns to speak. Is it all right to let them believe that EVA is undergoing an apostle transformation? Well, it's not the worst idea. It's fine, people are easily deceived, and rumors will die down. Our main concern now is Ikari Shinji. He doesn't seem as obedient as expected. We should have put a bell around his neck from the start. The bell is there, but it's not ringing. What about the first machine? Put it on hold for now. Where is Shinji Ikari, who received the reward? A man has been dispatched. The first engine room was empty and silent. Since the beginning of the video, Ikari Shinji had transferred several maintenance personnel. At this moment, Jendo Ikari raised his head and looked across from him. The eyes of the first machine, whose head was only exposed a second ago, lit up. The reward just given was not for Shinji Ikari at all but for the first machine. In other words, it was Ikari Shinji's mother, Ikari Shinji. Do you feel like it wasn't Ikari Shinji who went berserk, but the first machine? Asuka asked Ayanami suspiciously in the women's locker room. Being a qualified person, she had different feelings than ordinary people. Before Ayanami could answer, a loudspeaker in the locker room sounded. The pilot of Unit 0, Ray Ayanami, please proceed to the engine room of Unit 1 immediately. Repeat, this is an order. At the same time, Jendo Ikari went deeper underground. He was about to turn the tables. Demon Slayer World, Doma, had a somewhat miserable final fate. Shinobu Kocho successfully concocted a poison that could kill the demon. Even though all demons were now dead, Muzan Kibutsuji would undoubtedly continue to create demons, and the poison would still be effective. In a quaint house, Rengo Kukayajuro sat face to face with Kagaya Abuyashiki. It's a pity, if Nakaim hadn't been killed, maybe I could go to the Infinite Castle. Rengo Kukayajuro expressed regret. Currently, this information came from the mouth of Doma. Kagaya Abuyashiki smiled, it doesn't matter, thanks to your strength, at least there are no rampant incidents of demon devouring people everywhere. Rengo Kukayajuro nodded, and then a trace of worry appeared on his face, in our world, humans have a limit to their lifespan, and Muzan Kibutsuji must be waiting for me to die. After all, time is non-existent for a demon. Kagaya Abuyashiki smiled and said, this problem truly can't be solved. However, with Ms. Tamayo joining the Demon Slayer Corps, we may be able to develop a serum that transforms demons into humans in your lifetime, giving us an advantage. Rengo Kukayajuro nodded, fully expecting Ms. Tamayo to succeed. At this moment, the skull tattoo on the back of Rengo Kukayajuro's hand glowed faintly. Then a voice resonated in the room. The reincarnator activation task begins. Mission, Lore Moment. Countdown. 2188, hours. Hunt down Upper Moon. Detected the death of Upper Moon and modified the task. Countdown, 8755, hours. Hunt Musen Kibutsuji. Task balance, Musen Kibutsuji can survive in the sun for 8755, hours but can't create new demons from his blood. Positioning of both parties every 11 hours, lasting one hour each time will be revealed. Task Reward, Activate the Identity of the Reincarnator. Mission Failed, Obliterate. Those who do not activate reincarnation will be dead. Rengo Kukayajuro raised his head and looked confidently at the Kagaya Abuyashiki. It seems I can't wait for Miss Tamayo's serum. This time, I will definitely defeat Muzan Kibutsuji. Kagaya Abuyashiki took a deep breath, 
he didn't expect the decisive battle to unfold in this manner. The hope of this world now rested entirely on the shoulders of Rengoku Kayajuro. If they won, there would be no more demons in this world. If they lost, there would be no future. But at least, the human side had the advantage of Kayajuro. Infinite Castle, due to Nakaim's death, had collapsed here. In the ruins, Musen raised his scarlet eyes, and the next moment, his figure turned into an afterimage. He couldn't wait and emerged from somewhere underground. Gazing at the sunlight outside the shadows, he cautiously extended his fingertips. There was nothing unusual, and he even felt a touch of warmth. The next moment, Musen Kibutsuji stepped into the sunlight and laughed wildly. More than 8,000 hours, a year, as long as he could escape, the world would be his. It's a pity that the ability to convert demons had disappeared. Otherwise, creating a demon with space ability would make escaping much easier. In the Hokage world, Orochimaru's underground base, a black space gap opened. Immediately, Uchiha Madara emerged, carrying Atsutsuki Tonori, who had passed out with missing eyes. Abido had gone somewhere, only Orochimaru didn't know what he was drawing on a sketch. Who is this? Orochimaru asked with a casual glance. Descendant of Sage of Six Paths younger brother Atsutsuki Hamura, who formerly lived on the moon, Madara explained in a sentence, handing a test tube to Orochimaru and continued, at least one-tenth of the strength of Prime during impure world reincarnation. Remember not to overdo it, otherwise, the body may not be restrained. Who is this? Orochimaru asked curiously. You'll know in a while. After an hour, the preparations were complete. Orochimaru bore the seal of reincarnation, and the next moment, White Setsu's body was enveloped in ashes. Following that, a massive chakra descended, and a woman with pale skin and long blue-white hair slowly opened her eyes. Finally. The moment the words escaped her lips, Atsutsuki Kagaya sensed something amiss. She swiftly raised her hands and bellowed in anger, How dare you revive me in such a manner? Uchiha Madara's once pale face now exhibited pulsating blue veins, and the corners of his mouth twitched involuntarily. Refusing to engage in pointless banter, Madara shot a glance at the now chakra-infused Orochimaru. Caught in the jutsu, Atsutsuki Kagaya found herself immobilized. Madara approached deliberately, his voice resonating with authority, Now, Atsutsuki Kagaya, reveal everything you know. In the Shinigami world, every captain, including the Yamamoto, wore a somber expression. The plan had failed. Even though Yuryu Ishida had successfully delivered the message to Kurosaki Ichigo, they fell victim to Yawacha's calculations. To avert any mishaps befalling the Kurosaki family in the hands of Yawach, he remained in Seoul society. Simultaneously, Yurahara Kisuk employed the remains to craft a decoy Kurosaki Ichigo, brought back to the world by Yuryu Ishida. The soul inhabiting the corpse belonged to the commander-in-chief, along with a portion of spirits bearing the essence extracted from Kurosaki Ichigo. Whether Yawach could discern the ruse at a glance depended on fate. As long as a brief opening existed, the captains could rescue Inoue Oriheim from Ishida Yuryu's clutches. Other Shinigami released cocoon made space to prevent the war in the human world and its destruction. Subsequent events unfolded smoothly. Although they discovered Ishida Yuryu ensnared with Inoue Oriheim, it proved inconsequential. At the very moment Yawach placed his palm on Kurosaki Ichigo, the captains emerged. In an instant, the crisis was averted as Yawach's body was cleaved with a swift stroke. However, with that single stroke, the commander in chief understood he had been ensnared in a larger scheme. Before him stood an apparent parallel import. In the next moment, everyone returned to Seoul society. Facing them was the lifeless body of Kurosaki Ichigo. A heavy silence enveloped the crowd. The commander in chief wore a somber expression, acknowledging that this time the fault was his own. Summoning Ichibai to safeguard Kurosaki Ichigo in the Soul Society was an impractical request. The adversary aimed not only to thwart Yawacha's assault on the Soul King Palace but also to prevent Ichigo from harm. Thus, the decision was made to send Kurosaki Ichigo to the Soul King Palace. However, at this juncture, regret was futile. Yawach had evidently gained something significant from Kurosaki Ichigo. Before long, Kurosaki Ishin returned to the Soul Society after an extended absence. 
yet, his unexpected discovery upon return was that he was faced with his son's lifeless form. The reason why Kurosaki Ichigo's body couldn't be returned to the living world was inherent in its nature. Only within the confines of the soul society could a soul's remains be preserved in the dense Ryuryoku. Any attempt to bring the body back would result in its swift dissolution upon re-entry into the mortal realm. As time inched forward, Kurosaki Ishin stared impassively at his son. Then, the screen flickered to life once more. Kurosaki raised his head, and his eyes widened in sudden shock. On the screen, a figure emerged, adorned with a demon mask and twin horns atop his head. The aura exuded from him sent shivers through countless onlookers. Top 10 Darkening Character List, No Attack, Shinigami World, What is the Difference Between a King and a Mount? In the Hidden Empire, Yawacha's visage underwent yet another transformation. His countenance took on a younger appearance, and his eyes deepened in hue. Simultaneously, he could sense a surge in his own power. All of this was a consequence of the distinctive Quincy abilities inherent in Kurosaki Ichigo. Initially, he remained oblivious to it all. It wasn't until the ascension of power by Yamamoto Genryusai Shigakuni and Ichibai Hayasu that he found it imperative to initiate sanctification. Upon the return of this newfound power, he detected an unfamiliar Quincy force within Kurosaki Ichigo of the Soul Society. Strangely, this power bore the essence of both Quincy and Shinigami, making it wholly unique. This peculiar blend of energies might be the reason Kurosaki Ichigo survived the reclaiming of all non-pureblood Quincy powers. Though he still found himself in a position of relative weakness, he harbored confidence in facing either Yamamoto or Ichibai alone. Even if he were to fall short in battle, he wouldn't be too far behind and might even emerge victorious. As for Aizen, he harbored no immediate concerns. The adversary's current capabilities were too enigmatic, rendering Aizen's omniscience and omnipotence not but a jest once again. Much like the revelation of a Shinigami named Suifeng in Soul Society. The Shirkai's recorded ability was a double kill, yet in the face of formidable opponents, a triple strike failed to claim lives. Is this an evolution fueled by the Hogyoku? It doesn't seem like it, and it shouldn't possess such strength. Yawach shut his eyes, contemplating his next move. In the midst of his musings, a screen materialized. In the next instant, he discerned that Kurosaki Ichigo had graced the screen. Even with an empty mask obscuring his face, his aura was unmistakable. The somber scene illuminates. Within the shadowy corridor, colossal stone pillars stand in juxtaposition as two factions confront each other. On one side, Ishida Yuryu lurks in the rear, with Inoue Oriheim and Kurosaki Ichigo positioned at the forefront. On the opposing side stands the emotionless fourth espada, Okuyora, with an expressionless face and eyes. Within the Lost No Chase, Aizen's interest was piqued. If his deductions held true, this should be the future that was originally destined to unfold. Viewing it now, there was a distinct sense of a parallel world, a divergence from what was expected. Beneath the throne, the other Espada cast glances at Okuyora, surprised to find him featured in the video this time. The identity of the final interloper remained unknown, but the rewards promised were exceptionally generous. The first Espada, Stark, appeared disinterested, indifferent to the identities on the list. The sixth Espada, Grimjow, possessed a fierce gaze. After countless videos, he yearned to showcase his strength in the final instance. As for Olquiora himself, he remained impervious to the scrutiny of others, maintaining a calm and indifferent demeanor, as if the individuals featured held no relevance to him. Kurosaki Ichigo's face bore a proud expression, having endured so much that he almost lost control of his body, Afa, for this moment. The shame of being defeated instantly before Izuki. Hollow. With one hand, Kurosaki wipes his face, and the black Riatsu covers it, forming a grotesque face, simultaneously, a giant Riatsu bursts forth. Off-screen, Grimjow is startled by the pressure that envelopes him. This Shinigami, once his defeat, now instills a great sense of crisis in him he turns his head to look at Okuyora. The other party's calm expression remains unaffected, and sudden inexplicable anger boils up from the depths of his heart. However, in the next moment, a creepy feeling grips his heart. It's as if a bucket of ice water has been poured on his head, sending goosebumps all over his body. Grimjow hastily lowers his head, ignoring the sweat in his eyes, not daring to move. 
Seeing this, Aizen calmly raises his head and continues to watch the scene. The battle begins. Kurosaki Ichigo's figure vanishes instantly, appearing in front of Okuyora the next second. Tensa Zangetsu wraps around the black Riatsu and sweeps away. Clash. Okuyora simply raises his sword and blocks this powerful blow. However, with a roar from Kurosaki, Tensa Zangetsu steps forward, releasing more black Riatsu, drowning Okuyora like a waterfall. Boom! The outer wall of Lost Noches shatters, and Ulquiora is blasted outside by this blow. However, he bears no scars on his body, not even turning around in haste. He gazes coldly at Kurosaki Ichigo, who is chasing after him, and raises his hand lightly. Suddenly, green Riatsu surrounds his fingertips. The next moment, a terrifying green torrent erupts from the tiny fingertips, roaring and submerging Kurosaki Ichigo. As Siro fades away, Kurosaki Ichigo's figure reappears. He raises his arms, holding Tensa Zangetsu in the air, completely resisting Siro. At this moment, a pair of golden eyes locks onto each other coldly. Off screen, Inoue Oreheim's eyes fill with tears. If Izuki were still alive, he would undoubtedly be happy to witness this captivating scene. Zaraki Kenpachi harbors no sadness in his heart but feels a twinge of regret, thinking it would be more enjoyable to cut the other party in this form. Seeing that Siro caused no damage. Okuyora looks at Kurosaki Ichigo, choosing not to attack but swiftly flying upwards. Kurosaki Ichigo gives chase, but he sees Okuyora slash in the opposite direction against the blue sky, and suddenly a black hole appears. It is the zenith of Las Noches, and he follows without hesitation. In an instant, from day to night, a thin crescent moon hangs in the sky. Off screen, all Espada gaze at Okuyora. To surpass the zenith signifies one thing, a return to the blade. Under the moonlight, Okuyora gazes down at Kurosaki Ichigo indifferently. Block it. Mercialego. As the words echoed, the night sky plunged into complete darkness, concealing the moon from view. Okuyora's menacing Riatsa descended, accompanied by a green rain of spiritual particles falling from the sky. Once the visions dissipated, Okuyora's blade vanished, and a pair of colossal wings unfurled behind him. In Soul Society, Yurahara Kisuk contemplated, Arankar is a virtual simulation of Shinigami, and the return blade seems to absorb this power back to its origin. Could this process lead to the evolution of Shinigami's hollow into a new form of Shinigami? It seems imperative to recall Hirako and the others to Soul Society in due time. Success would undoubtedly enhance our combat prowess significantly. Confronted with such overwhelming Riatsu, Kurosaki felt a sense of unease. I believe that my solution, combined with the increased strength from Hollow, would surely guarantee victory. But the current manifestation of the opponent erodes my confidence slowly. Although the terrifying Riatsu had returned to Okuyora's body, it left a lasting impression on Kurosaki Ichigo. As if fearing Kurosaki Ichigo's imminent demise, Okuyora cautioned slowly, don't waver, maintain your stance, keep your nerves taut at all times, and never let go for a second. Hearing these cautionary words, Kurosaki Ichigo's hollow eyes flared with anger. In the next moment, he witnessed a radiant green light emanating from the opponent's hand. In an instant, a trance overcame him, as if the opponent had teleported to his side. Blood sprayed, and excruciating pain ensued. Kurosaki Ichigo finally realized it was not a hallucination. The opponent genuinely bridged the gap in an instant and struck his body. Grimjow, off screen, wore eyes filled with astonishment. What he prided himself on was the unparalleled speed upon returning to the blade. Yet now, in comparison, his speed seemed utterly inadequate. Tick. Scarlet blood dripped onto the ceiling. The next moment, Kurosaki Ichigo dropped to his knees. As the view shifted upward, only half of the blurred mask with red patterns remained on Kurosaki Ichigo's face. And those golden pupils trembled even more, filled with shock and fear. Had it not been for Kurosaki Ichigo's instinct to raise Tensa Zangetsu just in time, his head would have been severed. And that was just a casual strike from Okuyora. Within the desolate night palace, the third Espada tier Haribel narrowed her eyes. At that moment, she sensed that his rank might be higher. It's highly likely it remained unfinished, and the hole was left unfilled, relying on imagination. 
In truth, Shinigami still has numerous gaps yet to be filled, a regrettable circumstance. Support me on my Patreon and read up to 20 early chapters. HTTPS slash www. Patreon. Com slash unique underscore writer off screen, many Shinigami's eyes were wide with shock. They were well aware of Kurosaki Ichigo's formidable strength. It rivaled that of a captain, and his power had surged even further since becoming a hollow. Yet, despite this, he found himself on the brink of death in an instant. The fourth espada was undeniably powerful. Considering this, the existence of the top three espadas was beyond imagination. When did, Hueco Mundo, become infested with such terrifying monsters? The battle rages on. Okuyora slowly raised his arm, and in the next moment, a spear made entirely of Riatsu was hurled towards Kurosaki Ichigo. Observing intently, Kurosaki Ichigo discerned the spear's trajectory, predicted its direction, and skillfully twisted his body to the right to evade. However, in an instant, the long spear, charged with the aura of destruction, grazed the right side of his head, barely missing by a few strands of broken hair. A bit more, just a fraction of an inch, and his head would have been obliterated. Kurosaki Ichigo's back was instantly covered in sweat. In that moment, he couldn't shake the feeling that Okuyora had intentionally spared his life. If you lose, Yuryu will be utterly outmatched by this Minos Grande. It's not just a matter of strength, his combat experience is severely lacking, and he's completely overwhelmed. Yet, Kairaku Shunsue chuckled at his own words, acknowledging that it was futile to discuss such matters when the person in question was no longer present. Although he managed to avoid a direct hit, the gust of wind generated by the spear was incredibly fierce. Kurosaki Ichigo, pushed back by the violent wind pressure, continued to retreat. In the next instant, Okuyora closed in on Kurosaki Ichigo once again. Another emerald spear materialized and aimed at Kurosaki Ichigo. However, this strike was evidently slower than the previous one and was blocked by the jet black Sanpakuto wielded by Kurosaki Ichigo. Kurosaki Ichigo, unleash your strongest attack before me, and let me witness it. Just as Kurosaki Ichigo wondered why, Okuyora looked down as if gazing at ants. Then allow me to illustrate the vast power disparity between us. The next second, Okuyora withdrew to the sky, granting Kurosaki Ichigo the opportunity to power up and brace for the impending assault. Incensed by such disdain, Kurosaki Ichigo erupted in anger and bellowed, Don't underestimate me. I'll show you too. As his words resonated, Kurosaki Ichigo raised his Zanpakuto high, and a formidable black Riatsu erupted from his body. The entire space seemed to tremble suddenly. The Riatsu rolled and twisted like a colossal wave, forming a massive Uzumaki that converged towards the dark Tensa Zangetsu. Getsuga Tensho, with Kurosaki Ichigo's confident and anticipatory voice, a torrential force resembling a dark lightning strike surged towards Okuyora. In Seoul society, countless Shinigami felt a tingling sensation on their scalps. They had underestimated Kurosaki Ichigo, whose attacks surpassed the majority of their captains. If they were in his position, they doubted they'd have the courage to resist. Within the Lost No Chase, Grinjao sensed an overwhelmingly intense crisis, and even the other Espadas broke into cold sweats. However, Okuyora remained unmoved in the face of this formidable attack. He simply calmly raised his left hand. The next second, the black torrent collided with the unyielding force of a rock. Getsuga Tensho, capable of effortlessly vanquishing a juchas, appeared feeble in this moment, unable to penetrate even with the faintest palm. At this juncture, the first espada, Stark, also displayed a peculiar expression. Okuyora not only intercepted the Getsuga Tensho but also did so with apparent ease, leaving Stark surprised. Kurosaki Ichigo stood frozen, disbelief etched on his face as his full-strength blow seemingly had no impact. Okuyora's eyes, void of the last vestiges of interest, conveyed, the capability of humans is indeed limited to this. For the last time, witness the black Ciro. Okuyora extended a forefinger casually, directing it downward. In an instant, the dark expanse of Hueco Mundo bathed in a faint green glow. The subsequent moment witnessed space quivering as a black pillar, radiating a terrifying and destructive aura, tore through the heavens and earth. Almost instantly, the blurred mask on Kurosaki Ichigo's face shattered. Beneath the zenith, 
Yuyu Ishida, and Inoue Oraheim simultaneously sensed a Ryatsu akin to an abyss, nearly bowing them to the ground. They raised their heads in panic, gazing at the ominous hole in the sky, hearts heavy with concern. Above the zenith, the black Siro dissipated, leaving Kurosaki Ichigo's clothes in tatters and his body bruised. Struggling to rise, Kurosaki Ichigo's gaze met a pair of indifferent eyes. The next moment, excruciating pain emanated from his abdomen, and space rapidly retreated. Boom! The massive stone pillar, once a support, shattered, and Kurosaki Ichigo vomited blood, gasping for breath. Countless onlookers couldn't bear to witness the scene, a powerhouse pummeling a child mercilessly. In Las Noches, Aizen observed with great interest, eagerly awaiting Kurosaki Ichigo's resurgence. He wondered about the kind of rampage and ability the human before him possessed to overcome Okuyora, capable of reaching the second stage. Your powers may resemble Arankar, but the difference between us is vast, Okuyora spoke as he approached Kurosaki Ichigo in the air, resembling a Shinigami about to claim an inescapable soul. Boom! Kurosaki Ichigo crashed through the stone pillar, kicked away. In the next second, his body spiraled out of control, crashing into the ground. Okuyora, a shadow-like presence, left Kurosaki Ichigo powerless even to dodge, gripping his throat. The chasm between us is immense. Why not relinquish the sword in your hand? Okuyora remarked. In response to this cryptic query, Kurosaki Ichigo wore a resigned smile. Do you think I'll give up just because you're stronger, he retorted. From the beginning, I knew you were formidable. However, showcasing your strength repeatedly won't change a thing. I'm going to strike you, Okuyora. Okuyora's eyes didn't reflect anger but rather conveyed a matter-of-fact tone as he calmly said, to say such things indicates you still don't comprehend true despair. Since you don't understand, allow me to enlighten you. This is the epitome of true despair. Okuyora's voice echoed in Kurosaki Ichigo's ears like a voice from hell. The sword is released, Resurrection, Segunda Etapa. With those words, the world's color changed, and the space shrieked as if pleading for mercy. The sky turned pitch black without a trace of color, the bottom resembling a dark green hell. Countless Shinigami Minos Grande trembled off the screen at this moment. The profound shock was palpable, as if the weight of the sky pressed upon them, making it difficult to breathe. Okuyora's upper garments vanished, black tears streamed from his eyes, and the whites of his eyes transformed into a vivid green. His abdomen, legs, arms, and back were adorned with black feathers. The rear of his robe split into two, and his fully outstretched wings revealed bat-like claws. The horns on his helmet became thinner and sharper, accompanied by the emergence of a long tail with arrow-like barbs at the end. In this primitive state, Okuyora's power was unleashed, radiating an incomparable horror akin to hell. Is this the second stage return blade? All the espadas, excluding Okuyora, stood in astonishment. It felt like a return to the time when they first became Minos Grande, equally shocked as when they first learned the name Ajuchas. However, no one could explain why he could reach second resurrection form after unleashing first form. It seemed impossible, beyond the reach of even Shinigami Bankais. The third espada, Halibel, wore a wry smile, overwhelmed by the abyss-like aura emanating from Okuyora. It gave her the illusion that she could be slain at any moment, reminiscent of facing the former Aizen. Stark, the first espada, lost his usual indifferent demeanor. In terms of Ryatsu, Okuyora outclassed all other espadas and even Shinigami, making him the sole solution. Grimjow, the sixth espada, saw his competitive spirit replaced by fear due to the overwhelming level of suppression. Aizen, with admiration, spoke with a smile, now that it's revealed, Okuyora, from this moment on, you are the Zeroth Espada. Stark, as the first Espada, harbored no dissatisfaction, the opponent's strength justified the rank. However, confusion spread among the other Espadas, excluding Yami. Aizen lightly tapped on the stone seat, causing the black number 4 on Okuyora's body to transform into zero. Yemi's serial number changed from 10 to 1, and the rest followed suit. Stark immediately grasped the reason, exchanging complicated glances with Yami, the former last espada. Grimjow wore an ugly expression, falling from 6th to 7th. He, once proud of his strength, now ranked 3rd from the bottom. Aizen smiled faintly, any doubts? Raise them, and I will consider. All 10 espadas knelt down, 
heads bowed, silent. In Seoul society, Zoraki Kenpachi trembled, not out of fear but excitement. He fixated on Okuyora, a formidable opponent willing to sacrifice everything, do anything, and face life and death. The other captains appeared uneasy, considering Seoul society's ongoing conflict with Aizen. Even Unohana Retsuya Chiryu dared not claim certainty in defeating the opponent. Okuyora looked down at Kurosaki Ichigo, kneeling and struggling to stand, and spoke indifferently, after witnessing this form, do you still possess the will to fight? Kurosaki Ichigo, holding Zangetsu, shook uncontrollably at such proximity. He felt like a small boat in a storm, powerless and on the verge of sinking into the sea at any moment. But he won't give up. Kurosaki Ichigo exerted every effort to retain his Zanpakuto, maintaining control to prevent himself from succumbing. Observing this scene, the commander in chief let out a sigh. Despite Kurosaki being human, his determination is no less than that of the captains, and perhaps even surpasses them. He is destined to be the backbone of Seoul society in the future. Regrettably, it was his own mistake that led to the other party's demise. Seeing Kurosaki Ichigo's unyielding spirit, Okuyora's eyelids lowered slightly, and the golden pupils in his green eyes betrayed a rare sense of confusion. Why won't you surrender in the face of overwhelming power? All right, let's make you completely sober. Upon hearing this, Kurosaki Ichigo swiftly raised his Zanpakuto in a defensive stance. However, at this moment, his expression froze, and his body was already airborne. A dark, slender claw gripped his head, propelling him into a massive stone pillar thousands of meters away. This time, he couldn't even perceive Okuyora's vague form. A monument. Kurosaki Ichigo was tossed away like a piece of refuse. Midair, Kurosaki Ichigo struggled to regain control of his body, wiping his face with one hand as the hollow mode reappeared. His power surged, Kurosaki Ichigo seemed to have regained some composure. But at that moment, Okuyora's calm yet terrifying voice echoed in his ears. What a fool, Kurosaki Ichigo, to think you can resist an opponent whose strength is so overwhelming that it even frightens you. It's truly incomprehensible. As the words fell, that black hand pressed against Kurosaki Ichigo's face again. The next second, the virtual mask shattered without a doubt. Kurosaki Ichigo exploded through the air like a cannonball, penetrating two enormous stone pillars and crashing onto the ground. The gap was too vast, it was utterly crushing. The Shinigami spectators couldn't bear to witness any longer, it was a one-sided battle. From the start to the present, Kurosaki Ichigo hadn't landed a single effective attack. Instead, his body was covered in wounds, appearing extremely battered. Even if Okuyora had been serious, the battle would have concluded in an instant. Kurosaki Ichigo survived until now solely because his opponent chose not to kill him. Okuyora looked down and said lightly, If your refusal to surrender is because of your adoring heart, then it signifies that humans are vulnerable only because they possess a heart. Having a heart means facing death. Kurosaki Ichigo stood up again, holding up Zanpakuto in his hand, I don't fight with the mentality of winning, but I fight despite not winning. Hearing this, Okuyora's eyes flashed with anger for the first time. To the point where you still refuse to acknowledge reality. Joke. The enormous bat wing fluttered gently. Inoue Oriheim and Ishida Yuryu emerged from the large hole in the ceiling. The next moment, she raised her head and witnessed the scene beneath the crescent moon, her eyes filled with terror. Okuyora looked down from the side, come on, woman. Then witness with your own eyes the moment and the life of the man you hoped for is extinguished. The voice fell, and green light condensed on Okuyora's fingertips. This time, the pitch-black zero compressed to the thickness of his arm pierced Kurosaki Ichigo's chest. In an instant, the world lost its color in Inoue Oriheim's eyes, leaving only the dark void in her pupils. There, Kurosaki Ichigo's heart vanished. In an instant, the vibrant world within Inoue Oriheim's eyes faded, leaving only the ominous void in Kurosaki Ichigo's chest. She knelt weakly on the ground, bathed in the moonlight filtering through her translucent form. Off-screen, a beam of moonlight also illuminated Inoue Oriheim's face. Yet, what filled her gaze wasn't despair, but the anguish of finality. Inoue Oriheim placed the blame for Kurosaki Ichigo's demise squarely on herself. Now, it seemed there was nothing left in this world worth cherishing for her. 
She merely awaited the conclusion of the video, anticipating her departure from this painful reality. Under the cold moonlight, Okuyora released his grasp with a flick, and Kurosaki Ichigo crumpled like a broken puppet. Boom! The ground stirred up dust, jolting Inoue Oreheim, who refused to accept the harsh truth. There is salvation. Ichigo won't die. Not with my abilities, thought Inoue Oreheim. Hope flickered in her eyes as she staggered towards Kurosaki Ichigo. But in the next moment, a figure intercepted her. Okuyora gazed at her impassively, revealing a truth she wished to avoid. It's futile. Even if you reach him, your power cannot sustain his life. In that moment, Yuriu Ishida diverted Okuyora's attention with an attack, providing Inoue Oreheim an opportunity to approach Kurosaki Ichigo. She managed to reach him. Perhaps Okuyora chose not to intervene. After all, only by letting Inoue Oreheim confront the reality herself would she truly comprehend the situation. The golden hued double sky shield illuminated, enveloping Kurosaki Ichigo completely. After a few agonizing seconds, Inoue Oreheim began to tremble, witnessing the unchanging coldness in Ichigo's lifeless eyes. The healing attempt failed, Kurosaki Ichigo's life force had extinguished like a candle in the wind. In an instant, Inoue Oreheim seemed to detach from reality, plunged into the abyss of despair and anguish. It's over. Looks like the woman named Inoue Oreheim is on the verge of losing her sanity, mirroring Kurosaki Ichigo's desperate fate. Kushina's eyes reddened, if Minato were killed before her eyes one day, she, too, would spiral into madness. Countless viewers across worlds fixated on Inoue Oreheim's darkened pupils, unable to fathom what abilities she might awaken to defeat Okuyora, who had defied death twice. Anticipation lingered for the impending chaos. Kurosakusen, Kurosakusen. Inoue Oreheim, bereft of coherent thought, incessantly repeated Kurosaki Ichigo's name. As if this repetition could rouse him, bringing forth the familiar response and a smile. However, her echo was met not with Ichigo's smile but Ishida Yuryu's anguished scream. At this moment, Ishida Yuryu, locked in perpetual battle, tumbled and fell near Inoue Oreheim, blood spilling as he succumbed to Okuyora's relentless strikes. Okuyora's patience wore thin, evident in the resounding slaps and Ishida Yuryu's pain screams that snapped Inoue Oreheim back to the harsh reality. On one side lay Kurosaki Ichigo, breathless, and on the other, Yuryu Ishida teetering on the brink of demise. Inoue Oreheim's spirit begins to gradually collapse. What to do, what to do, Kurosaki-san? I don't know anything, I don't know what to do, Kurosaki classmate, Kurosaki classmates, at this moment, this girl completely collapsed. She doesn't have the power to save the world, she doesn't have that tough will, and she can't bear too much pressure. She's just a 16-year-old high school girl who likes Kurosaki Ichigo. And there's one thing she can do. In no way Oreheim prayed in despair, crying out in tears as if clutching an illusory life-saving straw. Save me, Kurosaki Ichigo, at this moment, countless viewers were silent. No one blamed or looked down upon this girl's cowardice. It's a shame to put the hope of victory on a weak girl but, in such a battle, who else can stand up? That Ishida Yuryu looks too calm, such a person does not look like he will run wild. And at this moment, there seems to be a wave in Kurosaki Ichigo's lifeless eyes, followed by a phantom heartbeat. That voice echoed in the minds of every viewer. So clear, so powerful. The third espada, Barrigan Luzenbaren skeleton eyes jumping with flames. How is this possible? Obviously already dead, what's the matter with this voice? As the former king of Hueco Mundo, the skeleton king, he can confirm that Kurosaki Ichigo is absolutely dead. Aizen on the throne also looks surprised. What happened to Kurosaki Ichigo is clearly out of line. Puff puff, as if the heart of another soul is beating again. In the darkness, Kurosaki Ichigo is falling. His vacant eyes are obviously unable to think, but he keeps repeating the sound of a thought. Calling me. Inoue is calling me. I heard. Stand up, stand up, stand up, Inoue is in danger. No, I have to stand up. Pfft. Heartbeat like thunder sounded. Darkness dissipates, pale moonlight, ominous red Riatsu rises from Kurosaki Ichigo's body, and his hair grows fast without any apparent wind. I want to protect you. Ah 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 ah, 
Kurosaki Ichigo gets back to his feet and lets out a deafening roar. The next moment, the space trembled and wailed, the sky and the earth were all dark red and ominous Ryatsu. And at this time Kurosaki Ichigo has changed his appearance safely. The long orange hair flutters without wind, the face like Gyuki, and the curved horns are extremely terrifying. And the black hole on the chest has shrunk, spreading out dark lines. Under the immense Ryatsu where you can't see the boundary at a glance. At this moment, Shinigami is dead, and Hollow is reborn. I didn't expect him to actually wake up, and this gesture is really wonderful. Aizen couldn't help but applaud. The peculiar Minos Grande in front of him is simply perfect, as if it has evolved even further after being nurtured by Shinigami. Unlike Hollow's tainted by Shinigami influence, this being seems to have been intertwined with a Shinigami soul from the very beginning. And that phantom aura is the same one he created many years ago. This world is truly astounding. In the Soul Society, Yurahara Kisuk's eyes widened in shock. Is this the void that has always existed within Ichigo's body? I feel extremely uneasy just looking at it. Kurosaki Ishin, next to Kurosaki Ichigo's body, writhed in even more pain. The Minos Grande's presence in front of him brought back memories of his wife, Kurosaki Masaki. He never expected that the original hollow power would be passed on to Ichigo after contaminating Kurosaki Masaki. Observers from other realms were astonished that the dead could be brought back to life. Simultaneously, what was even more shocking is that the opponent has become more formidable both in form and aura. Tears are no longer flowing. In no way Oriheim had an incredulous look on her face, gazing at the enormous figure with the terrifying mask. She couldn't confirm whether it was Kurosaki Ichigo or another monster. Okuyora, a little puzzled, asked, What is that form, and who are you? In the next second, a hint of surprise appeared in his eyes. He saw Ichigo's head holding Getsuga Tensho from his Shinigami Bankai. And Zanpakuto inadvertently sliced through the several kilometers thick ceiling of the virtual night palace in an instant. Without answering, the coldness in Okuyora's eyes deepened. Don't you hear me? I'll ask who you are again. However, the response was a roar. Enlightenment flickered in Okuyora's eyes, what stood before him resembled a low-level hollow, unable to communicate. Since you can't communicate, then you can die. Okuyora raised his finger again, condensing Siro. On the opposite side, Ichigo, with a bull's head, lowered his head, and the black and red Siro was also condensed between his horns. The next moment, the world seemed to split into two parts, one red and one green. The terrifying energies collided and mixed together, resulting in a shocking explosion. In the Lost No Chase, all battles stopped simultaneously. Everyone looked at the trembling blue sky above them in horror. They sensed a Ryatsu exploding above, as if it could easily annihilate them. In the Shinigami world, countless spirits and Shinigami trembled. In the virtual night palace, except for Aizen and Okuyora, all Espada felt the presence of two monsters. This explosion involuntarily made their hearts pound. Jin, what do you think? Aizen suddenly said with a smile. Jin, pretending to be small and transparent, maintained a curious gaze and smiled, Yeah, Aizensima, I really can't comprehend the battle due to my low strength. Aizen smiled, You're too modest, Jin, I've always been very optimistic about you. Ikimara Jin's back was covered in cold sweat, but he suppressed the fear in his heart and smiled, I genuinely thank Aizensima for your favor. Aizen nodded, stopped talking, and continued watching the video. But Ikimaru Jin on the side grew even more uneasy, as if something ominous was about to happen. The violent explosion formed a red pillar of fire soaring into the sky, illuminating the entire dark night. Okuyora's eyes no longer held doubt. There's no doubt that it was Siro just now, and there are indications that Kurosaki Ichigo has become a phantom. But what shocked him was that the other party's Siro was as potent as his own black Siro. At this moment, Okuyora, feeling the Ryatsu fluctuation, silently turned his head. The bull-headed Ichigo had appeared behind him, and the black and red Siro between the horns was ready to go again. Okuyora remained calm, raising his fingers, and the black Siro condensed again. In an instant, the two torrents collided in the air, turning into a huge fireball tens of thousands of meters in size. It broke my black Siro again. In the firelight, which made everything unclear, he suddenly felt his arm being seized. 
Looking sideways, Okuyora saw a dark arm dripping with green blood. It was his own arm, torn off by the bull-headed Ichigo, who appeared at some point. At this moment, pain surged to his brain. There's a sense of social death in the internet cafe, it feels like there are eyes on my sides and back, staring at me. Also, it doesn't seem to be an illusion. Inside the lost no chase, Okuyora wore a puzzled expression. Deep down, he had underestimated Kurosaki Ichigo's strength, yet the unexpected turn of events caught him off guard. However, what unfolded on the screen before him didn't align with the conversations he had with others about it. Aizen, too, wore a peculiar expression, a hint of recognition in his eyes. As the architect of the experiment, he understood the sheer terror of that entity. Roar, a thunderous roar echoed, and Ichigo, with the wrath of a relentless beast, not content with severing Okuyora's arm, slashed with his right hand. With no time to spare, Okuyora raised his hand, and a spear of condensed green riatsu materialized instantly before his chest. Replay In an instant, a sonic boom erupted, the green spear shattered in resistance, dissipating as Okuyora plummeted to the ground like a meteor, creating a vast crater resembling a spider's web. Okuyora rose to his feet, panting for breath. His countenance remained serene, in the next moment, flesh and blood erupted from the broken left arm, intertwining swiftly to form a new arm, just as before. This injury was inconsequential to him. Monster! All the other espada fixed their gaze on Okuyora. In comparison, the high-speed regeneration of himself and others seemed sluggish. Not every espada could regenerate from a severed limb. In no way Oriheim and Ishida Yuryu, observing the battle from a distance, were expressions of frozen excitement, unable to fathom the adversary's capabilities. Okuyora shook his freshman's palm and remarked casually, the most potent aspect of my ability is not the attack but regeneration. Among all espadas, only I can high-speed regenerate all body structures except brains and organs. So, break one of my arms, cease the assault to assess the situation, and you won't defeat me. As he spoke, Okuyora clasped his hands on his chest, pulling them apart, and the green riatsu gathered, condensed, and compressed into a radiant spear in the blink of an eye. Lanza del Relampago, Lance of Lightning and Thunder. Okuyora assumed a projection pose. In the next moment, the air emitted a piercing sound, and Lanza del Relampago drew a green afterimage, shooting toward Ichigo, the bullheaded protagonist. However, even at this speed, Ichigo effortlessly dodged with a flick of his body. Missing its mark, Lanza del Relampago disappeared from Duan Yuan as if it had never existed. Yet, the entire Hueco Mundo was bathed in green light in a subsequent moment. A fearsome green sun ascended in the distance, and the zenith of the Lost Noches trembled violently, as if on the verge of collapse. After a few seconds, a dreadful hurricane swept from afar, shattering the colossal stone pillar towering above the sky. In no way Orheim's complexion changed drastically, forced to invoke the three-day absolute shield and exert all her strength to barely withstand it. Ikimaru Jin couldn't contain his grin. Is this what you mean by a lack of attack power? He believed that, aside from Aizen, no one could survive this onslaught. As for evading, forget about it, Ichigo's speed and reflexes were too swift, but it didn't mean Lanza del Relampago was slow. And as the former king of the Hueco Mundo, Barragan felt an unsettling anxiety. Naively, he had believed himself to be second only to Aizen, thinking that even if he lost to Aizen, he could eventually defeat the opponent and reclaim control of Hueco Mundo. But the footage before him shattered that illusion, revealing the extent of his folly, leaving him akin to a ludicrous clown. For a moment, the Grand Skeleton Emperor's midsection appeared somewhat desolate, as if it had initiated the process of decay. Did you miss? It still seems challenging to control. Okuyora, not surprising. However, since the Lanza del Relampago is challenging to control, victory will come through quantity. In the next instant, he nonchalantly extended his hand, summoning yet another Lanza del Relampago. Can an attack of this magnitude be sustained indefinitely? Kairaku Shunsui had beads of sweat forming on his forehead. At this moment, he was somewhat relieved that the expedition team hadn't encountered this opponent. Otherwise, returning wouldn't even be an option in those days. In the vacant night palace, the other espadas were left completely speechless. Okuyora exhibited no weaknesses whatsoever. His strength left them feeling hopeless. 
Within a gust of wind, Ichigo's airborne body remained steady. The next moment, an explosion resonated. Okuyora's eyes widened suddenly, and behind him, the bull-headed Ichigo appeared instantly, disregarding the violent hurricane. Boom! The pitch-black Zanpakuto clashed with the green Lanza del Relampago, instantly cracking the several kilometers thick zenith beneath them. Ichigo, with the bullhead, remained motionless, but Okuyora plowed a very deep ravine behind him, retreating thousands of meters. Such formidable force! Okuyora suddenly soared into the sky. In ground melee, he's evidently weaker, having to release the Lanza del Relampago in the air for a chance. His massive shrunken wings suddenly fluttered, creating a gust of wind. Okuyora transformed into an afterimage, shooting towards the sky. Yet, at this moment, the space in front of him quivered, and a fierce gyuki head suddenly materialized before him. The sinister and peculiar golden eyes seemed to ask him, where do you think you're escaping to? And at some point, a large pale hand pressed against Okuyora's face, as if it had always been there. The next moment, the scenario was surprisingly familiar. Ichigo, with the bullhead, seized Okuyora's head and pushed forcefully, piercing through several shattered stone pillars in succession. In the world of Hokage, Orochimaru laughed hoarsely, ah it might sound irrational, but holding a grudge isn't a bad thing. On the side, Abito cast a skeptical glance at him after hearing that. Though lacking evidence, he strongly suspected that the sly snake was implying something. Bang, bang, bang. Amid the rubble, shattered into countless pieces, Okuyora steadied himself. Just as he prepared to counterattack, Ichigo, with the bullhead, materialized behind him. Without hesitation, Okuyora thrust Lanza del Relampago backward, but unfortunately, it pierced through thin air once again. The air reverberated constantly, and the bull-headed Ichigo frantically shifted positions, forcing Okuyora to barely keep turning around to defend. Watching the battle below, Inoue Oriheim and the two Inoue Oriheims are utterly dumbfounded. In their eyes, the sky around Okuyora is filled with the bull-headed Ichigo's afterimages, making it impossible to discern the real body. And the bull-headed Ichigo appears to be playing the role of besieged prey at this moment. After hundreds of exchanges, seeing through your moves, Okuyora predicted Ichigo's position in the next moment. His fingertips turned, and Siro was unleashed. However, just as he turned around, Ichigo, the bull-headed warrior, accelerated once more and instantly reappeared behind him. Boom! As expected, this time it was Okuyora's turn to crash into the ground like a meteor, creating a massive crater. At this moment, Grimjow's face paled. He never imagined that this once defeated general could unleash such astonishing combat power. In this fierce battle, he realized that the speed he took pride in couldn't endure even a single round. A hint of surprise also flickered in Aizen's eyes. He anticipated a close fight, even if Okuyora were to lose, it wouldn't be too bad. But Okuyora unexpectedly lagged far behind. Evidently, the power of Hollow had strengthened within Kurosaki Ichigo. The next moment, Ichigo, the bull-headed warrior, pressed on. This time, he no longer relied solely on his speed to dominate the opponent but continuously unleashed slashes from the front. Okuyora didn't rush and maintain defense with the Lanza del Relampago. As the blades clashed, the space trembled, and the ground beneath them continued to collapse and crack. Despite Okuyora constantly retreating, his combat experience surpassed Ichigo's, and he swiftly identified openings in the attacks. Under another slash, Okuyora's body shifted to the left, the formidable black Zanpakuto descending towards the tip of his nose, and his Lanza del Relampago didn't resist this time but thrust forward. Off-screen, Okuyora's serious expression reverted to calm. In the Soul Society, Unohana Retsu sighed, her gaze thoughtful, it's over, relying solely on instinct without reason falls a little short. She had witnessed Ichigo being pierced through the body. Due to the powerful slash, Ichigo's movements became predictable. Consequently, his speed inevitably decreased, making evasion impossible. Yet, the next moment, her eyes beneath her slender eyelashes widened in disbelief, revealing an expression of astonishment. Similarly, countless viewers worldwide couldn't contain their shock. Just as Lanza del Relampago was about to pierce the bull-headed Ichigo, a pale palm emerged. Ichigo's left hand, seemingly effortlessly, seized the spear capable of world destruction. Riatsu erupted, 
the tip of Lanza del Relampago flickered with green light, but it was utterly unable to pierce through the pale palm. Attack. Okuyora's well-planned devastating strike failed. Off-screen, Zaraki Kenpachi couldn't help but smack his lips. He doubted whether he could leave a mark on the opponent with all his strength. Che, defense or something is really boring, Matare Mikaku on the side also smiled bitterly, it was the first time he had heard such words from the captain's mouth. However, it would be hard for anyone to face such a terrifying defense. Hueco Mundo. Okuyora's eyes trembled. As a person, he is the one who understands the power of the Lanza del Relampago the most. Even if it doesn't explode and is only used as a weapon, the destructive tip can penetrate any object. And the bull-headed Ichigo blocked with only one hand, this is no exaggeration. This shows that the steel skin of the other party has reached a point where all the virtuals have not reached it, and it can even be said that it has broken through the boundaries. At this moment, he couldn't help but suspect that even if the Lanza del Relampago really exploded under the opponent's feet, it might not be able to hurt the opponent. But it's not over yet, Hollow Ichigo's five fingers slammed into a grip, and the Lanza del Relampago condensed by countless Riatsu in the palm of the hand was as fragile as Kachiki and completely shattered, turning into little green spirits and dissipating. Broken. The shock in Okuyora's eyes just appeared, and the next moment he saw Ichigo, the head of the bull, with a ghastly face, his big mouth cracked open, and his golden eyes were full of madness. The sense of horror that instinctively appeared in his heart, he wanted to dodge back. But it's too late. Almost at the same time, the Tensa Zangetsu brought up a black afterimage from bottom to top and slashed at Okuyora's body. Green blood splashed, and a pale broken horn flew towards the sky. At this moment, Hueco Mundo is quiet again. Under the miserable moonlight, Okuyora's slender body fell back to the ground like a fallen leaf. And on his body, a dark wound from the left abdomen to the right shoulder is terrifying and has no intention of healing. In an instant, the victory and defeat are divided. As the first espada, Yami couldn't help swallowing, it's really violent, without any skills, it is completely crushed with great strength. That's what he's been on all along, but compared to this bull-headed Ichigo, he's like a bug, and there's a world of difference between the two. Except for Okuyora, the other espadas did not have any words, but different degrees of fear appeared in their eyes. Ultimate defense, ultimate speed, ultimate attack. This Gyuka-like horror Minos Grande seems to be the true apex of the void. The oppression brought by the invisible seems to be shrouded in a shadow in their hearts. At this moment, Espada Araniero Araruri, who is the ninth in the real bottom, can't help but wonder if he can resist if he really meets him. Soon he smiled bitterly in his heart, the answer is no. I didn't expect to give me a mere human under hollow. It's ridiculous. However, despite his mouth, Okuyora's expression calmed down, and he accepted his failure very calmly. However, what responded to him was a huge soul with a red mane. Ichigo, the head of the bull, stomped heavily on Okuyora's head and lowered his head. In the next instant, an unending surge of spiritual pressure descended upon the sky, casting a dark shadow. The crimson riatsu, intermingled with waves of black, began to converge and solidify between the horns, resembling the spirals of vortex. Okuyora narrowed his beast-like eyes at Ichigo and comprehended. So it appears, no mercy, just a deceptive style. But it matters not. I have lost the meaning of life in your hands. Let's end this, he declared. With a resounding crash, Ciro, compressed to its utmost, exploded, striking Okuyora squarely in the face. A thunderous noise echoed. Above the zenith, dark red Riatsu suddenly erupted, transforming into a scarlet sun ascending. The devastating shockwave obliterated surrounding stone pillars, leaving Ishida Yuryu and Inoue Oriheim trembling beneath the absolute shield, desperately praying for resistance. The ground shook violently, dark cracks spreading in all directions, their expanse immeasurable. In the lost no chase below, space screamed, the dome masquerading as a serene sky with clouds revealed dense black gaps, on the verge of collapse. In the Shinigami world, countless hollows and Shinigami gasped for breath. The terrifying aura on the screen seemed poised to annihilate everything, mocking their ignorance of true power. After the explosion, Inoue Oriheim and Ishida Yuryu gazed upward as the white smoke dispersed. Their eyes widened. 
Above the pitch black abyss, Ichigo, with a bull's head, held Okuyora's broken body aloft like a trophy. Okuyora, with only half his body remaining, was flung out by the bull headed Ichigo. Subsequently, the bull headed Ichigo advanced toward the fallen Okuyora like a malevolent spirit. Just as he was about to behead Okuyora, a hand seized his arm. Ishida Yuryu, fearing Kurosaki Ichigo would lose his humanity, intervened. However, without hesitation, the bull headed Ichigo thrust Zangetsu into Ishida Yuryu's abdomen. In no way Oriheim's voice halted the next strike, inducing confusion in the bull-headed Ichigo. Suddenly, the seemingly lifeless Okuyora opened his eyes and appeared behind the bull-headed Ichigo, severing a unique horn. Gyuki's grotesque mask shattered, unveiling Kurosaki Ichigo's pallid face. With the shattered mask, Kurosaki Ichigo lost all strength, collapsing to the ground. The unforeseen turn of events left everyone stunned. Okuyora not only survived but emerged victorious, aided by Ishida Yuryu and Inoue Oriheim. Despite the victory, Okuyora refrained from further attacks. All the hollow fragments on Kurosaki Ichigo transformed into blue Riatsu, filling the void. Kurosaki Ichigo awakened. Okuyora vanished momentarily, reappearing not to attack Kurosaki Ichigo, but to approach Ishida Yuryu. He withdrew a Zangetsu and tossed it before Kurosaki Ichigo. Let's settle this. Kurosaki Ichigo remained unmoved, offering to let the other sever his right hand and right leg as well. Refusing to acknowledge being the one who fought earlier, Kurosaki Ichigo insisted on equal suffering for fairness. Okuyora was taken aback, facing an opponent unlike any he'd encountered before. In that case, I will oblige you. Just as he moved, his body halted. The power faded, and the black wings behind him turned to ashes. It failed, Okuyora expressed no surprise. His skeletal limbs indicated Siro, the hollow-fied Ichigo, had damaged his internal organs. It's over for now, Okuyora said with a hint of pity, then turned to Kurosaki Ichigo. Just end me. Kurosaki Ichigo, however, vehemently rejected, declaring, how can a battle like this be won? I refuse. Okuyora, perplexed, had never encountered such defiance. Humans and Erenkar, mustn't they fight to the death, determining a clear winner? Shouldn't a battle have a victor in the end? Why does this happen? Confused by Kurosaki Ichigo's self-denial and pained eyes, Okuyora witnessed him losing his chest in the next moment. Okuyora sensed a peculiar sensation in the dark void within his chest. I see. In the next instant, his body disintegrated into ashes, dispersing into nothingness. Off-screen, Okuyora's emotionless eyes are consistently perplexed. Heart. How can such a thing exist? Aizen, seated high above, perceived everything with his eyes. Not only was he not dissatisfied, but he displayed expectant eyes. It appears more intriguing when an empty phantom desires a heart. I am uncertain about the future appearance of Okuyora. This is the sound of layered illusory echoes. Reward distribution, Vasto Lord Ichigo mode, 10 minutes per day, controlled by Zangetsu, dot. Trigger basic reward, resurrection. Soul Society, Kurosaki Ishin ignored the reward before him and looked behind. Resurrection truly resurrected in an instant, an uncontrollable surprise appeared on his face, and tears welled up in his eyes. At this moment, as golden light descended, a cry echoed. Kurosaki Ichigo slowly sat up, looking bewildered at the flowers surrounding his body. Then, he retrieved a note from within. It read, Although you're a big idiot and your brain isn't very good, you secretly peek at Inoue's big boobs in class and then give me a contemptuous look. But, I will still miss you, my best friend Kurosaki Ichigo. Rukia Kuchiki At this moment, Kurosaki Ichigo recalled that Yawach had extracted something from his heart earlier, and then his vision went black. Am I dead? But why am I suddenly alive now? And this nonsense, don't write a eulogy if you don't know how to write one. What's a big idiot? Are the top three in my class good? As for peeking, absolutely not. How could such an upright person peek at someone? Damn it. And your boobs, I neither despise nor envy it. Cut just when Kurosaki Ichigo was pondering and planning to question Rukia later, a playful voice that made his scalp tingle resonated in his mind. Hiss, Kurosaki Ichigo, long time no see. The next moment, 
the world before his eyes darkened, and he found himself in an unfamiliar environment. Kurosaki Ichigo looked up with a sense of unease and saw Zangetsu, legs crossed with a wicked smile, looking down at him. Well, now. Tell me, what's the difference between a household king and a mount? Hueco Mundo, lost no chase at this moment, Aizen suddenly turned his head, looked at Ikimara Jin, and said with a smile, Jin, what do you think? I think you're going to die. Ikimara Jin thought. Ikimara Jin was on the verge of collapse. Can you ask someone else, like the black blind man by your side? The other party will undoubtedly flatter you. Silence for a moment, hee hee, Lord Aizen, you're looking at me too much. I was trembling the whole battle just now, and I was so shocked that I couldn't think. Aizen shook his head and smiled, in the entire Lost No Chase, if Jin is timid, then there is no one bolder. After all, you can always keep smiling by my side. Ikimaru Jin still maintained a smiling facade, saying, Sir Aizen is joking, you are not an enemy. How could I be afraid? Aizen nodded, holding his head in one hand and tapping lightly on the stone seat with the index finger of the other hand. That rhythmic sound gradually synchronized with Ikimaru Jin's heartbeat. Ikimaru Jin's smile gradually faded, and he couldn't hold it any longer. Dense sweat formed on his forehead, and he felt the pressure in his heart growing heavier, even making him a little breathless. Damn it! This man's strength has become even more terrifying. Snapped. As a drop of cold sweat fell to the ground, Aizen ceased the tapping fingers. Jin really isn't my enemy. However, for Jin, I am an enemy. Espada and Tosin can aim below looked at Ikimaru Jin in unison. Looking at Aizen's eyes, as indifferent as a master's, Ikimaru Jin finally lost his smile and opened his eyes, which had been underfoot. In an instant, a cold light flashed, and a Jin white blade instantly pierced Aizen's chest. This attack he had practiced tens of thousands of times in his heart. Ikimaru Jin's heart was pounding, and there was a mix of joy and confusion in his eyes. Success. Shinso ran through Aizen's heart just then, a faint voice sounded. Disguising a sword as a hilt, it's really a good idea, Jin. Looking at Aizen, still seated on the throne, seemingly unaffected by the sword piercing his chest, Ikimaru Jin's heart sank. He turned his head to look at the espadas below, and indeed, their virtual eyes were filled with doubt. That was their doubt about the attack, even shock. Ikimaru Jin's voice became hoarse, when, I've been careful, I've never seen your Kyoka Suijetsu. Aizen chuckled lightly, Jin, how did you get the illusion that you didn't see Kyoka Suijetsu? You've seen it from the beginning. As the voice fell, the sound of shattering mirrors echoed. The world in Ikimaru Jin's eyes shattered, and Aizen sat on the throne, unharmed. And the Shinso in his hand pierced into his body. A wry smile appeared on Ikimaru Jin's face. It turns out that for so many years, he has only been a clown for the other party, which is truly ridiculous. Just when he was desperate, Aizen suddenly laughed and said, Don't be disheartened, Jin. After all these years, I won't kill you. Go back to Soul Society. There was surprise in Ikimaru Jin's eyes, but no one could decipher Aizen's intentions. Shinso withdrew, and blood flowed. But this is not a fatal wound, and it doesn't matter. It seems that Aizen really didn't intend to kill him, otherwise, Shinso might have pierced his heart. Seeing that Aizen did not continue to attack, Ikimaru Jin used Shuenpa to flee outside the Lost No Chase continuously. Master Aizen, why didn't you let me kill him? Tosin Kaname said. Aizen was obviously in a good mood and just smiled faintly, forget it this time, but hopefully, this is the last time you question my decision, understood. Tosin Kaname broke out in a cold sweat for a moment and immediately knelt down on one knee, lowering his head, not daring to say anything. In Hueco Mundo, Ikimaru Jin took a deep breath. After successfully escaping from Las Noches, the joy of having the rest of his life appeared in his eyes. The next second, he began to think about where to go next. Aizen is difficult to figure out, but he's definitely not someone with good intentions. There must be some plan for me to return to Soul Society. I can't go back. The world may indeed be a better place. It's settled. I, I. I desire. I'm returning to the Soul Society. A gleam of moonlight flickered in Ikimaru Jin's eyes, only to return to his customary smile as he opened a portal to the Soul Society. 
One Punch World. As the video concluded, Saitama resumed his usual uninterested expression. In the past few days, nothing peculiar had occurred, and he found no reason to unleash his strength. Most importantly, his meager salary had been depleted because, after every video, he indulged in buying snacks. After another day of casual shopping, Saitama headed to the convenience store. After lingering in the meat section, he emerged with a bag in hand. Subsequently, Saitama made a call. Hey, Genos, how about hot pot tonight? I've got cabbage and tofu ready. Oh, should I bring some meat? That would be thoughtful. Yeah, Genos, you're into beef, right? Anything is fine. You should eat what you like, don't worry about me. I don't consume meat. On the other end of the call, Genos peered skeptically at his mechanical body. Humph. Saitama lay on the floor, contentedly burping, feeling satisfied only after a full meal. At that moment, the screen flickered, keeping its promise the countdown concluded, revealing a black and white image. A demonic figure with two horns emerged. Shrouded in darkness, making it impossible to discern any details. Top 10 Darkening Characters List No, One Punch Man World, Hungry Wolf, The Hero Association, The Gathering Place for Many S-Class Heroes as always. One Punch Man World Unfortunately, it's not our world, said the 17th ranked sexy prisoner with a hint of regret. If it's a world like ours, the name should be connected to the Hero Association, remarked the 4th ranked Atomic Samurai. He held a thin wooden stick in his mouth, sporting a determined expression as he smiled disdainfully. It's quite simple. The villains and disasters in our world have no top-level existence. We slevel heroes won't be defeated, won't die, and certainly won't run amok. However, this time, Flashy Flash, the thirteenth-ranked hero, sensed something amiss. He noticed that Silver Fong Bang, the third-ranked hero, furrowed his brow, wearing a solemn expression on his face. You find something, Silver Fong. Flashy Flash inquired curiously. Silver Fawn shook his head. Uncertain if it was his disciple, he hoped he was wrong. But the world's name triggered a memory of a bald young man he had seen before, shattering a meteorite with a single punch. Perhaps it truly was the disciple expelled from his dojo. The screen illuminates, revealing a scene with collapsed buildings and covered in ruins. Atop the ruins stand King, Tornado lying on the ground, Sweet Mask attacked by strange beings resembling water, the pitiable atomic samurai, the pig god emerging from the ground, and the grotesque black sperm, psychos, and other powerful monsters. How can this be? In the One Punch world, the eyes of every hero association member conveyed confusion, shock, and bewilderment. It was indeed their own world, but why was it in such a pitiful state? The once arrogant atomic samurai wore a somber expression, his face contorted with disgust. He couldn't fathom that the embarrassingly dodging figure in the video was him. Tornado, seated nearby, was on the verge of losing control. As a member of the association and, aside from the enigmatic no. Blast, one of the most powerful individuals, how could she have fallen? Don't dwell on the it. Silver Fong was the first to react, speaking loudly. Everyone, pay attention. The upcoming scene is crucial. We might discover the weaknesses of these monster in advance, so observe closely. The other heroes promptly reacted. Even if the future war took unexpected turns, it wouldn't stray too far. Identifying the monster's weaknesses could provide a significant advantage in future battles. In the Monster Association, Monster King Orochi seethed with anger. The ferocious tentacles on his head pierced through and killed several monsters. He roared furiously. At first glance, it appeared to be the impending war between the Monster Association and the Hero Association, but why was there no sign of himself? Had he perished? Impossible, he's undoubtedly on another battlefield, it's inconceivable for him to lose. Invincible, how could he be defeated? After all, even the black sperm still stands proudly. With eye-shaped psychos, a mere clone, fixated on the screen, eager to record the weaknesses of the next heroes. Just when everyone in the One Punch world anticipated a major battle, the camera abruptly shifted to another perspective. Boom! In the ruins, the alluring prisoner broke through the barrier, entering a small space that remained uncollapsed. The next moment, 
a smile graced the face adorned with the buttocks and chin. Opposite him, a robust man, devoid of hair on his body, with dark muscles covering him, sat in the corner. Super alloy dark shine, you're safe. The ground battle is still ongoing. Come with me to aid everyone. However, in the presence of Puri Puri prisoner, Sup remained motionless. His eyes were vacant, and he didn't rise, he merely inquired, did the little super alloy dark shine defeat the hero hunter Garu? Puri Puri prisoner was a bit puzzled, didn't you defeat that Garu? He's always boasting about hunting heroes and became too arrogant after defeating a few ranks. This time, he should sober up when he faces you. Atomic Samurai's face turned ashen, hunting hero, how dare you say that Silver Fong, I remember Garu is your disciple. Remember to go back and discipline him. Bang sighed inwardly and said helplessly, he's already been expelled from the dojo by me. After a pause, Silver Fong added quietly, also, did you forget his title so soon? Garu Legend The eyes of every Sklass hero widened suddenly. Isn't this a showdown between heroes and monsters? How can he be a nobody in at this moment, Super Alloy Darkshine suddenly buried his head between his knees. Like a frightened little girl whose heart collapsed, he spoke with great fear and trembling, I failed, I gave in, I ran away like a bereaved dog, the next moment, the camera screen shifted. Above the ground, a black shadow squatted on a stone. As he changed and stood up, horns like those of demons twisted out from the top of his head. The terrifying aura descended upon him like an abyss. Off screen, Garu laughed uproariously. It's me, it's really me. I'll hunt these disgusting heroes in the future for sure. Crushing false justice. He didn't mind the premature video release, there would be rewards and compensation, and he'd remain formidable. His blood boiled at this moment, and he couldn't wait to head to the Hero Association immediately. In the Hero Association, observing the defeated super alloy Darkshine and the demon like Garu, everyone's faces grew even more grim. In the midst of this moment, the resounding beat of violence echoed through the conference room. Bang and the others turned their heads, only to witness King wearing an expressionless face, his eyes radiating disdain. Behold, the King engine had manifested. True to his character, King faced the potential onslaught of a formidable enemy with unwavering resolve and an even stronger fighting spirit. Once again, the hero's hearts found tranquility. The camera shifts to the other side of the battlefield where a tornado hovers in the air, its face covered in blood. As it clenched tightly, the entire body's black essence bulged, and suddenly, the head exploded like a watermelon. I can vanquish trillions of fusions, but it appears I cannot surpass you, psychos. In the next moment, the denser thanster black essence is gathered, leaving only ten black essence clusters holding a child hostage. A violent airflow erupted, shaking the earth violently. As the smoke and dust cleared, a human figure with a golden sheen from head to toe appeared. Golden sperm is born. How does it feel to have your body trembling? This is the sole survivor of 9999999999 million of me merging and battling. And once it reaches this state, it can't be separated again. Super alloy dark shine, with a look of disgust, even more disgusting. However, the moment the voice fell, tornado crashed to the ground like a cannonball. In the large pit, Tornado lay on the ground, life or death unknown. In her original seat, Golden Sperm crossed her arms, displaying an invincible attitude. Dead silence in the Hero Association. No one could have fathomed that Tornado would be defeated in a mere second. Is this a god-level disaster? And at that very moment, the ten polymer black essences watching the child hostage were suddenly torn in half. A demonic, wolf-like creature emerged. The golden essence slash child fell to the ground and strolled towards the Garu. Garu? It seems you've become quite the anomaly. But daring to attack my clone, your journey ends here. However, at this moment, golden sperm halted, for a dark shadow stood behind him. At this time, the Garu's voice, as if from hell, reverberated, I didn't catch that. Can you repeat it? As the voice faded, they transformed into blurry shadows, attacking at an eye-defying speed. The Hero Association's class heroes were overwhelmed with shock. No one was confident enough to keep up with this speed. And in the next moment, everyone's eyes widened uncontrollably. They witnessed the Black Garu, grinning like a shadow, accelerating again, 
reaching the back of Golden Sperm slash Sun in an instant, delivering a punch. The next moment, the Golden Sperm, harder than metal, shattered, all cells annihilated by a single punch. In the Hero Association, a pallor spread across everyone's faces. No one could fathom that the monster capable of effortlessly vanquishing Tornado had been taken down by Garu with a single punch. Even amidst the onslaught, there was still a glimmer of hope for Golden Sperm to prevail, but what chance did they have against a Garu of this caliber? In the unusual association, the monster king Orochi fell into an unusual silence. However, Psychos remained puzzled. The unconventional individuals were diverse, exhibiting various forms or embodying certain themes, like evil natural water, phoenix man, and others. But confronted by the humanized appearance of Garu before her, it neither resembled any specific creature nor possessed the characteristics of an inanimate object. Psychos widened her eyes, uncovering a truth that shattered her preconceptions. The revelation struck her, Garu was more akin to a human aberration. In the Shinigami world, Aizen's brow furrowed slightly. He wasn't astonished by Garu's strength but rather had discerned something crucial. Up until now, all the outbursts in the list had been triggered by emotions. In the scene before him, this man had harnessed his emotional power to its pinnacle. The wellspring of that power was an unfathomable obsession. This, too, was another type of strength. It seems that after the video, the experiment will resume. The wind blows, after dealing with golden sperm, Garu's form vanished instantly, reappearing behind the sweetheart-masked individual. Do heroes have to be beautiful? Can't an ordinary-looking person become a hero? Garu's questioning voice resonated with an overwhelming chill, freezing Puri Puri prisoner in place, rendering him unable to even turn around. Observing this, Garu refrained from attacking and continued, What you label as beauty is nothing more than ugly narcissism in my eyes. This statement deeply wounded Puri Puri prisoner, who struggled to turn back and counter, but his efforts met only empty air. Puri Puri prisoner pivoted to find Garu had already approached Atomic Samurai. Confronting the same silhouette as Shinigami, the typically proud man couldn't muster an attack. Garu's eyes with disappointment, is it an act of justice to stand idly by just because I lack a weapon? Is it fair to stare at me with empty hands? Atomic Samurai couldn't speak, Garu swiftly moved to the bloated and corpulent pig god, and you, corpulent imbecile, why so much excess fat? Just because you're a hero, you squander countless resources every day in vain. The ground quaked, and Garu transformed into a blurred afterimage, reappearing beside Genos, isn't this the one who slew me a few days ago? Now it seems you're nothing more than a mortal shell, relying solely on unearned power. A narcissistic, unsightly soul, a talentless bladeless wonder, a gluttonous pig who only knows how to eat, an immortal who leans on others for strength. Garu's voice interrogated, peeling away the glorious hero facade, laying bare the true essence within. In the One Punch world, humans exchanged perplexed glances. Yet, within a building, Saitama lay on the floor with crossed legs, nonchalantly remarking, Genos, don't let Garu's words bother you. The essence of a hero is never just about power. What is it then? Genos inquired, puzzled. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. At that moment, Saitama thought of the bicycle Herod, utterly ordinary, pedaling a bicycle without fear. A smile played at the corner of his lips, it's all about having a kind heart. In the Hero Association, Atomic Samurai clenched his long knife tightly, gritting his teeth and declaring vehemently, damn brat, I'll find and kill you soon. The others fell silent, a hint of contempt evident in Tornado's eyes. She couldn't fathom that the Atomic Samurai would dare to attempt this. Throughout the preceding footage, the list holder would be rewarded for utilizing the power briefly displayed. This, the man must acknowledge within himself, stating it was merely to salvage a bit of pride. But this notion seemed even more absurd. Garu kicks forward into the vacant space. The heroes were perplexed and somewhat bewildered, but the following second their eyes widened as they witnessed an astounding scene. Confronted by immense power and exaggerated skills, the air surged forward like a cannonball, erupting in rings, swiftly striking Genos. Boom! It was undeniably air, yet Genos felt as though he'd been struck by a sledgehammer, the reactor in his chest nearly extinguished. The quality is truly impressive, it seems like a hefty sum was spent. Garu is poised to strike again, this time aiming to sever the opponent's limbs. 
Wait. The moment the voice ceased, blood sprayed forth. Garu flicked the blood bead left on his fingertips, observing the zombie man attempting to halt him. At this moment, the opponent's mouth started bleeding from both corners, two bloodlines appearing and extending backward, continuously spraying blood. In the Hero Association, everyone fell silent. They hadn't even witnessed Garu's previous attack, and the next second, the zombie man's head was nearly cleaved in half. And this was evidently still the other party's doing, that's what happens when you point fingers at me, looking at the zombie man whose mouth was filled with blood, Garu spoke with disdain, I find joy in countering the enemy while perpetually healing, because you don't have to fight for your life, faced with ridicule, the zombie man remained impassive, coldly inquiring, Garu, what is your purpose? What are your plans to overthrow the hero association? Off screen, all the heroes were also exceedingly curious. It was clear from the merciless killing of the golden sperm just now that Garu was undoubtedly not a member of the monster association. But then why attack heroes? There was no benefit at all in doing so, and it would ultimately make the entire world an enemy. Somewhere, Garu's eyes were filled with disgust. They had reached this point, spoken so much, yet these people could still ask such foolish questions. There was only one reason to personally attack heroes. Garu glanced around at all the heroes present, stating with a cold voice, there must be absolute evil in the world now. Only this way can the extreme hypocrisy of you people be shattered. And as your hero's opposition, there's only one path, that's it. Become a monster, off screen, Garu closed his eyes. There was something he hadn't mentioned in the video yet. That is, when one becomes a transcendent evil, and under fear, the world will also find peace. In the Hokage world, Uchiha Madara sneers. It seems that no matter the world, there's no shortage of individuals with ideas akin to pains. However, he has weathered numerous wars and witnessed uncountable chapters of history. Oppression inevitably breeds resistance. Indeed, the infinite Tsukuyami is the true path to peace across all worlds. Even. It embodies the true ideal paradise. Just as Garu's voice fell, the sky suddenly darkened. Tornado awakens once more, her expressionless face now even more terrifying. At this moment, she manipulates a boulder resembling a hill, pressing it towards Garu. Boom! Garu overturns and punches, dense cracks immediately spiderweb across the boulder. The next moment, the rock wails, shattering into countless tiny stones. Garu tilts his head and laughs disdainfully, is this the psychic power of the second-ranked hero in this rank? It's truly weak, not much different from your sister's. Tornado startles and screams, what have you done to Fubuki? Garu backhands and gestures back, Fubuki, her body is over there. Do you want to take a look? Hearing this, Tornado loses control completely, her psychic power swirling around like monstrous waves, enveloping everything. Grant me death, in an instant, everything around Garu floats. Every stone, every brick, every exposed steel bar, countless ruins and wreckage converge into numerous spheres, carrying a terrifying power like meteorites attacking Garu. In an instant, Garu is completely sealed within the meteorite group. On the periphery, the range continues to expand, and everything on the ground is still lifted, wave after wave smashing toward the center like a torrential rain. In the Hero Association, everyone gazes in shock at Tornado. Such intensity, such a broad spectrum of saturation attacks the world's mightiest superpowers have their perspective shaken once more. But the next second, they seem to hear a voice from hell. Bestial killing gods and killing fists. Countless fist shadows appear, and the air violently trembles. At this moment, the entire world seems struck by the punch of Garu. In an instant, the countless ruins controlled by Tornado are all turned into powder. The scene falls deadly silent, as if witnessing a miracle. At this moment, the atomic warrior seizes his disciple's weapon, finally mustering the courage to attack. Atomic Slash The atomic samurai roars, activating his own technique. In an instant, countless fine knife marks appear in the air, as if capable of cutting through everything. But Garu can't evade it, and in a flash of thousands of slashes, he stretches out his two fingers and precisely intercepts. The next second, a crisp sound rings out, and the atomic warrior freezes in place. The heroes look up, struck as if by lightning. Atomic Samurai's long sword is broken, the tip of the sword caught between the fingers of Garu. 
In the next chapter, the bald devil makes his appearance. Flash Punch In an instant, the dense shadows of boxing exploded towards Garu simultaneously. However, what greeted him was the single palm that Garu casually waved. All of his punches were effortlessly parried. Flashy Flash took a deep breath, his body vibrating violently. Flowing Shadow Feet In a high-speed movement, more than a dozen afterimages of Flashy Flash emerged. Among them, each afterimage could be real or instantly turn fake. Off-screen, Sonic was thrilled. Indeed, he's the super senior who exterminated the ninja village, even he might struggle with this. At such a speed, Garu is doomed. Boom! The ground trembled violently, and Flashy Flash's speed increased once again. In an instant, dozens of afterimages twisted like a giant snake, surrounding Garu. Garu slowly raised his head and grinned, it's quite impressive. Miscellaneous. Just as Flashy Flash was infuriated, he heard Garu continue speaking, though it's apparent, let's keep it simple. The moment the voice fell, Garu slammed a punch to the ground. Instantly, the earth shook violently, surging up and down, and dark cracks spread rapidly. Flashy Flash could no longer sustain the speed of his feet and tripped, falling abruptly. And at that moment, another figure burst from the ground. Puri Puri prisoner tore through clothes and charged at Garu. The chariot grapple. Boom. As she neared Garu, a fist mark appeared on Puri Puri prisoner's belly, blood spurting out as she flew faster than she came. Dai she male, I've loathed you for a long time, dare to show your face. Garu dismissed the punched fist on the ground with a look of disdain. It was indeed a delivery, and the heroes had the revelation they needed. At the same time, Super Alloy Darkshine appeared again. Don't know what happened between the two muscular men underground or how Puri Puri prisoner found solace. At this moment, Super Alloy Darkshine's face has regained confidence. At this moment, viewers from countless worlds felt their scalps tingling simultaneously, shivering, not daring to imagine the scene. Kill him, Garu. Someone had already started cheering for Garu. With a confident smile, Super Alloy Darkshine attacked Garu without hesitation. Under the comforting guidance of Puri Puri prisoners, he regained confidence, feeling his strength reach new heights. Go to hell, Garu. This time, I won't back down. Boom. Super Alloy Darkshine crashed into the ruins, and after a few seconds, he pulled the gravel and soil around him to cover his body. Ah, uh, now it's my turn to step in. Saitama took a step toward Garu with an excited face, only to be pulled back. Flashy Flash stood in front of Saitama with a serious expression, you're an unknown Blevel hero who hasn't left yet. Are you here to die? After speaking, Flashy Flash rushed in again, hitting Garu instantly. Viewers from other worlds were a bit speechless. To some extent, this long-haired man was no different from a small fry, at this time, the zombie man behind Saitama said, Hey, Baldi over there, mind if I borrow your shoulder? Simultaneously, Fubuki stood up again under the comforting presence of Puri Puri prisoner. Seeing this, Saitama asked the zombie man in confusion, You're all down, won't you let me handle this? Off screen, the heroes of the Hero Association frowned. From where did this trash fish come, and why do you lack self awareness? Isn't this perplexing? I see. This person is called Caped Baldi, a Blevel hero, Busho said at this time. Atomic Samurai exclaimed in frustration, only Blevel. The person in charge of the association should quickly dismiss him, or we'll have to deal with him in the future. Silver Fong Bang raised his hand to explain, but before he could speak, Sweet Mask interrupted, don't speak for him, Silver Fong Bang. I know you mean well, but this is no joke. Losing a battle because of him is not a trivial matter. Boom! Fubuki was completely defeated, he was only delayed for a few seconds before being kicked out again. This time, no hero remains except Saitama. Seeing this, Garu pointed in one direction and shouted loudly, From now on, I'm going to kill that ugly and inconspicuous kid. If the hero has any meaning, then you might as well show it now and stop me from killing that kid. After speaking, Garu walks forward slowly, step by step. The zombie man leaning on Saitama said angrily at this time, What the hell are you going to do? You don't need to be like this if you hate heroes, right? Garu doesn't turn his head back, doesn't explain, but
but mocks, zombie man. Obviously has the body of immortality, but he can only move his lips. He is really a cowardly guy. A hero of shit, what a waste. Hearing this, the zombie man trembled and said in despair, damn it, in order to torture us, he will definitely kill that child. The heroes are very angry, but they can't stand up to attack, they can only show resentment in their eyes. And at this moment, the air suddenly dries up. Garu thought someone stood up, but when he looked back, he found it was a strange person. The evil natural water that was blown away by the power of thought before became stronger because of the despair of the heroes, fear, and anger, in that case, before killing that kid, let's dispose of the garbage first. And the next moment, the space suddenly trembled. Garu saw that the evil natural water, which completely ignored physical attacks, burst into water foam, forming a cloud of white mist blown away by the wind. In the humid air, Saitama tilted his head and retracted his fist, looking at Garu with a strange expression. Who are you, what kind of bird thing are you? Off screen, the Sklass heroes were silent, feeling like they had hallucinations. Killed a dragon level monster with one punch. This is a B grade. Within the association, Silver Fong Bang knew that this challenge was far more daunting than it appeared visually. Super speed, unparalleled insight, and ultimate precision control. These three were essential, otherwise, it would be like extending a finger to a Garu. On the opposite side, Atomic Samurai mirrored his own actions on the screen, frozen like a photograph. If it were just defense, he wouldn't be surprised at all. But now, it was even more audacious than hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was outrageous because Atomic Samurai employed special skills to unleash thousands of slashes in an instant. This meant that Garu's slightest deviation in extending his fingers would result in them being cut off. Such a feat seemed impossible, akin to a disaster of godlike proportions. At this moment, fear crept into the hearts of Atomic Samurai and others. Why are you so surprised? Garu swiftly swung the broken blade, striking Atomic Samurai instantly. Then, he looked disdainfully at the opponent who fell to the ground, doubling the slashes doesn't make sense, there's no dead end for monsters when killing gods. Boom. As the voice echoed, Garu swiftly approached the pig attempting a sneak attack and threw a punch. This time, the thick fat of the pig god offered no defensive effect. A large pit formed in his belly, and a sonic boom cloud exploded, transforming into a cannonball that soared through the air. Bang bang bang, with no towering buildings or walls to impede its path, the pig god's body continuously collided and rebounded like a ball in the ruins, flying thousands of meters before finally stopping. Garu did not pursue further but turned slowly. Behind him, tornado hovered in the air, eyes scarlet, and the space surrounding its body turned a terrifying black. Tornado stared at Garu, speaking with a voice filled with hatred, I will use all remaining power to tear you into pieces, leaving no armor behind, invisible psychic power turning into reality. Within the association, everyone found it difficult to associate this kind of power with the woman in front of them, wearing a gloomy expression and covered in green light, resembling a child. The dark and psychic power sent shivers down one spine just by looking at it. Flashing flashy flash surveyed the surroundings, feeling that anyone present would easily break their necks under Tornado's influence. Except for one person, flashy flash turned to look at King, generating a loud noise from the King engine. Sure enough, this man's face remained as cold and arrogant as ever, his seemingly godless eyes filled with confidence. Those three vertical scars looked exceptionally terrifying at this moment. As expected of you, King, the black thought power silently spread toward Garu, tightly wrapping him. The next moment, a harsh voice echoed. The space seemed to distort, and Garu's body was pulled and deformed. On Borossa's spaceship, the octopus monster, self-proclaimed the number one psychic in the universe, trembled. As a user of psychic power, he could vividly perceive the horror of tornado psychic power. If it weren't for the entirety of the psychic power acting on Garu, the surrounding space might truly have ruptured. What shocked him even more was Garu. What's going on with that physique? It's nearly on par with Boros, the universe's overlord. As for the Hero Association, everyone was on edge, knowing that Garu was not unbeatable. Just as Garu resisted the power of thought, the other heroes didn't stay idle and launched a coordinated attack. Now's the best chance, Sweet Mask swiftly approached Garu, delivering 25 rapid kicks in an instant. 
Simultaneously, Child Emperor took a pair of shoes from his backpack, putting them on, and they emitted a seven-color fluorescent glow. Football dribble kick, Sweet Mask suddenly leaped into the air, propelled by the shoes like a lightning bolt, landing a powerful kick on Garu. For an instant, it felt like the space froze. The next moment, Getty spat out blood and inexplicably flew backward. Sweet Mask's expression turned grim, one eyeball was forced out as he fell to the ground with blood splattered. At this moment, the twisted body of Garu had fully recovered, completely unaffected by Tornado's psychic power. Countless viewers immediately grasped the situation. In that brief moment, Garu delivered two punches, knocking both of them away instantly. Garu turned slowly, smiling at the surprised, too weak. It only takes me five seconds to adapt to your superpowers. In the next moment, Garu's figure flickered in place, and Tornado opposite him sprayed a mist of blood, crashing into the ruins again. This scene caused the hearts of the other heroes to skip a beat, and then pound violently. They were horrified to find that they could no longer perceive Garu's attack speed, King seems to be absent, what a pity. Garu surveyed the fallen heroes around him with boredom. These people before him don't pose any threat. Perhaps only the king can force me to reveal my true strength, he remarked. In the association, all eyes turned to King simultaneously. The fate of the hero association now rested on the shoulders of the man known as the strongest on the earth. As everyone gazed into King's fearless and indifferent eyes, a sense of reassurance settled in their hearts. Compared to King, even if he couldn't defeat Garu, he could inflict serious injuries. In doing so, others would still have a chance to emerge victorious. The thought of having King was comforting, almost a collective realization among everyone present. Boom the ground erupted suddenly, and a caped figure with long hair emerged. Slowly crawling out from behind him was Saitama, his bald head reflecting the dazzling sunlight. Something peculiar seemed to have occurred. In the minds of countless viewers across the world, a question mark emerged. In the Mob Psycho 100 world, Shigeo Kagiyama silently extended his thumb in praise, what a handsome, bald man. Meanwhile, Kagiyama Ritsu's face concealed, noting the resemblance to his brother. Everything felt so random. In the One Punch world, within the Hero Association, many frowned at the appearance of this unknown character. They wondered where he came from, daring to appear despite the apparent danger. However, Silver Fong Bang was stunned. In this moment, he seemed to witness that astonishing punch again. Are you the leader of these weirdos? Flashy Flash glared at Garu, proudly holding his long sword. Prepare to meet your end under my Flash's technique. Relax, I'll ensure your demise isn't too painful. Thank me for my mercy. Off screen, Flashy Flash silently covered his face, unable to bear the impending scene. It was bound to be grim. And why did he have to utter such embarrassing lines? Garu tilted his head, a sly grin forming, revealing sharp fangs. Is the dessert a flashy flash one? It looks quite luxurious. Uttering these words, flashy flash's figure blurred for a moment and appeared right in front of Garu. Silver Fong Bang wore a knowing smile, unsurprised by the scene unfolding before him. Meanwhile, the Shrank hero ranked 15th, Metal Bat raised an eyebrow, transitioning from shock to suspicion. The crowd murmured, could it be that the evil natural water was dispersed earlier, and now it's reformed, explaining why its strength hasn't recovered? Some recalled that Saitama's punch had failed to elicit the usual awe-inspiring reactions. Moreover, the man lacked the aura of a formidable hero, at first glance, he seemed rather feeble. Atomic Samurai, reverting to his usual stoic demeanor, remarked, I knew it. How could an unknown Brank hero possess such strength? It's just a fluke. Observing the majority of heroes in the audience buying into this explanation, Silver Fong Bang couldn't help but smirk. Tornado noticed his expression and asked curiously, Old man, you're not surprised at all. Silver Fong Bang's eyes reflected memories of a punch capable of shattering a colossal meteorite. With a sigh, he admitted, I've witnessed an even more intense scene. This revelation caused Tornado's eyes to shrink in disbelief. Silver Fong Bang wasn't lying signifying that the bald man had effortlessly defeated evil natural water. Yet, Tornado's excitement dimmed, even an exceptionally powerful shrank hero wouldn't significantly alter the battle situation. Who is this, capable of instantly defeating a dragon-level threat? 
but it doesn't matter. Since you're a hero, let's settle this. Without warning, Garu dodged toward Saitama, delivering a punch with an almost imperceptible arc viewer's side collectively as yet another opponent succumbed to a single punch. The battles in this world are so dull. Asterisk boom, the earth trembles. Garu's punch missed Saitama, but the resulting shockwave pounded the ground. Did Saitama dodge, or was Garu holding back? The speed was too rapid, many spectators couldn't follow the action. Inside the space battleship, Boros was initially surprised but then laughed excitedly. He dodged it. Huh, it seems the next battle won't be boring. In the Hero Association, observers were stunned once again but quickly shook their heads. Just luck. Garu didn't use his full strength from the start. What are you doing, kid? Do you want to take pictures with me? Saitama wore a childlike grin. Off screen, Genos winced. The teacher's way of speaking was truly something. And this earth shattering punch seemed like child's play to the teacher. Considering this, Genos found himself sympathizing with Garu, wishing the other party wouldn't face too much misery for a while. Joint tricks. Garu's face displayed anger, glaring at Saitama viciously. You thought the previous battles were just mutual tricks. The insignificant fish who hid in the corner before dared not come out, looked at me like this. Saitama looked confused, not understanding why this peculiar person in front of him was angry. This expression only angered Garu even more. Observing the increasingly unfriendly eyes of the other party, Saitama was extremely puzzled, Hey, why are you angry? Aren't we just having a little fun? How could you compare your low-quality cosplay to a street performance? You used a toilet paper roll for the other corner yourself. Hearing this, Garu's expression returned to calm, his eyes showing the wisdom of experience, so, it seems you're ready to die. Now it's time to use your words before you meet your end. Finally, you're just a small fry who hasn't reached a level. Now you have the mentality of a Blevel hero, thinking you can defeat me with words. Too naive. Forget it, it doesn't matter whether I kill a small fish like you or not. I just need to kill the shrank. After saying this, Garu turned around and left. However, at this moment, Saitama's face showed a human-like shadow, and he said gloomily, did I say you could leave? Off screen, Tanktop Master snorted coldly, idiot, since you've been spared, don't run. Pig God mumbled while eating potato chips, probably killed the weak evil natural water, puffed up and considered himself and shrank. Ignorance is fearless. Garu stopped, turned around, and saw a serious expression on Saitama's face. Saitama said angrily at this moment, you think I willingly got involved with you? I was originally a resident here, just here to remind the neighbors to keep the noise down. As a result, I took a few steps, and when I looked back, I found my home had turned into a rocket and ascended to the sky, it's all in ruins now. Where do you expect me to live in the future? What? Saitama, who had been spectating off-screen, jumped up, pointed at the screen, and yelled at Genos, Genos, did I hear that right? Is my home gone? Genos ignored the tongue twister, then nodded, yes, teacher, your house is bombed. How could you do this, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I finally paid off the mortgage a few days ago, damn it. The next second, Saitama's eyes turned scarlet, and he dashed out. Watching a cloud of smoke disappear into the distance, Genos mourned for Garu for a second, hoping the other party wouldn't be found by the teacher. Otherwise, the end would undoubtedly be worse than disturbing the teacher who missed the unicorn on Saturday's sale. Saitama folded his arms and said with a serious face, although the little delinquent seems to enjoy stirring up trouble, show me some respect. Apologize to me right now, or I'll make you regret it. Oratory skills. Garu remarked with an insightful tone, it appears you're trying to appeal to my humanity to defeat me, how despicable. This is nothing, Saitama is perplexed. Where are you from? Just apologize, is it that difficult? I've already shown great mercy. Countless viewers particularly wanted to reach into the screen and ask this peculiar bald head at this moment. So, who are you, strange human? Can't you see the situation? Staring into Saitama's unreal eyes, Garu said, I am the eccentric Garu, the hero hunter. You're Garu. Saitama suddenly showed excited eyes, recalling the association's mission to defeat Garu. This is all money, 
maybe I can upgrade to a better home, seeing that Saitama knew his name, Garu sneered. In that case, what's your plan now, hero? He emphasized that if Saitama couldn't stop him, the children over there would be mercilessly killed due to the hero's incompetence. Saitama points behind him, are you referring to the kid hiding far away, not cute at all? He's clearly in the other direction. With your acting skills, I really don't see how you come off as a weirdo. The next second, Saitama's face turned serious, and he said solemnly, So, Garu, let me ask you one last question, what have you become? At this moment, countless viewers realized that Garu hadn't killed a single human, unlike the strange beings they encountered. As for Fubuki, it's just chatter. It's very likely that, like this little kid, it's all a blatant lie. In the world of Hokage, surprise appeared in Uchiha Madara's eyes. He originally thought this was a man who, like Nagato, used fear to rule the world, but he was mistaken. Just unhappy with a hypocritical hero? Or wanting to change the world? Or both? I underestimated you. In the world of One Punch Man, the killing intent on the tornado is no longer as potent. The others remained grim. Even if they weren't killed, it would be humiliating. However, as Garu's master, Bang was relieved. On the other side, as if to dispel the awkwardness, Atomic Samurai changed the subject and said, I wondered why this mediocre hero didn't run away. Turns out, he saw through Garu who refrained from killing anyone. Ah, it might be the mindset of the little guys, wanting to assert themselves in front of this glass and gain recognition. Ugh, I really don't know what to say. Garu was astonished that Saitama could see so far in the middle of the night. On the other side, observing the silent Garu, Saitama walked towards him without hesitation. Since you don't speak, I'll shoot first. One step, two steps, Saitama halted less than 30 centimeters in front of Garu. Garu conveyed something different in his eyes. I didn't expect this bald head to dare come here, and... You dare to clench your fist so tightly. It seems you don't want to live. Looking at the motionless Garu, Saitama asked suspiciously, Are you afraid? Why don't you attack? This statement completely angered Garu. Idiot, Garu roared, launching a merciless punch this time. Actually, daring to say that I am merciful to the hero is courting death the distance is extremely short, this punch lands on Saitama firmly. In an instant it was like a locomotive driving on the ground, stirring up countless gravel and dust. This idiot angered Garu and killed himself. Tanktop Master sneered and mocked. The other heroes had complex expressions, a mix of pity and schadenfreude. But only Silver Fong Bang, Tornado, and King continued to watch with expressionless faces. Looking at the billowing smoke, Garu sneered, this is the end of the weak guy who wants to get justice. He is an idiot and will be an idiot in his next life. Garu's words got lower and lower, ending abruptly before finishing. The smoke and dust gradually dissipated, revealing two ravines plowed out. But in the end, Saitama stood intact, with a blank expression on his face. As if to say, is this it? How is this possible? Could it be that Garu didn't use all his strength? But this time, they can't deceive themselves because all the viewers saw the shock in the eyes of Garu. In the Hero Association, Atomic Samurai suddenly clenched his fist. The others were also full of incredulity. And the next moment, everyone couldn't help but open their mouths. Saitama instantly returns to the original position and slaps forward like a fly. This seemed simple and unpretentious, a blow without the slightest skill, but it produced an earth-shattering effect. Garu couldn't even take a defensive stance, and his body slammed, bursting out circles of fog, rubbing fire like a falling meteor in the atmosphere and being blasted away. Boom, boom, boom under the impact, countless raised ruins along the way were instantly shattered, and a ravine of different depths formed on the ground. Finally, Garu sank into the ruins thousands of meters away. At this time, Saitama opened his mouth and said, those who have great power but are used to do evil will end up like this, there was a dead silence outside the screen, and most of the viewers were speechless at this amazing reversal. It looked like a trash fish, but this punch was like a big devil. In the Hero Association, the Atomic Samurai and other heroes who looked down on Saitama, at this moment, their faces became extremely grim and depressed. This punch not only hit Garu, but it was more like a slap in the face. If Saitama is a trash fish, 
then what kind of rubbish are they who can't take a single blow from Garu? Are they even worse than ants? And the last sentence is what this end means. Could it be that there have been many terrorist disasters in the past so the recorders in the association are all dead? Why is there no record? On the cosmic battleship, Boros suddenly tightened his fists. The power emanating from that bald head stirred excitement within him. The battle unfolding before him was finally shedding its monotony. Under the starry sky, Sa Tama's artistic style suddenly transformed, his gaze deepened, this marks the first encounter with a peculiar individual showing mercy. You truly are a human aspiring to become a monster, Garu. However, you are too naive. The punch from Garu just moments ago lacked killing intent and bore an enigmatic skill. In simpler terms, even if an ordinary Brank hero took that punch, they'd merely be sent airborne, suffering a few broken ribs, but not enduring severe damage. Concerning naivety, he didn't need to hold back at all, that punch left him a bit itchy. Gravel scattered, a colossal cloud of smoke erupted in the distance, and then a dark figure shot out from it. After several dodges, leaving afterimages, it materialized behind Saitama. It's really you. Garu glared furiously at the bald head. He had discerned that the opponent surpassed all encountered before, hence, he wouldn't hold back this time, unleashing a lethal punch, in an instant, dozens of claw afterimages appeared simultaneously, with only one being real, topple me down, yet, the next moment, he felt his arm gripped, and an irresistible force followed. Boom! Garu was hurled to the ground over Saitama's shoulder, creating a human-shaped depression with cracks spreading like a spider web. The earth quivered, numerous land blocks crushed and cracked, screams filled the air, and dust rose like a fountain in the sky. The remaining heroes, not rendered unconscious, were horrified. It was as if a doomsday earthquake had struck before their eyes. And this was merely a routine shoulder throw by Saitama. Genos knelt on the floor, small hands sighing, no matter when I witnessed the master's actions, it remains as awe-inspiring as ever. Within the hero association, silence prevailed. At this moment, even the eccentrics dared not breathe, fearing the other party would appear and slaughter them in the next moment. With such a being, the aspiration to dominate the human world was nothing short of a fool's dream. Shinigami Realm Aizen, typically indifferent, furrowed his brow. For some reason, this man instilled in him an intense sense of danger. It was as though a god inhabited a mortal's body. Garu lay on the ground, gazing at the starry sky, unstoppable anger ablaze within his heart. Why, why is this guy so powerful, he had finally vanquished the hero, why does such a force emerge in the end, with extreme reluctance, Garu rose to his feet again, saw Thomas' eyes held a touch of surprise, hey, you still have spirit. You're the second one who can withstand my two attacks, well, not counting that mosquito. Off screen, the eccentric onlookers felt a tingling sensation on their scalps. What does it mean to endure two attacks? Did all the monsters from earlier get one punched out of existence? It's terrifying if it's true. Garu lowered his head and remained silent, his chest rising and falling rhythmically. Hu hu hu, Saitama suddenly wore a concerned expression, hey, don't stand up if your heart is uncomfortable. Off screen, countless onlookers were baffled by the complexity of Saitama's thought process. How is it possible to discern Garu's improvement in strength? Even if you don't interfere, why bother caring about it? Garu was almost shattered by this remark and felt compelled to explain, this is my breathing technique derived from various martial arts. Next, this body will reach its ultimate potential. Hoo hoo, with each inhale and exhale, white steam emanated from Garu's body, and his muscles became more sculpted and graceful. When the vigorous breathing ceased, Garu's body seemed as if it were cast in steel. In the next moment, Garu crouched slightly, clenched one fist and rested it on his waist, raised the other arm, and pointed his palm in Saitama's direction. At this moment, he resembled a cheetah, poised to launch a potentially fatal blow at any time. Saitama's eyes sparkled with interest, oh! Countless stances, intriguing. Looks like a disciple of Bang's school, not that it matters if I blow him away, and in the midst of Saitama's amazement, Garu seized the opportunity to approach from another angle, taking his divine killing art to the pinnacle. In an instant, myriad martial arts techniques, forms, techniques, and finger movements converged. The air quivered and erupted with a thunderous boom. 
and the hundreds of attacking shadows before Saitama were all genuine strikes. A look of astonishment appeared in the eyes of the onlookers. Oh! Here come the fireworks. Indeed, Geru was the most gifted among all of Bang's disciples. Even surpassing the first prodigy in the history of their school. At this moment, witnessing a fusion of twelve distinct martial arts techniques, including the water stream rock smashing fist, whirlwind iron cutting fist, tank top blow, whirlwind water stream, cross fong dragon slayer fist, exploding heart release fist, and purgatory abyss fist, left him in awe. What shocked him even more was that these diverse martial arts techniques harmonized seamlessly, complementing each other. I am so old, but despite his age, Bang nodded approvingly at Garu. With an attack like that, even Saitama would feel uncomfortable, huh? At this moment, Bang's eyes nearly popped out in disbelief. Although there was no direct assault, Saitama merely swayed his body, and in an instant, numerous afterimages materialized. As it turns out, he's evading every strike. Even the ferocious Garu couldn't lay a finger on Saitama's attire, Kakuzu. Off screen, countless formidable figures witnessed the spectacle. This bald individual, akin to a pervert, displayed no discernible footwork or motion. He wholly relied on unfathomable eyesight and speed, effortlessly dodging each attack. Somewhere, Sonic knelt, overcome with tears. He understood that avenging that humiliating and agonizing fatal blow was an unattainable feat. Damn bald-headed devil, you're a human anomaly, within the confines of the space battleship, Boros rose with a mix of exhilaration and pain. The excitement stemmed from the fact that this bald figure was the adversary he had long awaited, promising an incredibly invigorating battle with his ultimate form. However, the pain came from. Ah 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 ah, enormous bald head, why aren't you from my world? I truly desire to engage in combat with you, Boros felt on the verge of madness. Failing to locate his opponent, he was on the brink of slaughtering all the beings on the spaceship. Proceed to Earth. How long until we reach Earth, hearing the urgent roar, Jiryugan Shuk panicked and hastily informed, we'll be at Earth in less than half a day, upon learning of the imminent arrival, Boros trembled and resumed his seat. Ha! Ha at last, I can engage in a satisfying battle. I only hope the prophecy hasn't misled me, and Earth truly harbors a formidable opponent awaiting my challenge. If not, I shall decimate the planet myself, with the final strike, Geru ceased its assault. Yet, there was no trace of anger or defeat on its countenance, for it could not assail its opponent. Now that you've halted, it becomes my turn. With those words, Saitama unleashed an unassuming punch at Garu. Boom, the sound of the air being disturbed reverberated, giving a glimpse of the impact such a punch would have. But, in the very next moment, doubt flickered in Saitama's large eyes. Not only Saitama found himself perplexed, but countless onlookers were also equally mystified. Because, astonishingly, the punch had missed its mark. Boom, Saitama launches another assault, delivering punch after punch towards Garu. Yet, Garu, like a seer, effortlessly dodged Saitama's attacks. Moreover, he seized the opportunity to counter while Saitama was executing his punches, landing a punch squarely on Saitama's bald head. And the onslaught continued. Divine Executioner's instant strike, in an instant, a multitude of fist shadows materialized. Saitama attempted to evade, only to find the opponent's fists altering their course, and he unwittingly collided with them. Bang bang bang, in the blink of an eye, Saitama was pummeled by hundreds of punches. The combination became increasingly fluid, captivating Garu, who eventually shook his body and emitted a roar, Divine Executioner's strike. Boom! At this juncture, an unexpected straight punch emerged from below. In an instant, Saitama was struck under the chin and sent airborne. Off-screen, numerous viewers were left dumbfounded, their eyes reflecting confusion, unable to comprehend the unfolding events. Within the confines of the Hero Association, observing the inquisitive gazes around him, Silver Fong Bang took a deep breath and elucidated, the speed and strength of both sides remain unchanged, and there's only one reason why Garu can connect with Saitama. The key lies in the mastery of ultimate fighting, an understanding of martial arts elevated to another tier. Yet, the comprehension remained elusive for many. Seeing this, Silver Fong Bang could only offer a wry smile, in simpler terms, Garu flawlessly anticipated Saitama's post-punch intentions. 
Then, he adapted his attack once more. Speechless and awestruck, everyone grappled with the revelation. Though it sounded straightforward, those unacquainted with martial arts knew that executing such feats bordered on the fantastical what an awe-inspiring martial arts prodigy, gazing at the airborne Saatama, Garu sported a confident smile, you are the secret weapon surpassing tornado in the hero association. Off screen, the expressions on the faces of the heroes and association leaders were truly awkward. Without this footage, who would have guessed that the bald hero was such a formidable force? In the next moment, Garu strikes again. At this critical juncture, he appears to descend from the heavens, flawlessly predicting every move Saitama makes. A barrage of punches relentlessly lands on Saitama. As Garu attacks, he laughs in pure delight, I possess speed and power akin to a monster. But you lack any real combat experience, comment. After knocking Saitama down with another punch, Garu's face is filled with joy. Such victories over the weak make him immensely proud. Garu extends his index finger, slowly shakes his head towards the bowed Saitama, and declares in a firm tone, admit defeat, there's no chance for you to win, asterisk clap 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 Boros is in a good mood now, applauding others for the first time. It's truly excellent martial arts. However, in the next moment, he changes his tune, but it's still a bit rigid in form. For me, any moves are useless. Only speed, strength, physical defense, and ultimate physical coordination matter, off-screen, there is fascination in the eyes of Garu. His future self has finally achieved the lifelong pursuit of martial arts. This feels incredible. He will be invincible in this world. Are you finished, hearing this impatient voice, Garu's eyes show curiosity. Can you still speak after such a severe internal injury? However, he immediately understands in his heart, and a disdainful smile appears at the corner of his mouth, yes, you must be holding on. Hee hee, this is the so-called hypocritical face of a hero, it's ridiculous. I think you're only talking now because you can't take punches, and you're stalling. Saitama finally can't bear it anymore, noisy, hoo hoo why why, why why ho ho, why do you have so much nonsense to talk about? What are you doing standing there? Aren't you going to fight? Garu is stunned by what he said, unsure how to counter. At this moment, Saitama slowly raises his head, and the tone becomes serious, do you think I'm weak? If that's the case, it doesn't matter if I get serious. Off screen, Geno's heart tightens. In this moment, it's as if he sees the enormous fist that covered the sky and sun again, and the word, death, occupies his entire mind. Geno shudders. After so many days, just thinking about it now makes his forehead sweat. Hero Association Everyone's eyes are full of suspicion. The strength before them is already incredibly exaggerated, how could it get stronger? In the Shinigami realm, Aizen wore a stern expression. This bald head has always seemed out of place to him. Are you approaching? And numerous onlookers are both doubtful and anticipating this moment it's difficult to fathom what feats this bald head can achieve. Suddenly, Saitama transformed into a striking figure, his face became chiseled, and he retained his handsome, bald appearance. In the following moment, he slowly bent down, inserted his fingers into the ruins, and then gradually opened his mouth, declaring, killer move, serious series. At that very moment, Garu sensed something in his eyes widened, a disconcerting feeling creeping into his heart. Soon after, a voice akin to the proclamation of judgment echoed. Serious table flip, as soon as the voice resonated, the zombie man lifted his hands upon seeing the Blevel hero, whose name he didn't even know, just over ten meters in front of him. In an instant, it felt as if he were in a small boat on a stormy, tumultuous sea. And before his eyes, a black barrier suddenly materialized, no, not a barrier. The zombie man gasped, unable to believe what he was witnessing. That's the ground, a massive piece of land of unknown dimensions had been laid bare, the next moment, the perspective abruptly soared to an altitude of 10, 000 meters. Suddenly, a breathtaking scene unfolded. The earth tremble, and the dust, visible to the naked eye, coalesced into a massive triangle. With a thunderous explosion, an area spanning over 100, 000 square kilometers and several kilometers into the sky was upheaved. Kaboom! Atomic Samurai turned pale, his gaze fixed, and he involuntarily swallowed hard. Internally, he was roaring. Is this a human? K. 
Can a human possess such power? The strength displayed is beyond comprehension. Not only atomic samurai, but other class heroes shared a similar astonishment. Even the usually arrogant tornado went pale, unable to restrain herself from remarking, Does this guy have a god residing in him? Why is he so terrifying? Silver Fong Bang sighed, Perhaps he is a god, but thankfully, he is on our side. Seated at the far end of the long table, the association leader, his body trembling with a mix of fear and excitement, declared, Make sure to identify him when the video concludes, and then we'll designate him as an SS level hero. Any objections? No one answered, or rather, no one dared to challenge. The perspective now shifts to Garu. Suspended in the airborne chaos, he remains oblivious to the unfolding events. Gazing at the rocks and debris swirling around, he assumes it's another assault similar to the prior tornado. Are you planning to launch a stone based aerial assault against me? The corner of Garu's mouth curled into a sneer, naive, futile, in the next second, Garu swung countless fists, shattering all obstacles in the vicinity. However, after a moment, he began to realize something was amiss. Nothing around him descended, everything, including himself, continued to float. Why is this? Suddenly, he lifted his head, shock evident in his eyes. What's happening? Why is there a triangular black hole in the sky? Wrong, the ground came into view. With his peculiar vision, he spotted several minuscule dark spots at the edge. That's another hero. At this moment, Garu finally comprehended that the ground beneath him was actually lifted by his opponent. How is this possible? Just as he was taken aback, a bald head suddenly appeared upside down in front of him. Saitama's emotionless voice echoed, consecutive normal punches, in an instant, numerous red fists unfolded in front of Garu. I can't dodge the wolf hastily crossed his arms to resist, but it proved entirely futile. His body tore through the air, shattering countless debris, utterly uncontrollable. Boom! Saitama appeared behind Garu in an instant, delivering another normal punch. Garu was sent flying in another direction like a sandbag. However, these two moves nullified each other. After soaring over a thousand meters, he finally regained control and landed on a floating stone. And Saitama reappeared in front of him at this moment. Saitama looked calm, as if lost in thought, and uttered, Hey, show some strength. Don't underestimate me. With a fierce glare, Garu exerted all his strength, God-killing instant fist, hundreds of fists suddenly hummed and surged toward Saitama. His answer was, two hands, consecutive normal punch, in an instant, there were several times more red fists than Garu, creating a scene reminiscent of rockets firing in unison. Bang, 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 bang. Dense white mist erupted, and everything around was pulverized. Amidst the screams, Garu's body was instantly sent flying. And this time, he was blasted directly into the ground, which was blown away and stuck in the earth like a green onion. Off screen, countless viewers were already desensitized. The peculiar man before them resembled a relentless demon, ruthlessly pummeling and crushing like children. At this moment, many spectators, witnessing the pitiable state of Garu, couldn't help but pray for him. Big brother of cosplay, run. If you don't run, you'll be beaten to death. In the spaceship, Boros's single eye gleamed with excitement, eager to swap places with Garu immediately. If it were me, I could surely defeat this bald head. Listen, give me more acceleration. It doesn't matter if the ship is damaged, I want to be on Earth in an hour. My blood is boiling, I yearn for battle. On the ground, Garu lay still, his eyes glazed as he stared at the soil before him in bewilderment. Why? Why did I lose to this human, so riddled with imperfections? Why does that guy act like he wants me to play? Shattered. Saitama tumbled. To the ground, cocked his head, and uttered, no more fighting. Since it's so peculiar, the game is over. And if you're content, refrain from hero hunting in the future. Finally, Saitama sighed, Garu, it's truly tedious to spar with you, what did he say? Bored? In the mud, Garu suddenly opened his eyes, and they seemed to emit a white light at that moment. Damn it, I'm the one who was defeated, how can you say such a thing? Boom! The soil scattered, Garu rose from the ground, and his speed accelerated once more. In an instant, 
he seized Saitama's arm and crossed his legs to ensnare his opponent's neck, instant kill cross solid, countless viewers were thrilled. Under control. This is a skill that can vanquish the mighty with the weak however. Late, Saitama was only slightly stunned, entirely unaffected. He raised his arm and slammed it toward the ground. Boom! Instantly, countless cracks appeared in the earth. This impact nearly robbed Garu of breath, leaving him in intense pain throughout his body, with his hands and feet involuntarily loosening. But he didn't surrender, rolling and tumbling amid the countless stones, keeping Saitama in his line of sight. The next second, he appeared behind Saitama. Boom! Just as he was about to throw a punch, he was instantly sent flying. Attacking again and again, yet Saitama didn't even budge, as if swatting flies, knocking him up repeatedly. Boom! Garu was punched into the ground. Staring at the dimly lit hole before him, Garu howled. I need to be stronger. 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 But how? Not skill, not power, not martial arts, not speed, not even punches. Nothing. At this moment, Garu is immobilized in the ground, motionless. Hokage World. Naruto couldn't help but feel a twinge of sadness for the other party in this moment, his eyes tinged with red, it's over. The big brother with cosplay has been defeated. Although Garu hadn't taken a single life, Naruto couldn't deny that his senses were keen. On the side, Kushina and Minato heard this and were left speechless. This might be the most pitiable protagonist in all the darkening characters videos so far. Even that bald head hasn't unleashed its true strength. Garu sees no glimmer of hope for victory. In the eyes of Aizen, what lies ahead in the Shinigami world? Being the protagonist, he should be able to turn the tables and transform defeat into triumph. Right? One thing is for certain, after watching half of the previous video, he can confidently say that the protagonist will emerge victorious. But now, he can't see it happening. Despite not wanting to admit it, as he gazes at the bald head, he senses an air of invincibility. In the One Punch world, Garu kneels on the ground and roars in anger why would such an individual appear? This bald head seems like the embodiment of justice, representing all heroes in the world. Damn it, in a world where justice and evil are determined by others. To effect change, one must attain the power of evil. Stand up future self, you embody all that is evil. To overcome, one must defeat false justice. Scenes from life begin to flash before his eyes. Forced to portray a peculiar character, a hypocritical hero oblivious to others' suffering, using justice as an excuse. Anger gradually surfaces in the eyes of Garu. The ultimate rage ignites within him. To defeat the irrational presence in the hero, I must become an irrational force. Boom! The earth erupts into a massive crater in an instant, and Garu re-emerges. Transforming into a more demonic form, his body is coated in blood and dust, with sharp barbs covering his back. This time, he has evolved once again. Amazing at this moment, witnessing Garu grow stronger, countless viewers erupted in cheers. However, faced with such a terrifying form, Saitama maintained his indifferent expression and asked, Garu, were you gone for a while to change into costumes? Off screen, a wave of indignation swept through the crowd. This bald antagonist was undeniably audacious. His seemingly nonchalant words, paired with that expression, were nothing short of ironic. Garu harbored a deep anger, to embody the absolute evil, I'll extinguish you to fulfill it, the space quivered for a moment. Saitama materialized before Garu as if by teleportation, delivering a powerful punch. Evading it was utterly impossible, a fine mist of blood erupted from Garu's mouth, sending him reeling, off-screen, the expressions of the once-cheering spectators froze. What on earth, why wasn't there even a second of respite to grow stronger, Ah, I dissent, it's almost like changing the world, in a roar resembling a cry, Garu's size altered once more. He has evolved once again, the monstrous form of Garu expanded by more than a circle, enormous wings unfurling behind him, an intensely dreadful aura emanated from him, in this moment, Garu seemed like the demon king emerging from hell, many viewers were overcome with excitement. That's it, turning anger from its peak into the fuel for strength now, go forth and vanquish the foe, this time, I'm going to end you, Garu emitted a bizarre, inhuman sound from his mouth, his face contorting grotesquely. 
In the next instant, his wings propelled him to Saitama in the blink of an eye, delivering a punch to the bald head, the air echoed with a thunderous sound, the punch carrying boundless anger and power, at this moment, countless onlookers widened their eyes, anticipating the outcome. It seemed as though they were witnessing the bald antagonist being sent flying. Just then, Saitama's serious tone echoed. Serious killing series, serious headbutt, boom, it wasn't Saitama who went flying. In that moment, Garu's colossal arm collided with Saitama's as if fragile porcelain meeting an iron ingot, it shattered like an egg hitting a stone, fragments scattering, Garu howled, the shattered arm beginning to entwine with blood as it initiated regeneration, but Saitama's expression was no longer indifferent, he was deadly serious. You claimed you become the absolute evil, sorry, but I won't let that happen, Saitama took a step back, folding his right arm and charging. Serious kill series. Serious punch, passionate music crescendoed, the white cape billowed, and in the next moment, Saitama swung his fist, in an instant, the world changed colors, sky and earth, gravel ruins. As if everything ceases to exist. The space turned into darkness, and within the black void, an incomprehensibly colossal red fist manifested. At this moment, only a handful of entities remained unaffected. Simultaneously, a cryptic message flickered in the eyes of all other spectators. Countless individuals sensed their souls pulsating, as if they were confronting the very essence of that punch. And ultimately, only one would succumb. Ugh. The shattering noise jolted everyone back to reality. Numerous onlookers swiftly glanced upward, witnessing the conclusion of the spectacle. Saitama reverted to his nonchalant demeanor, standing motionless. Opposite him, Garu reverted to its peculiar original form, now kneeling weakly on the ground. Simultaneously, dense cracks appeared on Garu's body. It seemed like the outer shell of the creature was on the verge of fracturing, exposing its true form. The screen gradually darkened. This video reached its conclusion. Defeat? Countless viewers erupted in disbelief, witnessing the protagonist of the saga actually being defeated. This marks the first time it happened. How formidable is this bald individual? Could there truly be a god residing within him? In the One Punch world, Geno sighed quietly. The mentor finally held back, preventing Garu from leaving even a trace behind. In the Dragon Ball world, doubt crept into the eyes of Angel Wiss. The power of that world evidently isn't robust, so why does this easily forgettable bald figure emit such a unique sensation? In the next moment, Wiss was astounded. Two words surfaced in his thoughts. Limit this man has reached the very limit of his world. It's akin to a sheet of paper, Saitama scores 100 because the sheet only allows for 100. And the moment he steps beyond this world, his might will immediately intensify. Inside the spacecraft, Boros's expression shifted, feeling his heart accelerating unexpectedly. It was peculiar, as if something ominous had occurred. Inside the monster association, a profound silence hung in the air, devoid of even the faintest sound of breathing. Giant eyes quivered in trepidation. Psychos, the manipulator, knelt on the ground, her face drained of color. How could this be? The scene in the video starkly contrasted with the future she had foreseen. Who could unravel the mystery of this bald-headed interloper? With this monstrous presence, the significance of the monster association seemed to dissipate. Reward Distribution Option 1, Utilize the Extraordinary Ultimate Body Template for 30 minutes daily with no side effects. Option 2, Upgrade Martial Arts Talent to an Exceptional Level. Countless onlookers harbored various thoughts, unexpected that this time the reward would be a choice between two. Was it a repercussion of the character's failure? Yet, one option bestowed immediate immense power, while the other required personal refinement. The crowd speculated on Garu's decision. In the ensuing moment, Garu's resolute voice echoed. I choose reward too. One Punch World. Within the Hero Association, Silver Fong Bang showed no surprise at Garu's choice. In the absence of Saitama, Garu might have opted for the alluring ultimate power, driven by his so-called dream. However, witnessing Saitama's overwhelming might, martial arts talent became the only beacon of hope. Nonetheless, the Hero Association would not idly watch as Garu grew unimpeded without a direct augmentation of power. 
In the days ahead, Garu would either succumb to the Hero Association's grasp or emerge as a sensational force, soaring into the sky. And Silver Fong Bang would not intervene. Such was the path chosen by Garu, a choice he must be conscious of. DC World A sagacious decision, Lucifer's eyes brimmed with admiration. Yet, when he glanced at God, a hint of sympathy colored the elder's eyes. What's the matter, old man? Are you still not optimistic about Garu? Lucifer shared his perspective, the swift decision-making indicates a heightened mental acumen. His future accomplishments will undoubtedly surpass that eccentric individual, and he may even stand a chance against the bald-headed adversary. God shook his head slowly and sighed. Even if you increase his talent tenfold, you can't beat Saitama. Of course, this isn't a problem with Garu. In the next moment, a complex color appeared in God's eyes. It's because of this bald head that breaks the limit. The screen faded to black. Just as viewers from countless worlds believed the video was about to end, the screen flickered back to life. Simultaneously, layers of illusory distant sounds resonated once again. One Punch Man World triggers extra scene. Live, countless people were shocked, struggling to comprehend what had just transpired. Especially within the Hero Association, changes signaled impending disasters. The screen lights up, revealing a cosmic background. In the solar system, a colossal space battleship emerges. Its speed is astonishingly swift, traversing from the edge to the zenith of a blue planet within 10 seconds. Inside the battleship, Boros gazed at the planet before him and the one on the screen in silence. He hadn't anticipated that his world would be the One Punch Man world. Then, sudden realization dawned on him. One Punch Man. Is the world named after that bald head? Yet, a smirk quickly played on his lips. It's likely named so due to the extraordinary events occurring on Earth. However, from this day forth, everything would change. Henceforth, this world would be known as Boros World. In the Hero Association, a piercing alarm resonated, alerting everyone to a formidable foe. The colossal and menacing spaceship unmistakably signaled an alien invasion. Alien invasion, tentatively designated as a dragon-level disaster. The association's leader appeared tense, casting a glance around the crowd. Prepare for battle. Simultaneously, the screens in front of everyone in the one-punch world vanished. The perspective of the screen shifts to Boros. Excitement gleams in one eye of Boros. That prophecy is true, Saitama is the opponent he can fully fight against, employing all his strengths. As for the victory, it's undoubtedly his own. In his view, the last man's serious punch is not as potent as his own collapsing star-roaring cannon. Land on Earth, invade all broadcasts. After Boros gave the order, the space battleship pierced through the atmosphere, hovering above a city. The next moment, all external network devices sounded simultaneously, here are the dark matter thieves, now issuing a statement that Earth is ours. But the supreme cosmic overlord, Lord Boros, generously granted you a chance to survive. The next moment, Boros's grinning voice echoed, Saitama, defeat me, and this planet can exist, or I will annihilate all life on this planet. Following that, a beam of light erupted from the spaceship, bombarding the ground below. Instantly, violent energy fluctuations occurred, and all buildings in the entire city were demolished and leveled to the ground. In the Dragon Ball world, Frisia originally despised the title of Boros. How dare you call yourself the overlord of the universe when you're so weak? However, after witnessing this scene, a satisfied look appeared in his eyes. Heh, finally, there's a decent villain. In the One Punch world, the eyes of the Sklass heroes blazed with fury. Using technology to destroy a city, do you really think you are invincible? Just because you got a little beaten up by Garu doesn't mean you can't use this one-eyed monster to regain confidence. As for Saitama, there's no need for the opponent to take action. Hoo hoo. Damn it, damn it. Where the hell are you, Garu? Saitama stood on the top of a mountain, watching with a pergola in his hands, his eyes filled with bloodshot rage. When he thought of his future home being gone, his heart ached. The next moment, another plume of smoke galloped away. A hatch of the space battleship opens. Boros jumped down and fell on the flat ground like a shooting star. The next moment, he folded his arms and waited quietly for Saitama to arrive. 
he believes that there is a threat to slaughter the planet, and the other party will definitely come. But after a while, a green light was seen flying quickly. Under the telekinetic power of Tornado, Atomic Samurai, Silver Fong Bang, Tank Top Master, and other Sklass heroes all arrived. Die! As soon as they landed, Atomic Samurai rushed up impatiently. He would use the aliens in front of him to regain his confidence. Atomic Slash At the moment of approaching Boros, Atomic Samurai instantly drew his sword. Dozens of shards of the blade flew, and Atomic Samurai spurted blood, flying back faster than they came. Puri Puri Prisoner stepped forward, trying to catch each other with his broad chest. Hey! The sound of broken ribs echoed, and the two of them vomited blood and flew out. Heh, looks like he's stronger than Garu. And finally, he doesn't give up. Not bad. Excitement appeared in Doflamingo's eyes. This is what a villain should be, Garu is obsessed at best, and the essence is completely twisted justice, which makes him sick. Other people's faces changed greatly. They didn't expect this alien creature to be so powerful, it almost killed Atomic Samurai with a single blow. Go together. Seeing this, Sweet Mask of Absolute Justice roared furiously. This pivotal moment delves into the very life and death of the Earth, where heroes like Tornado have relinquished their past pride, no longer engaging in feudal battles. Mental prowess, martial arts, technology-driven feats, and explosive clashes. However, amidst uproarious laughter, everyone spews blood and is sent hurtling through the air. Surveying the fallen heroes, Boros eyes gleam with disdain, a bunch of rubbish, not even worthy of warming me up, sneers Boros, gazing at the bloodied and fallen heroes with a wry smile. In this critical moment, the ground begins to tremble. All heads turn to witness a billowing cloud of grey smoke racing towards them. Boros pupils contract, and he erupts into excited laughter, huh, Saitama, you've finally arrived, suddenly, Boros steps forward, intercepting the approaching cloud. I, boom. As the swirling dust collides with Boros, Boros' body shell shatters instantly, hurtling like a cannonball and piercing through the space battleship. Saitama pauses, scratching his head in suspicion, what was it that I just knocked out myself? Not far from him, the heroes stare blankly at the bald-headed figure, hearts filled with infinite terror. What in the world is this? Hokage world. Orochimaru frowned, I don't think this bald guy understands what just happened, Uchiha Madara nodded, Boros from earlier seeming like an ant shouting in the street. Then, almost unnoticed, the opponent was mercilessly rolled into the ground. Even if this self-proclaimed ruler of the universe doesn't have the upper hand, it should at least be an evenly matched battle, a confrontation of equals. But now, Uchiha Madara's eyes revealed sympathy, as if witnessing the misery of the other party. Saitama observed the heroes collectively spitting blood on the ground, slightly puzzled, excuse me, is this a group activity for heroes? Everyone fell silent, indeed, it's a group activity. They came together and got beaten up. Yet, it was really difficult to say this. Everyone kept silent, then turned their gaze in other directions. As if fixated on something interesting. It's odd. Saitama is a bit confused by everyone's behavior, but his joy overcame the confusion when he spotted an acquaintance. As a master, you should know where your disciple is, right? Darn it, why did this kid come to me? Silver Fong Bang hastily turned his head, crawling towards a hero not far away, trying to shift the disaster elsewhere. However, as he moved, others started crawling away in horror. A dozen bloody trails emerged simultaneously, resembling a scene from a horror movie. Da da, the footsteps drew nearer, and Silver Fong Bang, already pale, became even paler. He crawled and crawled, but couldn't escape. A bald head grabbed his calf. Shocking. What's the intention of a 20-year-old grabbing the calf of a 70-year-old, it's terrifying. The bald-headed man seems up to no good with the white-haired old man Uchiha Madara turned his head, and White Zetsu immediately fell silent in embarrassment, though his eyes still betrayed a meaningful glint. Old man, is this some new exercise method? Saitama asked curiously, with his legs on his hands. Bang is speechless, didn't you see that I was vomiting blood? You can't be considerate to the old man, yes, we are exercising. You can ask them if you don't believe me. In the department, let's all die together, Saitama raised his head, and the heroes who looked back were terrified. 
fearing that the other party would come to him, they suddenly accelerated and flew up. Saitama. Bang, at this moment, a loud noise came from the sky. Boom, the floating space battleship shook violently, and Boros penetrated the spaceship and crashed to the ground, as expected of the human he fancies, he just sent him flying to a height of 10, 000 meters with all his strength, the shattering of the seal armor made the long lost power flow with the blood, and Boros laughed excitedly, Saitama, you are the man I was destined for, Saitama immediately grabbed his chest and took a step back, his eyes full of horror, and then he quickly pointed to T-Tornado on the other side, sorry, I like that kind of human woman. Tornado, ah uh, ah, uh, d, did you not forget to confess during the battle? It's as romantic as you are, Minato. Naruto's scalp was numb as he watched his mother act like a spoiled child to his father. At this time, Kushina also noticed something, and her pouting mouth froze in the air. Naruto silently exited the living room, maybe he might become an older brother soon. Late, what is your confession before you die? Boros crossed his chest with both hands and said generously, Then, I allow you to hug one last time and thank me for my kindness. Saitama is confused. Why does it suddenly seem like he's entered a blind date? And that green-haired kid, what are you shy about, you have no product. I just said I like human women, I used you as an analogy. Cough, Saitama pretended not to understand and quickly changed the subject, speaking of which, were they vomiting blood because of you, not exercising? Heroes, they are as silent as death. Sure enough, this bald head is serious on the surface, but his heart is black, obviously found out and asked such an embarrassing question. In the world of Gintama, Jintoki said enviously, let's not say anything else, the ability of this bald-headed man to speak in a serious manner can make people angry. He is still very powerful. Kagura nodded, Kondo Aisao, this gorilla should go to the next door to study. I think the lines are getting more and more boring recently, Aru. Shinpachi nodded in agreement, but as he began to speak, he realized he was being ignored. Seeing Saitama unmoved, Boros couldn't tolerate it any longer. Please, Saitama, asterisk boomed the ground beneath Boros, bombarded and leveled once before, cracked again. His body transformed into a meteor, appearing instantly in front of Saitama. Asterisk boom this punch struck Saitama firmly, unleashing a violent shockwave that sent all the half-dead heroes around flying. Yet, Saitama stood firmly on the ground. Something peculiar gleamed in Boros' eyes. Then, he saw the other party slowly raise his head, revealing scarlet eyes. Don't say such weird things. Ordinary punch. Asterisk boom in the violent shock, Boros' left arm shattered, and his body was launched like a cannonball. But in the next second, Boros adjusted his body, driving his legs into the ground, carving two deep ravines to a stop. Such an injury didn't enrage Boros. Instead, one big eye revealed incomparable excitement, and he laughed fiercely. What a heavy fist, it's wonderful. Now that I tested this power, I will no longer hide. Asterisk boom in the next second, a terrifying aura erupted from Boros. His light blue body skin ruptured, revealing purple-black flesh inside. Simultaneously, his body grew larger, and an energy core resembling an eye appeared on his chest, pulsating bright lines to his limbs. His right arm also regrew. Saitama, I'll give you a slow death. As the laughter faded, Boros disappeared. Simultaneously, Saitama made some moves. Asterisk bang. 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 Bang in an instant, the sky and earth transformed into a battlefield, the two figures resembling intertwined meteors. The ultimate battle unfolds. Fun to the flesh, hearty. The violent tremors of space, the continuous explosions echoing like a multitude of thunderstorms. Battleships shattered, the earth tore apart. Everywhere they passed, destruction followed, like two ancient beasts breaking free to wage war in the world. Outside the battlefield, Heroes who survived due to being thrown away stared blankly, their souls trembling. All of this unfolded before two gods engaged in combat. The so-called Shiros, if Saitama hadn't deliberately avoided them, likely wouldn't even have had the qualifications to watch. Simultaneously, the continuous vibrations from the air sent shivers down everyone's spines. For the first time, they understood the true meaning of great terror. The viewers from countless worlds quivered in awe. 
shocked. Absolutely. But it wasn't just excitement, it was a surge of something more profound. This kind of physical clash, the ultimate in hand-to-hand -hand combat, sent everyone's blood boiling and their hearts racing. In the Dragon Ball world, Goku was so thrilled that he couldn't wait to join the fray. In the Hokage world, Mike Guy burst into tears. This display of physical prowess, where every punch and every kick carried an unimaginably terrifying force, was sheer perfection. This was the kind of battle that embodied the hot-blooded youth he had longed for. Boom boom boom. The two descended onto the space battleship from the ground. Purple electric lights flowed, flickered, collided, and exploded. Wherever they went, the alloy deck, the keel strut, the particle engine, everything was destroyed. Finally, in another explosive bombardment, the battleship couldn't withstand it any longer, letting out a scream as it crashed to the ground. The earth roared, and the two had already broken through layers of steel decks, arriving on the battleship. Boros was extremely excited at this moment, his body surging with energy, flickering with pulse-like electric light fluctuations, his pink hair exploding, and the corners of his mouth forming an exaggerated arc. You are truly strong. This is the first time I, Boros, have met an evenly matched opponent. With these words, Boros's aura rose again, violent blue lightning wrapping around him like a thunderstorm, and countless bursts of thunder sounding. Like Thor's hammer, energy coalesced into a ball, compressing countless lightning bolts. It's over, Saitama. Boom. A series of transparent ripples appeared in the air, and the thunderball hurtled toward Saitama. The scalp-tingling thunderball made countless onlookers scream in terror. And the reason was Saitama's standing posture. Not even bothering to dodge, exuding confidence. In an instant, a sun rose above the battleship. In the intense blaze, the tops of the battleships, dozens of kilometers away, were all smashed and conquered. The battleship roared across dozens of kilometers. The terrifying shockwave erupted at a speed exceeding dozens of times the speed of sound. The glass in the other two nearby cities, 600 to 700 kilometers away, shattered, and buildings shook violently. The injured heroes at close range cowered in fear under the protection of tornado psychic barrier. After more than 10 seconds, the explosion and flames dissipated. Gudong. All heroes swallowed their saliva in unison. Except for the formidable bald-headed demon king, whose clothes were stained with ashes and whose cloak became torn, there was no sign of any damage. He still stood firmly in place. It's terrifying, I'm becoming more and more suspicious that he's not human. At this moment, even Orochimaru, who is exceptionally intrigued by the intricacies of the human body, is no longer impassioned but profoundly shocked. And the audience falls into silence. This marks the first appearance of a body so formidable, rivaling the monstrous science in the Dragon Ball universe. What's more, this is an ordinary human being. No bloodline techniques, no superpowers, no martial arts. How this bald individual cultivates remains a mystery. Observing Saitama, who bows his head in silence, appearing slightly embarrassed, Boros assumes that his opponent has suffered internal injuries, a proud smile suddenly playing on the corners of his mouth. Hee <laughs> hee, it seems the winner is about to be decided. My race triumphed in the survival competition on our harsh home planet, boasting one of the best self-healing abilities. Especially me, ranking among the top in healing, potential, and physical strength, the fatal wound you inflicted will take me a few seconds to heal, but the wounds on your body will accumulate endlessly, and your stamina will gradually deplete. Eventually. Countless viewers have to acknowledge the rationality in Boros' words. In this intense battle, physical strength and damage are of utmost importance. The balance of the battle will gradually tip in one direction or the other. Until it becomes an irreversible decline. Noisy. Boros is interrupted, momentarily stunned, then sees Saitama twist his neck, impatiently remarking, Mom, chirp, talk to yourself. Am I standing here to listen to your nonsense? Aren't you going to fight? It turns out he's waiting for me to continue attacking, is he disappointed? Boros laughs wildly, no sign of dissatisfaction on his face, in that case, I'll indulge you, violent energy violently surges from his core, in an instant, purple flames engulf Boros, and countless tiny black lightning bolts burst from the void, with the compression of numerous energies, his purple body transforms into blazing white, covered in lines of terrifying energy flowing like plasma. 
At this moment, the air around Boros continuously shatters and groans, he resembles a god descending into the world, and the surrounding space can barely contain him. Alright, that's it. Blast, kill that damn bald head who claims to be a hero, at this moment, countless evil villains from various worlds rise in unison. This godlike stance will surely overcome the opponent. Boros slowly lowers his body, muscles bulging one by one, his entire being resembles an arrow on a bowstring, meteor burst, in an instant, the battleship beneath Boros collapses and shatters, and the earth trembles, and like a real meteor piercing the atmosphere, he hurtles towards Saitama, boom, a punch like a comet striking a planet detonates, tremendous force wraps the tingling purple energy into a fan-like impact, turning everything it touches into a sea of fire, the top layer of the battleship below instantly melts and explodes, countless crew members perish. Saitama is sent flying backward like a cannonball, rolling incessantly in the torrent of energy. Boros no longer cares whether the spacecraft can be repaired and leave Earth in the future. He only wants to fight with all his might now, the next moment, he once again releases all his energy, transforming it into power, the figure of Boros vanishes in an instant, he becomes a rapid purple streak, catching up with Saitama, and begins a relentless bombardment, at this moment, the figure is no longer visible in the frame, only the streak flickers and moves rapidly. Wherever it goes, purple thunder erupts, and the warship collapses with a whine, countless spectators exchange bewildered looks, eager to witness the action. But all they see are fleeting images and battleships shattering and exploding frantically. This is no longer a spectacle for ordinary onlookers. Boom, Saitama is once again thrown into the air by a punch, an afterimage appears, and Boros follows. He doesn't punch but opens his body, suddenly, his pink hair bursts into tree-like black lightning, emanating an indescribably terrifying energy. A scene reminiscent of the apocalypse unfolds. In an instant, the sky and earth turn black, leaving only Boros enveloped in blue lightning, the next moment, space roars, and Boros's lightning explodes outward, in the deafening noise, Boros concentrates the strength of his entire body, striking Saitama's abdomen with his knees, a purple energy beam with a terrifying aura flashes out, leaving black traces in the air. Space undergoes an instant transformation, distant moon dust erupting into the universe, collapsing into a massive crater with a depression. As the perspective zooms in, Saitama's body is deeply immersed in it. Did I read that correctly, one kick sent a person to the moon. In the world of One Piece, Luffy's eyes widened, and his jaw dropped to the ground. This explosive power is too terrifying. The massive crater on the moon is even more outrageous than a meteorite impact. He felt that no one in his world could withstand such a kick. At the marine headquarters, Kizaru's surprised expression resembled an open chrysanthemum. Compared to this, his lightspeed kick was like a child's play. In the fairy tale world, Acnologia's mouth curled into a wide arc, revealing fine fangs, and he exclaimed excitedly, Hee hee, it looks like this time the bald devil finally met his match. No, it should be said that under this kick, the internal organs must have turned into meat sauce. Viewers from countless worlds sighed, this time, the opponent clearly surpassed the hungry wolf. And Saitama, being a mere human, couldn't possibly survive such a blow. But the next second, countless people opened their mouths, trembling, unable to believe what they saw, on the moon, a bald head with a simple style climbed out of a human-shaped depression. Saitama's body showed no signs of injury at all, just pinching his nose, somewhat surprised by the surrounding environment. He even got curious and picked up a stone, tossing it in his hand. What kind of monster is this, remaining unscathed under such an intense attack? And most importantly, the moon is a vacuum. Although Saitama is physically robust, the moon lacks air. Without air, one would eventually suffocate. However, countless viewers saw no trace of panic on Saitama's face. The next moment, everyone witnessed Saitama slowly bending down. Boom, although there was no sound, the vast lunar surface collapsed layer by layer, spreading to the half-moon surface. And Saitama, like a fully charged electromagnetic gun, shot towards the earth. Above the sky, a faint fire appeared in the atmosphere. But less than a second later, with a massive roar, both sides of the enormous space battleship raised simultaneously. In the middle of the battleship, it split in two. At the same time, the ground seemed to shake a bit throughout the northern hemisphere. 
Until the dust in the sky settled, Saitama stood on the ground, staring expressionlessly at Boros. Boros's violent gasps gradually steadied, and the one-eyed, which occupied one-third of his face, dulled. The next second, he understood the meaning in Saitama's eyes. The other party seemed to be saying, is that all? Ah, Luffy jumped up and down in excitement. This return, like a god descending to earth, is far more thrilling than being bombarded on the moon before. As a scientist, Orochimaru stared in disbelief, almost shouting, one step from the moon back to the earth. Human how can the human body achieve this level, the viewers from countless worlds were shocked by this scene, falling into silence. Once again, Saitama is a human with no special abilities. So, why does this inexplicable image exist? In the distance, the faces of the heroes watching the battle remain expressionless. Not shocked, but numb, now, when some say Saitama is a god, others nod without hesitation. Boros's dull eyes gradually become sharper, this kind of opponent, this opponent is overtaxing the body, and it doesn't matter if life expectancy is reduced by a hundred years, Saitama, I'm going to do my best, with a roar of excitement, Boros took a step forward and rushed toward Saitama, the next second, he turned into a purple lightning bolt, appearing in all directions around Saitama at once. Countless attacks without dead ends appeared almost simultaneously, the air tore apart. And the wreckage of surrounding battleships shattered instantly. Boom, a serious look appeared in Saitama's eyes, he easily caught Boros's figure and threw a punch, the purple arc stagnates, and Boros's body reappears. Saitama's punch hits the core of his chest right. Vomit, Boros's one-eyed eye was immediately covered with bloodshot, he spat out blood, and a sonic boom burst from his body, shooting back with a roar. Damn it, bald devil, at this moment, even viewers with poor eyesight could see it. Boros is completely at a disadvantage. His attacks on Saitama are useless, but Saitama's punch can seriously injure him in an instant. The battle continues. The moment Boros stopped, Saitama followed. Consecutive normal punches. In a calm voice, countless red fists burst out like Gatling, the god of fire, occupying the entire screen. Blood splattered in the superimposed violent explosions, Boros was bombarded directly into meat sauce. Lost. Just when countless viewers were shocked, all the flesh and blood of Boros began to shrink. In the blink of an eye, the incomparably terrifying self-healing ability made Boros return to his human form again. Incomparably terrifying thunder and lightning erupted, Boros's one eye turned purple and black, you have to be defeated by me, unleash all the energy and blow you up with the surface of the planet. Every cell is roaring, and the core of the chest begins to squeeze the ability at full power. In an instant, the thunder light shone, at this moment, Boros's entire body turned black, and the lines on his body flowed like magma, bursting with unimaginable light and energy. Collapsing star roaring cannon, the roar of Boros. In the next moment, it's as if the wrath of God descends upon us. A pillar of blue particle light, surrounded by pitch black lightning exuding an aura of infinite destruction, erupts. In this instant, everything falls into silence and stagnation. The sky loses its color, leaving only this torrential force in the world. No, one more individual remains active. Within the radiance, Saitama's visage becomes angular and extraordinarily handsome, displaying a serious expression for the first time. If I'm going to annihilate everything, then I'll unleash my lethal move too. Killing series. Serious punch. Amidst the booming music, a fist thrusts out against the torrent capable of obliterating everything. In a heartbeat, it seems as if everything in the world has vanished. In the eyes of countless spectators, there is only one crimson fist steadily expanding before them. At this moment, souls feel frozen, and they can only witness the onslaught of a fist that appears capable of annihilating everything. Click everyone is jolted awake by the shattering sound, then witnesses a scene that appears to shatter the world. Emerging from Boros's scorched corpse, an ever-expanding abyss materializes on the ground behind him. Viewed from the cosmos, an immense abyss stretches hundreds of kilometers to the sea. And subsequently, the sea parts on either side. This punch, earth split. Parting seas.